Good morning, viewers, and welcome to the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. We're downtown Spice Capital, where we have the live coverage of the Republic Bank 55th edition of the Intersecondary Schools National Championships. This morning, we're happy to bring to you the games from the Kirani James Athletic Stadium and to bring you the commentary wherever you are. I have alongside me, Bernard Antoine. My name is Leslie Smith. And also part of the commentary team, we have uh, Sherry and Noel and Joseph Cadeau as well as Jason Skeet, who are roving around the field, bringing you all of the field events. And of course, Mr. Davis Adams will join us later on. Bernard, good morning and welcome to the broadcast. Yeah, good morning. It is day three. It uh, is day number three. 2023 Republic Bank, Intercol 2023. Well, you see a beautiful shot here of the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. That's why it's all going to happen today. It's a grand finale, day three. And the positions, the points are precariously set up here for what is expected to be a very exciting day of track and field. We're going to give you the points update after the first two days of competition and to set the tone for what is in store for a most thrilling and exciting day of track and field at the national secondary schools level. Bernard, pristine conditions, a gentle breeze across the field, brilliant sunshine, and the anticipation is that the stands will be filled later on, as this has always been a sold-out event on day three. Sold-out event on day three, and just taking in that panoramic view, it just excites one to think what will be unfolding well, so throughout the day. Full kudos to TNR Communication. That's the drone shot. So the drone will be out in full glory here today to bring all those picturesque and panoramic view of the Kiriani James Athletic Stadium. But let's get into the meat of the matter. And the first thing that we want to bring the viewers up to date on is uh, the current point standing. And Bernard, I'll give you the opportunity to go through the females and then I will give the male point standing. And in position number one, it's St. Davis Catholic Secondary School, uh, 238 points. So they're at the top. But taken from the bottom, the Greater Christian Academy, that's a small school. They are registered with two points. Westerhall Secondary School, much more is expected of them. Let's see what they can do on day three with three points. The Grade S Seventh-day Adventist Secondary School, five points. St. Mark's Secondary School, always known for producing good sprinters, five points. Westmoreland Secondary School, a private secondary school, it's seven points. Wesley College, Wesley College right close next door, nine points. Granville Secondary School, much more expected of Granville Secondary School this year. They are registered at 15 points. One of the newer secondary schools, J.W. Fletcher, well, new in the sense that it has been around for a few years now, 15 points. It's an, at 16 points, sorry, it's J.W. Fletcher. Happy Hill Secondary School, new outfits this year, 16 points. St. John's Christian Secondary School, 42 points. Did I say 16 points? Happy Hill Secondary School, 26 points. St. John's Christian Secondary School, 42.5 points. Bishop's College. Bishop's College from Carrico, the sister island of Carrico, 51 points. McDonald College, known for its long and middle distance runners, 57 points. Boca Secondary School, making a splash this year, 62.5 points. Hillsborough Secondary School, another, another secondary school from the sister Isles. 64.5 points. Then we get to the five big girls. St. Andrews Second, Anglican Secondary School, SAS, 100.5 points. St. Joseph's Convent St. Andrew, 119.5 points. St. Joseph Convent St. George, 127.5 points. A mere eight points separate these two convent schools. Anglican High School, the girls in all white today. 150.5 points and out front St. David's Catholic Secondary School for yet another year 238 points well we've heard it from the girls category but I can tell you there's a lot more excitement in the boys category as the perennial powerhouses in track and field in secondary schools are battling for supremacy today on day three to give you the total point standings we have in position 18, Wesley College on one point. In position 17, St. Mark's Secondary on four points. In position 15, J Westmoreland Secondary on five points. J.W. Fletcher Catholic is in position 15 on seven points. St. John's Christian Secondary Shaper 
They were in fourth in position on seven points, on ten points, I beg your pardon. Grenville Secondary School in 13th position on 12 points. Bishops College in 12th position on 14 points. St. Rose Modern Secondary, they're in 11th position on 15 points. Your top 10 positions now. Westerhall Secondary School, 27 points. Happy Hills Secondary School, 35 points. Grenada Christian Academy, 43 points. And they're in joint position with Hillsborough Secondary School. I'm sorry, McDonald College, who are also on 43 points. His Morrow Secondary School is in sixth position on 46 points. The top five schools, the very impressive Boca Secondary, they're on 77 and a half points. And there's a real battle for third and fourth between St. Davis Catholic Secondary School, who is currently in fourth position on 137 points. And 12 points ahead of them is the Presentation Brothers College, the Canons, as they call themselves, on 149 points. Two schools in really, really battling here for championship honors. In second position is the St. Andrews Anglican Secondary School on 223 points. And up front, by one and a half points only, the Grenada Boys Secondary School, the defending champions, on 225 and a half points. So, Bernard, as I mentioned earlier on, the real competition and excitement, and, and maybe where the, most of the interest lies, is in the boys' category as there's a real battle here between these two, this duo, GBSS and SAS, a mere one and a half points separating the two schools, and much a lot is expected and anticipated in the boys' division today. And by the time we get to the four by four hundred meters relay, relays, uh, we will get a, we will see if we are going to have a new champion today, if we are going to have some repeats, what's going to happen, um, many little. Uh, rivalries uh, if, if we if we look through the if we look through the point standings but a lot is anticipated today in the morning session we are going to have 10 events there are 10 events scheduled in the morning session uh, javelin throw for girls javelin throw for boys triple jump uh, for boys tri triple jump for girls and all of the 100 meters preliminary races will be on this morning it's something that you really should and as keep you your eyes glued to the, to the TV screen. And as you mentioned that, we're going to get take a, a quick pe preview of what's going to ha be happening in the field events. We have Jason Skeet and Sherry and Noel down on the ground. And in a short while, we'll go over them just to give a perspective of these events and uh, maybe update us as they're about to start. And then later on, we'll come back to get capsule reports from Jason Skeet and Sherry and Noel in the field events. In the meantime, we are going to let you know that there were some very outstanding performances yesterday in all of the categories. We saw uh, the brilliance of the Shefonia Houston. We saw uh, the Shante Augustine. Um, the young ladies from the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School. They were all there in the brilliance. And uh, young Kwashi from uh, Hillsborough Secondary in the high jump as well. In the boys' category, the sub junior seems to be covered by the St. Andrews Anglican Secondary School in the likes of Christoph Kalis and uh, Delron John. The junior boys, uh, GBSS, seems to have that category well covered with the likes of uh, Ethan Sam and Tariq McSween. Aidan McIntosh is another name uh, that we want to mention in the, the boys' category and Kyle Ned as well. In the seniors, it's a spread among several schools. Elisha Williams is there. Uh, Telemark is there. And then we have the Justin Sylvester of SAS as well. These are some of the standout athletes on the track. And of course, the field events will keep you updated on that as well. So the stage is set as the drone shot uh, gives this panoramic and, and takes us right around the track. And uh, so what we're going to do in a short while is go over to Jason, who is going to provide us with an update as to what is happening on the, the field. But we ask you to stay tuned, those of you who are looking at the broadcast from home on your television sets, and those of you who are out there in the diaspora and would have subscribed to the pay-per-view version of the games, we welcome you to Intercall Day number three, the grand finale. We expect uh, that the stands will be filled to capacity already, even before the start of the events today. Quite a number of the students are already here, and I had a look at the main pavilion moments ago, and I can tell you a number of the past pupils. The Anglican High School is out in a completely different outfit today. 
the school ties neatly adorned on the t-shirts and i'm sure they've got there's going to be sections of blue sections of green st david's are going to come down in the red and white as they are accustomed to doing the horns are out here already and they're glaring as well it's going to be a very noisy vociferous and exciting electrifying atmosphere here at the kirani james athletic stadium and bernard the stage is indeed set for exciting track and field the stage is set and one expect as was yesterday very 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 keen competition the, the 200 meter finals all the 200 meter finals things to behold and and to re, to be remembered in case you missed it very briefly for in our boys high jump a boys high jump uh the results were the, the results are like this in the first position Tayshawn Frederick from the GBSS, he jumped 1.88 meters. 1.88 meters, that's in the junior boys, high jump. 1.88 meters. Aidan Daniel from Boca Secondary School, 1.85 meters. And Delon McKenzie, 1.85 meters from the Presentation Brothers College. In the discus throw, the discus throw sub-junior boys, a Stefan Strawn of the Presentation College was in gold medal position, 29.89 meters. Nikel Abraham from the GBSS, 26.94 meters. And in the bronze position, Sion Fletcher, St. David's Catholic Secondary School, 26.13 meters. So we, there we had some results of events uh, completed yesterday. Um, for those of you who are keeping scores, because the point standings are so close, particularly in the boys' category, we just want to let you know what the point system allocation is for today and for the entire meet as well. In the individual events, first position is awarded 12 points, second position is awarded 8 points, third, six, fourth position, 5 points, fifth position, 4 points, sixth position, 3 points, seventh position, 2 points, and eighth position, 1 point. So all finalists will be given points. For the team events, the relays, first position will be awarded 16 points, second position 12 points, third position 8 points, fourth position 6 points, fifth position 4 points, sixth position 3 points, seventh position 2 points, and eighth position 1 point. So keep that in mind when you're tabulating your scores because I'm, I'm sure many of you are keeping your own scores. We also want to update you on the colors the various schools will be participating in. Uh, Anglican High School will be in the traditional white. Beacon High School, Royal Blue and Sky Blue. Bishop's College, Red and Royal Blue. Boca Secondary School, Gray and Black. Gateway Christian Academy, one of the new schools out of the Point Salines area. They will be in gray, baby blue and white. Grenada Boys Secondary School, green Grenada Christian Academy, Colombian Blue, Black and White. Grenada Seventh-day Adventist Comprehensive School, White and Green. Renville Secondary School, Orange and Black. Happy Hill Secondary School, Purple and White. Hillsborough Secondary School, Yellow and Forest Green. J.W. Fletcher Catholic School, Orange and Purple. McDonald College, Maroon and White. Presentation Brothers College, Royal Blue and White. St. Andrews Anglican Secondary, Navy Blue and White. St. Davis Catholic Secondary, Red and White. St. John's Christian Secondary, Royal Blue and Yellow. St. Joseph Convent, Grenville, White and Red. St. Joseph Convent, St. George, Green and White. St. Mark's Secondary School, Beige and Maroon. St. Rose Modern Secondary, Royal Blue. The St. George Institute, Turquoise Green and Black with White and Gold. Wesley College, Yellow. Westerhall Secondary, Flores and Green. And Westmoreland School, Royal Blue and White. Stage is set for real beautiful competition today. In case you're wondering, just on the points on the points scheme, in case you're wondering where the half points come from, if there's a tie, then the points just split. That's where you would see um, the one or two half points in that were mentioned of, of this summary scores. If there's a tie, as has been in, in, in one or two events, especially the field events, and certainly with the, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the high jump, that's, that's quite common. They, they would split the points. 
A noticeable um, difference in this year's Intercol Games, uh, Bernard, is the, a number, the number of corporate sponsors that has come on board to support the various schools. And uh, we, want to, we want to just recognize these corporate uh, uh, entities that are also associated with some of these schools. For example, the Anglican High School, the Bishop's College, the Boca Secondary, Happy Hill Secondary, J.W. Fletcher Catholic, and the West House Secondary are all sponsored by Classic Lighting Caribbean and uh, the Grenada Trade Center. So we have the GTC AHS, the GTC Bishops College, Classic Light in Caribbean. They're sponsoring Boca Secondary, Happy Hill, GW Fletcher, and Westerhall. Najiko, they're sponsoring GBSS. So there's the Najiko GBSS, Nawasa SAS, and Paddy's Enterprise Hillsborough Secondary. And I recall over the years that ENF Supplies would have been a sponsor for McDonald College. But uh, Bernard, it's good to see Corporate Grenada really coming forward and assisting the schools as it has become, it has been recognized now that it's a challenge for some of the schools to uh, get the necessary financial requirements to outfit their teams properly. Very much so, and we really need to recognize these sponsors. And as we look, as we have looked, and we continue to look at the different teams, the quality of the uniform, it's, it's just something to behold. And we must recognize the, the, the sponsorship. This, this is not a cheap venture or, or, or a and an, an adventure with a much cost. And so the assistance of the corporate, corporate Grenada, we say hats off to you. And uh, GTC, uh, uh, um, Classic Lighting, Najiko, Nawasa, Paddy's Enterprises, and the, and the others that we have not, that, that we have not seen showcased just yet. Um, we say hats off to you. Well, we look at what has happened over the last two days, Bernard, and something that we commented on a little bit yesterday and maybe want to put in perspective again is day three is the final day a lot of the athletes obviously will be very tired now having competed in preliminaries and final events over two days um, the schools outside of St. George having to journey all the way up to St. Patrick's and Andrew over the Granite Tang and so on and be back down here early again for competition they must be maybe a little more tired I would think than some of the other schools that are within the vicinity of this parish of St. George. But I am sure that the coaches and team managers would have uh, prepared these athletes and let them know that some of the things that they ought to do and not to do at the same time in order to conserve the energy to remain relaxed, remain focused and ready for battle, as we say, on day three, the final day of competition. You're absolutely correct. What the athletes will tell you, tiredness in the finals, don't count. It's all adrenaline, all adrenaline, and we can expect just as keen competi competition in day three as there were in day days one and two. I am sure, Bernard, that within the camps of the GBSS and SAS, there would have been some very late nights for the administrators, coaches, managers, um, re-strategizing, looking at every event one by one, who are the athletes, how they can move around athletes to maximize the points, considering everyone in the finals gets a point. So first of all, they want to ensure that they have at least two persons in each final. That's the first objective, I would think. And then to see how they can move around athletes to the best way they can to maximize on this points allocation. Because the score is so close between those two schools. One and a half points separate them on day three. It's the first time I think we've had such a close points difference between any two schools, be it in the male or female category, going into day three as the battle for championship honors. And this is where the star power really comes in. But those schools that have Carifta selectees and other, other outstanding athletes, this is the time when they would put up their hands and say, I'm in there, tired or not, I'm in there. This is when it really counts. Well, as you mentioned, Carifta athletes, there are going to be several Carifta athletes fine-tuning the craft for the Easter weekend. And I'm sure a lot of you who are uh, seasoned sports fans would be looking on to see the performances of our national athletes um, at Intercall Games as they prepare themselves for Carifter. So the Talia Sampson and the Shefonia Houston in the under-17 girls category. In the under-20 girls category, we have Kemisha Dominic out of the St. Davis Catholic, Shanti Augustine from Convent St. George, Jamara Patterson, who is out there in Jamaica, Serena Alexander in the Javelin, and Aliyah Gidhari, also of the St. Davis Catholic. 
Uh, they will make up the girls team and in the boys team we'll have Ethan Sam, Tariq McSween, Kilon Moses, Adriel Mitchell, Yazid Ferguson, one to look out for in the 15 and 3000, we definitely see him today. Aidan McIntosh, Nathan Hillier, and uh, Mikel Redhead. And uh, what we're going to do now, we're going to, before I give you the under 20 boys, we're going to, we have Jason Skid standing by with the coach of the GBSS team. So we're going to go down on field to hear from Jason. Jason, I see you have Nick with you here. Let's hear from the GBSS camp. Yeah, well, um, good morning, everybody. Thanks a lot, Leslie. I've got with me the coach of the Grenada Boys Secondary School, Nick Benjamin. Nick Benjamin, good morning. Good morning. Um, good morning. How, how has preparation in the camp been going? You guys are the defending champs. T t what's, this, what's the story going into day three? Yes, well, um, yes, we are the defending champs of um, Intercall. Uh, we come to it with a plan. Um, so far, it's going well. Uh, we expect it to be at this position at some point in the games. Um, what, what, today is uh, the final day. Uh, the GBSS is... Um, our plan now is to go outside there and execute as much as possible and try to bring it home before the ending of the, um, the day. Um, we had little injuries on camp that we had to work with, but we, I think we have sufficient boys to participate and, and exchange uh, people, do everybody doing their work. And I think GBSS, I think we will bring it home. All right. Everyone spoke yesterday highly about the fact that you guys, your junior guys, broke the record in the 4 by 100 meter relay, um, with a, smashing the record almost uncontested going today. And what's the plan for that? Are you guys looking to smash that record again? Well, the plan for the plan for today is actually break the break the break our own record. Yeah. Um, the guys yesterday ran a relaxed race. Uh, the the um, the objective was to get the stick around and finish the race and make sure we qualify for the finals today. And today, I can bet you, you're going to have a showdown from the GBSS in that relay and all the other relays to come. Uh, just before we go, I want to talk specifically you know, about the senior relay. Uh, you've got Tegan Peterkin coming back from injury and working his way up. He ran a good 200 yesterday, picked up second. Uh, what's the story with him going into the relays? Um, him going into the relays is not just that. Um, him going into the, the, um, the 100, 100 um, prelims in a, in a couple of minutes from now, himself and um, Emilio Bishop, uh, they will be in, um, in the 100s and we going into that um, the 4 by one really is hard. Ethan Sam promised us 10-something yesterday in the 100. Is he capable of giving us something extra special? You will get that. You will get that from Ethan Sam. 10-something. All right. Fantastic. Thanks a lot. And uh, th that's it from us here down at uh, the track. We're getting ready for the start of the senior girls javelin. We're going to bring you and keep you in the know. Leslie, you see yours. All right. Thank you very much, Jason, for speaking with Nick. Benjamin here, the coach of the GBSS, and I'm sure you will make efforts to hear from the other camps as well and bring us those capsule reports as the viewers are so much anticipating. So oh, the events are going to be started. We're going to be starting with the girls javelin, and then there are going to be the 100 meter preliminary events. So st stay tuned for that. But Bernard, again, the strategies of, of the, the schools, we, we just heard from the coach of the GBSS and... Uh, I'm highlighting the strengths in the in the relay events, and remember the relay events would contribute 16 points for uh, a first place, and that's significant in the in, in the scope of things, considering only one and a half points are separating uh, the teams. The girls javelin, there we see the competitors getting themselves ready. They're going to have their warm-up throws, and then they're going to head straight into competition. St. David Secondary is there. St. Joseph Convent St. Andrew, I see. Uh, St. Mark's Secondary, Convent St. George, uh, an extensive field of javelin throwers. We know at the Carifter Games, we're going to have Serena Alexander representing Grenada in the javelin, and we look forward to seeing what she can do here today. Bishop's College is also there, so too is McDonald College. And I just want to mention that McDonald College has been five years now since McDonald College has participated in the Intercall Games since 2018. Yes, it's a, it's a welcome return to see the, the folks from... McDonald College, up north as we call them, uh, known traditionally for the middle and, and long distance running. They are, they are welcome re-addition, if you want to call it that, uh, this, this, this year, 2023. For whatever reason, they were absent for the past few years, they are back. It's 19 athletes that are listed here in the girls' javelin senior throw. 19 at least. Uh, um, very quickly, let's go through them. Ashley Horsford from Bishop's College. Anakal High School, Destiny Langine. Tiffany Charles, Hillsborough Secondary School. Uh, Jadine, okay. uh, Jadine Charles, J.W. Fletcher. Kishona Allard, Hillsborough Secondary School. 
kid on a Jeremiah Booker Secondary School, Anglican High School, Annie F. Frederick and Avnel Noel from SAS, Katisha Joseph from, Bo from Bishop's College, Angeli Cyrus from McDonald College, Shade James from Boca Secondary School, Kimberly Belfort from St. John's, from St. Joseph Convent St. Andrews, Amir Samuel, St. Joseph Convent St. George, Zodinta Crony from SAS, Monique Noel, St. Joseph Convent St. Andrew, Alia Githari, name that has been um, a feature in this right through this, um, this, this, this intercall, uh, Kedel Mark, St. Mark's Secondary School, Serena Alexander, one of, one of our Carifta, Carifta selectees from St. David's Catholic Secondary School, and Emilia Bubba from St. Joseph Convent St. George. Well, definitely Serena Alexander is the obvious favorite here. She's our Carifta representative in the Javelin. Uh, she's from the St. David's Catholic Secondary School and one to definitely look out for. Um, Coming up shortly, we coming up shortly. We're gonna have another interview with Jason. He's gonna try to get Paul Phillip, our international javelin coach, who's down there in the javelin, to give us a perspective on the javelin and what we can expect, and maybe to tell us a little more of what maybe Anderson Peters has in store for us in 2023. So while the javelin is going on, there's also gonna be the the boys triple jump. So Jason is ready for us with the interview with Coach Paul Phillip. So we're going to segue to Jason and uh, hear from him. Jason? So while Jason is sorting things out there, we're going to also have happening now the boys triple jump. Uh, the boys triple jump and then we have the girls 100 meter dash in the sub-junior category and then we'll walk our way through the different categories for the 100 meter preliminaries. So it's a, a triple jump for boys, they're getting themselves all, all ready. That's, that's an open event. Uh, the game's record is 15.59 meters that was set in 1997, Smith. 1997. Indeed, a very old record. And uh, the, the international athlete, Randy Lewis. Is Randy Lewis, formerly of SAS. He's, I think he's currently in Grenada. He might be here as well. But Jason is ready for the interview with Coach Paul Phillips. So we go over to Jason. All right. Thanks again, Leslie and uh, Bernard. I've got with me, as you said, Coach Paul Phillip, national coach, Javelin. We're getting ready for the start of the Senior Girls Javelin at Intercall 2023. Coach Paul Phillip, good morning. Good morning, sir. And good morning to all the listeners of this live stream. All right. Um, we're getting ready for the start of the Senior Girls Javelin. Um, anything special we can expect? Uh, are there any big names, anything, anything to wow us uh, coming into this uh, event? Um, well, we have in the event um, the leader for the season, uh, Serena Alexander, uh, bronze medalist at the under-17 category at Carifta last year. She has moved up to the senior category this year and has already thrown 40 meters plus. And then we have um, Aliyah Gidhari, who is following closely behind her with uh, throws in the region of the 38 meters. So these are two of the biggest names that you would see in the javelin for the season. Um, we have other girls who are in the mid-30s, uh, early 30s, um, but these two are basically the standouts, so to say. Uh, since the advent of uh, Anderson Peters coming forward and doing well in Javelin, have you seen an upsurge in the, the technical development and the enthusiasm of folks really wanting to get into that particular sport? Um, not really. I think... Um and I, I would have expected that that would have happened. But I think um, with, the, with the absence of the intercall games over the last few years, and then COVID would have put a little damper on that. So coaches have not really been paying much attention to, to doing the, the coaching that is required for, for the javelin. Um, normally we would have a feeling intercall in excess of 30. No, we, we're not seeing that. And uh, those who are showing up are not showing up with any technical proficiencies. Um, apart from what is being done in the St. David's area, the St. David's track blazers and those, um, you have very few 
I mean, Kariku would always be, be, be strong in the, in the javelin especially, and you can expect that. But outside of that, you don't see a lot of persons making effort to really try and enhance what we have done in the javelin so far. Um, you're speaking about female, but talk to us about the male because we heard that there's a surprise somewhere coming in the male javelin. <laughs> Well, the male javelin will feature the Curfter champion in the under-17 last year, uh, Mr. Rivon Tellesford. He has already surpassed the expectations of his coaches um, this year, um, has gone past the 60 meter mark, um, and that's not um, something that you see very regularly happening because you're changing javelins from throwing a 700 grams to throwing a 800 grams. It require you to get stronger and to be able to um, let your body gel up with the javelin so that you, you can produce that speed and, and that you need. The control of it is also an asset. So he has moved up and moved up in style. The only other person that I've seen that from in the future would have been Anderson Peters himself and uh, Mikael, um, I can't remember Mikael's son him now, but he's from, from Karakou. Very, very good talent. And also Makim, who is Makim Felix, who was accompanying Anderson at the 2016 Karifta Games. So he has been um, making waves this season. Um, he would be also challenged by <laughs> someone you would not expect, um, Elijah Williams, um, better known for his running. But what a lot of people don't recognize that Elijah is multi-talented. Uh, as a matter of fact, he would have been one of those who um, eyes were, were, were thrown at to compete at the multi-events at Carifta. All right, So Elijah will be in the javelin today and that would be something to look forward to. Um, you could think of, of uh, there are a few guys from Karaku again, as I said, and, uh, and a few from SAS. Um, that has done well during the season. Westerhall Secondary has also a very good guy. Um, so it's kind of open at the lower side of it, but at the upper side, I think it should be Mr. Rivan tell us what um, event to lose. All right, well, you heard it from the coach, and the coaches, part of the coach's job is to identify talent and nurture the talent that presently exists. Talk to us quickly. We've got to go back upstairs about the format for today. Um, they've got three throws, I think it is, and then you move to what? Oh, yes. So we take the first three throws, everybody will get that, and then they select the, the best eight, and they will be given a four that three throws. Um, all of the marks will count in the results. All right, well, there you heard it. That's the format for today. We're going to come back to the javelin when we, got, when we get to the top eight. But in the meantime, Leslie, I'm throwing it back up to you. Thank you indeed, Jason. And it's refreshing to hear Paul Phillip. Paul Phillip, the coach also of Anderson Peters, um, our world champion in the javelin. And to put a perspective on t in terms of some of the athletes to look out for in the javelin, he did mention quite a few names. Um, a couple of them are on the Carifta team, but... The biggest surprise for me is Elisha Williams competing in the javelin for St. David's Catholic. And from what Co Coach Paul Phillip is saying, he's, he will be a force to be reckoned with in terms of a medal pos position. So although um, Raven Tellersford is the, the favorite here being on the Carifta team, um, there are some other names that uh, Paul Phillip identified who can be good contenders for medal positions. Yes, and that, of course, is in the male category. He, he, did, he, did mention, he did mention a few. He pointed out that we can expect some keen competition from at least from Westerhall Secondary School, as well as the, the two schools in Carrico. And in the female category, of course, there is Serena Alexander and Aliyah Gidhari. Both of them will be competing in the javelin at Carifta Games as well. They are both competing. And uh, Serena has been doing very well this year. We saw at National Champs doing well. And uh, Aliyah Gidhari, she'll also be in the heptathlon. And she is one of our iron ladies, so to speak, as we saw over the last two days competing in several events. And a very interesting comment that, that he made concerning um, the, the, what he was expecting after Anderson Peters' success. He was expecting that the, the interest in javelin would have been more than it is now. And he's, he has basically put that down to the fact that we, we, missed, we missed a few years of, of intercall 
where the majority of coaching and actually sporting competition in track and field actually takes place? Well, let's see if there's going to be a resurgence as we see the first competitor here from the Bishops College in Karaku in the Javelin. Karaku has done pretty well in the field events over the years. And uh, maybe not a bad throw here from Bishops College. We'll try to get the competitor there for you in a moment. It's Ashley Hosford. So Hosford from Bishops College. That was our first competitor. We should see Destiny Langain from Hillsborough Second. That looks like Tiffany Charles. So Karaku leading off in the javelin so far. Tiffany Charles. Seems maybe a, a slightly better throw than a compatriot from Karaku, Ashley Hosford. Next on the runway would be Kishona Allert, also of Hillsborough Secondary. So, Kishona Allert of uh, Hillsborough Secondary, she comes in with a Distance of 25.40 meters, that's the season's best. And what um, Coach Paul actually pointed out is that a lot of the techniques seem to be wanting. And he, again, he alluded that to the fact that there have not been much, much um, competition for the past few years. Next on the runway is going to be Kedona Jeremiah from the Boca Secondary School. And then she'll be followed by Anya Francis of the Anglican High School. So we're going to go over to Sharia Noel, who has, I think, with her, the coach of the St. Andrews Anglican Secondary School. Sharia, it's over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Leslie. We have with us the coach of the St. Andrews Anglican Secondary School, Naid Simon. Uh, Mr. Simon, uh, the St. Andrews Anglican Secondary School, it is day three. You're in the running um, for the, the coveted trophy. But before we do, there is an event at the back of us, which is the triple jump. Um, it's a very technical ev field event. Um, can you speak to me about the preparation of your guys for that particular event? All right, Sherry. Um, our boys have been preparing for a long while now. Over, actually over seven months. Um, the triple jump is a technical event, however, we have a lot of history in the jumps. So it was an easy thing for the guys to adapt because triple jump is one of the things that we, we do at the um, physical education classes. So some of the guys are preview to it. So it would not pose a challenge today. I'm looking for the victory out there um, today in the triple jump. It's the final day of Intercall. It's an open day. We see um, some very good prospects from the St. Andrews Anglican Secondary School in terms of the sub-junior and the juniors, also in the senior category. Um, how satisfied are you with the performance thus far? And what would you think would be some of the strengths that would have to be exhibited by your team today if you are to be victorious at the end? Well, I'm very, very satisfied thus far with the performance of the team in general, especially the boys team, our sub-junior and seniors have been doing an integral part in keeping us afloat because as our motto say, um, Sampa Navigat, always sailing, so we're trying to remain on top. Um, however, today our seniors would have to continue to maintain, our juniors would have to step up. So I'm looking for my juniors stepping up today. You have uh, one of the athletes stand out that stood out in the minds of some you have i think the name is christoph christoph kalis can you speak to us uh, about that particular athlete well christoph is a special athlete he be, he's an athlete that can do multiple events he's like uh, ollie anderson peters or lyndon victor so he's just blossoming he just trained with me at the um ata track club so um, i'm looking forward to great things to, from christoph and they'll run on some of the others in the future. Thank you very much. That was the coach of the St. Andrews Anglican Secondary School speaking here with us, uh, Naid Simon. We now return to our commentary team. Well, thank you very much, Sherry. And it's good to hear the perspectives of the different coaches.
Uh, we heard from Nick Benjamin from the GBSS moments ago, and now we just heard from uh, the coach from the St. Andrews Anglican Secondary School. And I'm sure between Sherry and Jason, they will try to get some of the other coaches in the female category, maybe a St. Davis Catholic Secondary Anglican High School, to hear the perspective in those camps as well. So happening now is the javelin for the senior girls. The triple jump is also in progress. For It's an open event. And then later on, we're going to have the javelin for the senior boys. Um, on the track, we will see the 100-meter preliminaries. But again, uh, Bernard, those schools in top contention in both the male and female categories, I think the, the pressure is really on them. The others are here with nothing to lose, so to speak. But the pressure is really on those schools that are contesting for championship honors. And it's quite interesting. Um, speaking to a few of the supporters from SAS yesterday, they came to this intercall, not very high expectations in, 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 on the men's team. So they were pleasantly surprised to see how competitive they are. In fact, leading, uh, leading up to the, what, the final two events. Well, I can tell you that, that is a fact because I was at SAS Sports and the feeling coming out of SAS Sports is that uh, the team did not look ready for intercall contention. Absolutely. So kudos Moscow to the administration and the coaches of SAS. I see a Jason Sylvester, for example, he looked good at SAS Sports, but the development of that athlete throughout the season. At national champs, he was third in the 400 meters, running 48 point something. And we see him progressing nicely. It's unfortunate that he has the Rickel Telemark and others to contend with in the senior category. But um, in speaking with one of the senior administrators of, of SAS, uh, it was told to me that although they felt that they were not strong, the message that they conveyed to the students was a different message to the athletes. They were telling them that they are going to go there, they have a very good chance, they, they, they instructed a lot of positivity and a very strong and, 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 and good message to the, to the athletes. And I'm sure that lifted them. Plus, the rich tradition that SAS, ha SAS has in, in, in track and field, that in itself motivates those athletes to go forward. And I can tell you that the athletes who represent SAS know for a fact that they're not only representing SAS, but they represent a parish. And so they have the whole parish pushing and supporting them as well. And that is an additional impetus that they have when they come down to St. George. Uh, absolutely correct. The, the testimony and evidence of good coaching really is to get that athlete to peak at the right time. And this seems to be what's playing out here with the SAS, with the SAS, with the SAS team. They are peaking just right. Uh, we are still witnessing competition in the girls' javelin senior. Senior javelin and on the runway now is the athletes from and David's got Alex Secondary School. So there we see some of the competitors for the first preliminary in the 100 meters. Getting ready for we we have an update in the javelin. Uh, Serena Alexander, who threw moments ago, fifty-seven point six four, I think it was fifty-seven point four six. Serena Alexander, 37.46 meters in the javelin so far. And we're going to try to give you some more updates once we get them here. But the girls in the 100 meters sub junior, they're getting themselves ready for their first uh, preliminary, Bernard, and uh, uh, some familiar names that we can look out for in this category. So it's a girls sub junior, uh, heat number one. Heat number one. The record, the record has been around since 2003. 11.70 seconds by Leslie and Lewis. Leslie was a standard athlete. Indeed, indeed she was. So we're going to go to the house mic for the introductions of the lanes. Michelle George, lane number four, representing the classic lighting Caribbean Boca Secondary, Kedana Douglas. Lane number five, representing the St. George's Institute, Blessing Cooper. 
Lane number six, representing the St. John's Christian Secondary, Ernisha Hosford. And lane number seven, representing the Grenada Christian Academy, Kedona Rogers. These are your starters for Heat 1. Heat 1 of 6 in the sub-junior girls, 100 meters. The record in this event, 11.7 seconds. 11.7 seconds set back in 2003. The athletes for the first of six preliminaries in the sub-junior girls, 100 meters. And uh, from the Boca secondary, Kidena Douglas is one of the persons that uh, is expected to qualify from uh, this heat. Um, the first uh, person in each heat automatically qualifies and then the next two best times. We're going to have six heats, Bernard. So you have to win to earn your spot into the final and then the next two best times would advance as well. Run as hard as you can. That's, that's the word from the coaches today. And again, it's... it's always pleasing to see the new schools represented so we have SGI represented here and SGI is one of those new secondary school in Blessing Cooper and then the Christian Academy another small private secondary school in K. Donald Rogers They call to starters orders. They're on the mark. Heat one of six. Girls 100 meter dash. This is where the excitement is. It's a 100 meters. Allen, Providence, George, Douglas, Cooper, Hosford, Rogers. Up and running here. Looks as though it's Kedona Douglas of Boca Secondary. But on the inside from the Bishop College, Kayla Allen is also there. It's actually Kayla Allen who would advance automatically to the final from Bishop's College. A flash time of 12.81 seconds. We await the official results on this one, but uh, rolling on the inside of Kedona Douglas and maybe outside of her peripheral vision as well was he Kayla Allen from Bishop's College. Yes, and lane number one, Kayla Allen at from Bishop's College seems to have it there. The unofficial result seems to be the winner of this one. Followed by the athlete from Boca's secondary school, Kedona Douglas, who came in here as the favorite in this heat. 12.84, the time for Kayla Allen. There's going to be five more preliminaries in the 100 meters. If you look at the foreground, you will see an athlete from the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School getting ready for the triple jump. So Kayla Allen, 12.84. Kedona Douglas, 12.88. So Douglas doing a better time than a season best. And then in third was Chelsea Providence of McDonald College in 13.65. So the, the, the winner of each heat plus the next two best times. So the next two best times that we have in the bubble here would be 13.65 Chelsea Providence from McDonald College. Heat number two. Well, there you have it, the competitors for heat number two in the girls' 100 meter dash sub juniors. And uh, Mitchell, Thomas, Charles, Roberts, Bascom, Charles, and Alexander all line up there, except for Rolanda Charles of SAS. She's, she was supposed to be in lane three. Lane three is scratched at the moment. Kenya Roberts from the Hillsborough Secondary School. She comes in with a season best of 13.4 seconds. And to her right, we have Tishana Bascom of the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School.
And there they go, the 100 meters, seat two of six in the sub junior girls category. Looking good is the athlete from the Anglican High School. That's Rihanna Thomas in lane two. But here comes St. Davis Catholic Secondary and edging out on the tape is Tishana Bascom of the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School. And she, she did this without, without much fuss, I would say. Well, a flash time of 13.08. Let's see what the official time would be on uh, that one for Tishana Bascom of the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School. So it is a winner of each heat again, plus the two best times, so run as hard as you can. Well, Tishana did not have the best of starts, but she really advanced nicely. It was a latter part of the race, and she ran 13.08, so not as fast as the first heat. And in second was Rihanna Tom of Thomas of Anglican High School, 13.20. So the winner of heat number two, Tishona Bascom from St. David's Catholic Secondary School in a time of 13.08. The second place position, uh, Rihanna Thomas from Anglican High School in 13.20 seconds. These are the competitors for the third preliminary. We have six seats. So in then From the St. Mark's Secondary, Diasha Wildman. Well, we see a very familiar face in this lineup here in lane number four, Kelani Kwashi out of Hillsborough Secondary. She was the one who won the high jump in the sub junior girls category yesterday, going after the record of 1.57 meters. And uh, she was also involved in the, in the long jump. And here we see her again in the 100 meters for Hillsborough Secondary. But Kayla Christopher from St. Davis Catholic Secondary, she's there in lane number five. Kalani Kwashi comes in with a season best of 13.50 seconds. She would have to do a lot more than that to earn herself into the finals, I would think, based on what we've seen from the uh, previous two preliminaries. Yes, and in lane number one, it's, it's, it's Faith Cooper. Egad is in lane number two. Joseph from, Boker, from Bishop's College is in lane three. Kwashi in lane four from Hillsborough. St. David's Catholic and Christopher is in lane five. Granville Christian Academy in Augustine in lane six. And from St. Rose Modern Secondary School, uh, Diasha Weinman in lane number seven. So some final instructions been given to the athletes there in the sub-junior girls 100 meters. I'm thinking that because of the lines of the 400 meter track and the 100 meter track intersecting there, they've been given some last minute instructions as to which lines they ought to run in with regards to, and there we see Western Hall Secondary obviously having a mix up here, looking at the brightly colored, bright white lines as opposed to the dotted lines, which are the lines on the 100 meter track. So that level of confusion is, is attempted to be sought out here with the starters. Western Hall Secondary looks very much uh, confused with those lines. She's still onto the 400 meter track, not understanding here that the dotted lines are the lines for the 100 meter track. There she goes again, trying to understand which lane she has to, to run in. And it's quite commendable that the track officials are taking the time to do this. Uh, again, we have St. Mark's Secondary School. St. 
So they seem to have gotten it right now. The young lady from West Dallas Secondary now, I think she has a better understanding of her lane. Maybe this is actually your first appearance at the National Stadium as well. With a sub junior girl. There they go, up and running here and looking good. Uh, from the St. Davis Catholic Secondary, Kayla Christopher emerges nicely here. It's an easy sprint for her. She should really turn it off now. And it's a close one between uh, Kwashi for second and third. But a very easy run here for Kayla Christopher. Flash time of 12.48 seconds. 12.48, that's the fastest heat so far. And in fact, let's see what the official time is going to be. But uh, a strong message sent by Kayla Christopher, one of the favorites going into the finals. Definitely, Smith. 12.47, her uh, uh, official time. Second was Kalani Kwashi from Hillsborough Secondary with 13.52. And in third was Risha Joseph of Bishop's College, 13.55. So this would be one to look at in the, at the finals. Kayla Christopher, St. David's Catholic Secondary School. She turned it off about 40 meters to the end. Well, she was wind assisted for sure with a wind speed of a plus 2.2. So already the wind has picked up here at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. from GTC Bishops College, Sierra Jones. Out of lane number two, from Classic Lighting, J.W. Fletcher, Angelique Bain. Out of lane number three, from Gateway Christian Academy, Hedaya Marcel. Out of lane number four, from Classic Lighting, Boca Secondary, Kashanti Mitchell. Out of lane number five, from Westmoreland Secondary, Christian Gresham. Out of lane number six, from the Nawasa Sass, Christiana Charles. Lane number seven, from the Wesley College, Francis Lewis. <laughs> Your field for heat four of six. Well, uh, did you see the look on Francis Lewis' face? It was a mean look as she looked down the track to say, I'm going to eat you up in a short while. That's a game. That's a game phase. And so we we have seven lanes occupied in, 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 in this one, and should be another keen, keenly competitive race. Well, uh, actually, to, to lane un, five is scratch. Well, to own a position in the final so far, you either have to win or to do a sub 13 seconds race, because so far we've had three sub 13 second uh, performances. But a win is an obvious qualifier. And again, we seem to be having um, similar challenges that we had earlier with the markings on the, on the track, and in particular, lanes number one and two. I think that's where the real issue seems to be with those athletes in the earlier lanes coming off the bend, so to speak. Some confusion there for some of them, especially at the sub junior category. So, lanes number three and five. Let's, let's scratch in this one. It's Christian Gresham of West Tahoe Secondary and Hedaya Marcel of Gateway Christian. So, they're up and running now. They seem to have gotten it correct. And uh, we look to see who emerges here. It looks as though it's the athlete there from the GW Fletcher Catholic Secondary School, Angelic Bain. Indeed, it's Angelic Bain as she collapses onto the track, maybe missing a balance as she was leaning for the tape. The medical team right there on spot to provide some assistance. A flash time of 13.28, official time 13.30 for Angelic Bain. As we look back here, she really emerged from the rest of them at 60 meters and then uh, leaning towards the tape here. Now that's where she was off balance, so to speak. Second was Kashanti Mitchell of the Boca Secondary School, 
That's a season best for uh, Kashanti Mitchell of Boca Secondary. So it is Bain that go into the finals later on this afternoon as an automatic qualifier. The others would have to wait and see what, if the time will hold up. Away well, on to heat number five. This is heat number five of six. Looks like we have a full lane here. It's good to see the athletes at the sub junior category with the starting block Bernard. Yeah, the young athlete uh, with the starting block. She seems to be all decked out for, for this one, including uh, dark shades. Out of lane number three, from the McDonald College, Carisha Noel. Out of lane number four, from the St. Joseph's Convent St. George's, Chadija Walcott. Out of lane number five, from the Westmoreland Secondary, Aaliyah Campbell. Out of lane number six, from the Nawasa Sass, Brianna Oliver. Out of lane number seven, from the Grenville Secondary School, Norcia Nelson. And running out of lane number eight, from St. John's Christian Secondary, Lashana St. Louis. Your field for heat number well, five. Well, I had some very and interesting facial expressions dash. from the youngsters in the 100 meters for sub-junior girls. Some appear to be very focused. Some has a little bit of uh, a little timid look on their face and some with a level of uncertainty as well. But nonetheless, they line up here in the preliminaries looking for a position into the finals. It's sub junior so one can expect one can expect that sort of a featured looks today it's the first time on a big scale for some of them on a big stage for some of them nice camera work there and a good clean start convince and george looks good on the inside Seven-day Adventist campaign of McDonald College emerges out of the pack here. Carisha Noel, but look at Sass on the, on, the, on the near side as well, in the likes of Bevana Oliver. And I think it was Oliver in the end in lane six who would get that automatic qualifying spot into the finals. The yeah. flash time, 13.20. 13.20, it looked like Sass. We wait for the official results. 13.24, the official time for uh, Verona of Sass. She really had a, maybe not the best of starts and had to work her way back into uh, contention towards the end of the race. And Carisha Noel of McDonald College picked up the second position with 13.38. So Oliver from SAS would get an automatic qualifying position into the finals uh, with a time of 13.24. It's not the fastest time from the preliminaries, but... Uh, She's well on her way to the finals. She's well on an automatic qualifier. If you were tuning in for the first time, this is the Republic Bank Inter Intercall 2023 from the Kerania James's Athletic Stadium in St. George, Grenada. Day three of three. We are witnessing the preliminaries for the girls 100 meters sub-junior. The girls 100 meters sub junior. We are uh, now about to see the start of heat number six of six automatic qualifiers for the winner, and then the next two best times. Well, following this final preliminary, we'll go back to Jason to give us an update on the javelin. So, right after this event, we will get an update on the javelin. Out of lane number seven, from the St. Mark Secondary School, Kenesha Barry. And earning out of lane number eight, from Classic Lighting, Happy Hill Secondary, Arisha Regis. Heat number six of six, in the girls' 100-meter dash, sub-junior. 
Well, the final heat here to earn that final automatic qualifying spot into the finals. And uh, the next two best times would also advance to the finals. Full set of lanes as well. Grenville Secondary, Anglican High School, St. Joseph Convent, St. George. St. Joseph Convent, St. Andrew is also there. Wester Hall, Wesley College, St. Mark Secondary, and the Happy Hills Secondary. Nice clean start here. 100 meters sub junior girls, preliminary number six. Looking good is Anglican High School, Samara Noel in lane two. Convent St. Andrew is running back nicely and wins this one, and that's. Uh, Samara Noel of the Convent Grenville and she had a good challenge from Rachel Etienne of the Anglican High School but I think just on the tip here Bernard uh, Samara Noel of Convent Grenville would have emerged. She had a terrible start look at where she is at the moment uh, Bernard but running back real real nice here and I think she just clipped her on the tip yeah, definitely she did. so she did. Definitely. Samara Noel of Convent Grenville and that's her classmates and her schoolmates they're happy to see Samara advancing to the finals with a time of 13.19 seconds. 13.19 seconds. So one of the fastest, fastest times today. So the top six athletes, based on the winners of the uh, preliminaries, we've had... We recognize and applaud your overwhelming love and support relative to your favorite schools and athletes. Kayla Allen, Bishop's College. Cadonna Douglas from the Boca Secondary. Fastest time, Kayla Christopher, St. Davis Catholic. And then we had uh, uh, Angelic Bain from the JW Fletcher. And of course, uh, Berona Oliver of SAS. And moments ago, we saw Samara Noel of Convent Grenville. They were the winners of the, the, the six seats. And then we are now await for the two best times of all six heats to get the final eight we try to get you an update on the the javelin that's that's in progress that's the senior girls javelin and also the triple jump but bishops college is now on the runway here in the javelin looking to earn a spot into the finals the top eight vehicles from where they are parked at this time but up next on the track will be the boys 100 meters sub junior. And again, we have five heats in this one. The boys 100 meters sub junior. The record in this event was set in 2011. Ronnie Oliver in 2011. So Jason appears to be ready for us with an update. And uh, moments from now, we will hear from Jason uh, with an update in the javelin. But in the meantime, it's Hillsborough Secondary who is going to have an attempt. So we're going to go over to Jason Skeet now who is down trackside to provide an update for us on what's happening in the field events. As we just saw through there from Zodita Crony of SAS in the Javelin. The javelin seems to be down to the final eight, it seems. The boys for the 100 meter sub juniors, they are getting themselves ready. We will see the likes of Adele Ron John from SAS, Raphael Cadu, Grenville Secondary, Nicole Courtney from Grenada Christian Academy, Rosal Ross. His borough secondary, Andre Fletcher from St. David's Catholic Secondary, 
familiar name in cricket for us. Ethan Ogis from PBC will be there and Omarion Bruno of the GW Fletcher Catholic School. So Jason is, uh, is ready for us now to provide an update on what's happening in the field events. Jason, uh, tell us what's happening there. So we're going to get right back to Jason in a moment because we've had we've having some audio challenges from Jason. And as soon as we do, we will get that live update from Jason. But the javelin is in progress. We see an athlete from the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School on the runway now. And that looks like Aliyah Gidhari, one of our Karifta athletes. That's, That's Gidhari. Lane one, Nawasa Sass, Delron John. Lane two, Grenville Secondary, Rayful Kadu. Lane number three, Grenada Christian Academy, Nickel Courtney. Lane number four, Paddy's Enterprise, Hillsboro, Roselle Ross. Lane number five, St. David Catholic Secondary, Andre Fletcher. Lane six, Nexa PBC, Ethan Ogis. Lane number seven, Classic Lighting, J.W. Fletcher, Amarion Bruno. Heat one, the boys 100 meter dash, sub junior. So there you have it, but uh, there are two very, very familiar names in this one, Bernard. Um, a name, Delron John from SAS, and he has an interesting story. And also we have from PBC, Ethan Ogist. And that's where they're running should be. That's where the competition should be in this one, on paper and on form th th that we have been witnessing for the past two days. However, well, anything can happen. Rosal Ross of the Hillsborough Secondary comes in with a season best of 12 Point zero seconds, but Ethan Ogis and Delron John would look would, would obviously have other thoughts than 12 seconds. Um, Ethan Ogis was second in the 400 meters, the 200 meters yesterday, and uh, Delron R John, you remember him in that four by 100 meter relay, um, showboating somewhat and uh, um, anchoring Sass in the in the preliminaries of the four by 100 meters. He's one of the athletes that had a very short, short stint in Jamaica and had to return because of some issues there. And uh, a new finder, so to speak, for SAS, Delron John, and a favorite for this event. But we expect himself and uh, Ethan Ogis to emerge and advance to the finals from this first preliminary. Yes, they, have, they would have both done quite well on days one and two. Ronnie Oliver, very familiar name amongst us here at TNR Com Communications, the record holder for this event. 11 seconds flat. Uh, they're up and running here. We look to see Delron John in lane one and Ethan Ogis out there in lane five. But there goes Delron John of Sass. Delron John of Sass wins easily in the end. Uh, Ethan Ogis has to settle for second and an automatic qualifying position. A flash time of 11.57 seconds. Not a bad time in the preliminary for Delron John. Ethan Ogis had to settle for second and the SAS fans here are in jubilation. Delron John has delivered in the preliminaries for them. So it's, a, it's a f the winner of the f each heat. We have five heats. The winner of each heat plus the next three best times. This one was fairly easy for Delron John with a geese in second position. So Delron John in 11.58, one of the athletes, one of the athletes who um, seems to have a lot of confidence in his ability. A 12 seconds flat for Ethan Ogis and then Andre Fletcher of the St. Davis Catholic Secondary picking up the third position. So it was Delon John in this one, Ogeast in second position, and Andre Fletcher in third position. Automatic qualifier, Delon John. All right, well, uh, up, to up to speed quickly. Now, after the first round of attempt.
These young ladies in the Javelin Senior went in with three attempts each, and then the top eight will come out and go into a semi-final round. Basically, coming in after the first three rounds, you might want to call it almost a done deal already, but time has a factor to play with that. Uh, Serana Alexander of the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School, 39.09 leading the field 39.09 remember she's a bronze medalist the reigning the reigning bronze medalist in the junior character games 39.09 right behind her is uh, her compatriot from the same school St. Davis Catholic secondary Aliyah Gidhari she threw 36.01 on her second attempt her first attempt was a 35 early then she went on to and and threw 36.1 and that's where the competition really is between one and two 39.09 and 36.01 in third position Monique Noel of the St. Andrews Anglican Secondary School she was 10 meters behind the second place 26.06 and uh, Ayana Francis of the Anglican High School 25.09 those are the top four in the girls javelin through but uh, on barring something extraordinary extra special uh, Serana Alexander seems to already have this one locked in the bag locked and key tight with uh, qualifying into the second round with 39.09 Leslie uh, thank you very much Jason and it's good to see that Serena Alexander and Aliyah Gidhari the favorites in the javelin living up to expectation as they prepare for character games 2023 we're going to look now, we're going to go over now to the 100 meter dash sub junior boys for the second of the five preliminaries and while we take in some of that uh, we've been joined in the commentary position here with by with the president of the Grenada Athletics Association Mr. Conrad Francis and we're going to talk everything track and field including uh, preparations for Carifta and the expectations of the Grenada team at Carifta Games 2023 so i say good morning to Conrad Francis and welcome to the microphones of TNR Communications as we bring Intercall Games 2023 to throughout Grenada and the diaspora um, in live and living colors here at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. Conrad, morning. Good morning, Leslie, and good morning to all our listeners, both locally and in the diaspora. It's a pleasure for me to be here once again. So, Conrad, we're we on day three. It's a very exciting uh, Intercall Games 2023, I would presume, especially in the boys' category where there is a, a keen rivalry between two schools. But over the, the two and a half or two, over two days, we've seen some uh, uh, moments of brilliance, some very good performances, some keen competition. And what I would also want to consider um, pretty much above bar organization in terms of the, the running of the games. Um, I would ask you for your own impressions uh, of the game so far in terms of the level of organization and the, the performances that you've seen from the athletes as they come towards the end of the, the track and field season culminated with character games for some of them. Yeah, well first of all, um, I would like to comment in terms of the, the performances. So we're going to take Conrad's comment right after this preliminary. We have here Charles, Gibbs, Joseph, Joseph, Maloney, Philip, Samuel and Douglas. Kamal Joseph from GBSS out there in lane four. Looks to emerge first out of the back here. He has some challenge on the inside, but it's Kamal Joseph from uh, GBSS with a season best of 12.06, a flash time here of 12.19, and uh, would emerge into the finals as the winner of the seat, Kamal Joseph from GBSS, 12.19 on the flash time. Conrad, yeah, you were saying in terms of the from, from what you've seen over the two days so far? Yes, there, there have been some, some brilliant performances, um, especially in the boys' division. Um, in the seniors, we had outstanding people like um, Elijah Williams, um, Rikel Telemark, and Joshim Williams, I think it's from, from SAS. Joshim Sylvester. Joshim Sylvester from SAS. Um, these boys, I, I think, um, did a comfort for themselves very well. Also in the junior division, it, it runs even deeper than, than in the boys with um, people like Ethan Sam and, and Tirik Maxwin, um, uh, Mikhail Redhead. Uh, the, these guys, they are running and we saw some very good performances. I mean, getting under the 22 seconds um, in the sprints is no, is no easy feat as, as an under 17. And, and we have seen that. Um, in the sub junior boys, we have John from 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 SAS. He's he's, he's outstanding. Um, 
but 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 what has struck me is that um it it does not run as deep as you would have liked it to you know um you see spring sprinkles sprinkling of 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 the talent but i would have loved to see it run deeper um i think we only have that in the in the in the under 17 boys in the sprints and the, and the boys on the 200 in the, in the senior boys. boys. But I would love to see the day we turn um, we could have eight, eight finalists in the under 17 boys and eight of them going under, under 11 seconds. And in the boys, I mean, going under, under, under 11 seconds also. Right? Um, so there is a lot of work to be done in terms of the coaching in the schools and also the coaching in the clubs. So we're going to come back to discuss some more of that corner in terms of the depth of the athletes from the various schools and the, in the finals. And I do agree with you on, on that to a certain extent, except in the junior boys category. It's a real rivalry there with maybe a top six athletes. So there we have the boys line up here for the third of the five preliminaries in the 100 meter dash for sub juniors. And uh, Omari Richardson from the West Hall Secondary comes in with a season best of 12.13. You'd have to do a lot better than that uh, uh, unless he wins the heat to make it into the finals. We've already had some impressive times in the, in the, in the preliminaries so far. We had an 11.58 from Delron John. Um, Ethan Ugis a 12 flat and we had a 12.17 moments ago from Carmel Joseph from the GBSS. So let's see what these youngsters, the, the, the timing that they're going to return here, but anything sub 12 I think would be a competitive time going into the finals. The record here 11 seconds flat, very impressive time indeed for the sub juniors. And they're up and running. Uh, let's see who wants that qualifying spot more. It looks as though it's Vetchio Hines from the Shaper, St. John's Christian Secondary School. Westall is making a run back for it, but Shaper, Ve Vecchio Hines, seems to be the automatic qualifier with 11.97 seconds on the flash time. And that in itself is a strong message to the likes of Adelron John with an 11.58 easing for the tape as well. There we see Vecchio Hines again on the inside in lane two, but getting some real competition from Westall Secondary. 11.98 the official time and 12.01 for the athlete from Westall Secondary School. Conrad, so you mentioned in the, the boys category some moments of brilliance, um, some athletes that uh, definitely did well. In the female category, obviously, there were some as well. Who stands out to you um, from what you've seen so far over the two days? Well, definitely, um, the under-17 girl from Anglican High School, Shefrenoa Houston. Um, she has done a decent time in the 400 meters of 57.7 57 seconds. Um, I, she definitely, <laughs> in, in, in my view, that's the only real standout. That, I'm, that, I'm see, that I've seen so what far. What about the youngster for the um, heptathlon? Aliyah Gidhari. In yes. terms of seeing her in the individual events and putting that package together for the combined events. Well, actually, Gidhari is, 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 is one of our selectees for character game. She's going to character, but she did not do the, the heptathlon here. She, she is a talent. And um, we are very hopeful that she can do very well at, at, at character. Um, I'm not seeing she would get into the medals, but she will do very well. Um, but the, 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 the talent is rare in the girls. I mean, the, 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 there were some exciting races, but excitement does not put time, height and distance on the board. And you mentioned the character team, Aliyah Gidhari being one of the selectees there. Um, we have a whole list of the athletes and we're happy to see that Greenland will be fielding uh, relay teams as well. But what are the real prospects? Um, both in the male and female categories where we think we can either emerge into the fi advance to the finals or even be on the podium. Wh which areas do you think um, we, we stand the best chances in terms of a medal or a finals? Yeah, I think our best chances would be in the field events, um, as is traditional. 
we have um, in the in the boys division we have um, Cameron Cameron Thomas and and Raven Raven Tillerson Raven Tillerson um, was the gold medalist at the under 17 level and now he has moved up to the senior level. Lane four. The magical GBSS, Jaden Pierre. Lane five, St. Rose Modern Secondary, Cavon Louison. Lane six, St. Mark Secondary, Tristan Richardson. And running out of lane number seven, GTC, Bishop's College, Jordel Simon. That's your start list for heat four of six, sub junior boys. 100 meters. Yeah, so Colored, you're putting into perspective some of the the areas where Grenada has good medal prospects. Yeah, as I said, we're hopeful that, that Robin Telesford can transfer his, his, his form and character from the under 17 level to the, to the under 20. And then we had Cameron, who got a bronze last year. We're hoping that he can up a notch and. Right, so we're going to come back with Conrad uh, for some more perspectives on the character, but we go back to trackside for the fourth of the five preliminaries in the boys' 100 meters sub juniors. Jaden Peer comes in with a season best of 12.27. He runs out of lane four for GBSS. Um, Aldon Clark from the West Hall Secondary comes in with a season best of 12.6. He is in lane five. And Fies look as an athlete out of the St. Rose more than secondary. That should be Kevon Lewison. So some final instruction been dished out to the athletes. Again, we see an automatic uh, qualifying position would be a first position. And uh, to secure that, a sub-12 seconds would also be in medal contention going into the finals. Stumble here for Bishop's College coming out of the blocks, but it's GBSS Jaden Peer who looks to be the automatic qualifier here. Indeed, it's going to be Jaden Peer of the GBSS. St. Mark secondary on the other side uh, in uh, Tristan Richardson will pick up the second position. A flash time of 11.93 seconds for Jaden Peer. And that will be his season best. Came in with a season best of 12.27 for Jaden Peer of the GBSS uh, securing that automatic qualifying position. Official time 11.92. And uh, for the St. Mark secondary school. So 11.92 for uh, Jaden Pay. Coming right back to the character uh, as we round up our conversation here. Grenada, we know traditionally has done well in the field events. Um, we've had some moments of brilliance on the track as well. And uh, uh, looking at the team, we have a, a pretty decent team here in terms of numbers. Um, a lot of people are commenting about the relay and the prospects for Grenada in the relay. The 4 by 100 meters in that uh, under 17 category. What do you think from the timing that these guys have been doing? Our real prospect in that particular event. To be honest, I think we can get into the finals. And um, once you get into the finals, anything can happen. Um, but the boys have been running very well this season. And um, I'm, I'm very happy that, that they're getting the chance to go there and, and showcase their talent. Um, the the boys four by one seniors also um, they should get into the finals and um, and challenge for a medal also in the four by four um, both both four by four teams we think that the the four relay teams can do very well can get into the finals let and me ask you this question Colin has Grenada ever had four relay teams at a carry me before um yes yes we did um, and we can go back to the, the, the starting of character games in 1972 and 1973. Um, Grenada won medals in both relays, right? The 4x4 the four four and 4x1. And we had the likes of the Lane brothers, Lambert and um, 
forget uh, other guys name. but that was a very strong strong really team and for two consecutive years Pineda carried both um, four by one under 17 and four by uh, relay teams and we had four relay teams in, in both relays and did very well for those two years 72 and 73. So we have with us here Conrad Francis, the president of the Grenada Athletic Association, and we're talking track and field. After this final heat, we're go, going to go over to Jason Skeet, who is on the ground, to give us an update in the boys' triple jump open. But now we're going to go to the final of the five preliminaries in the 100-meter dash for sub-junior boys. Christoph Kalis, we heard Sherian talking about him this morning. He's there for SAS in lane six. He won the 400 meters and placed third in the 200 meters. We heard the coach of SAS talking about him as well as a multidiscipline athlete. And he said that Christoph reminds him of uh, a Lyndon Victor. So let's see what can be done to harness the talent of this young man from SAS. Also in this event, we have from the Wesley College, J. Constant Louis, from Boca Secondary, Jamal Andrew, from uh, the Seventh day Adventist Comprehensive, Kieran George, Hillsborough Secondary, Taekwon Boswin, Grenada Christian Academy, Nathaniel Alfred, Kalis from SAS, Alan Albert of McDonald College, and Dante Oliver of the St. Mark's Secondary. There they go. Let's see who wants that qualifying position. Christoph Kalis from SAS looks to be in the lead at the moment in the navy blue towards the front of the screen here. Kalis wins easily in the end and it looks as though the St. David's, sorry, the Grenada Seventh-day Adventist comprehensive picked up the second position. So Christoph Kalis makes his way into the finals. A flash time of 11.85 It would be maybe the second fastest time going into the finals. Christoph Kalis 11.85 now we were saying earlier that uh, SAS looks as the dominating team in the sub juniors and their two athletes already returned the two fastest times but Delron John who ran 11.58 the fastest time really eased into the tip and is sending a very strong message to the other competitors going into the finals later on this evening for the 100 meter sub juniors so just to give you the top times so far 11.58 Delron John uh, we also had 11.92 uh, from uh, GBSS Jaden Pear, 11.85 from Christoph Kalis, 11.98 from Vecchio Hines, and then Ethan August 12 seconds flat, and uh, Omario Richardson 12.01. Conrad, as we before we go back to Conrad, we have Jason Skeet down at the Triple Jump pit. Jason, what's happening in Triple Jump? Triple Jump is uh, excitement and it's going to come down to again uh, just about maybe four athletes really. Um, after the first round of competition, now they're going into the top eight and then they're going to boil that down to the top three. Um, after the first round of competition, a leading jump of 13.03 coming in from uh, Timothy Greenwich of the Grenada Boy. Timothy Greenwich of the GBSS 13.03. Um, Asha date of SAS 12.90 and that's where the competition is really between one and two but as we move down the table the other uh, top three from three go down to five um, Mika Campbell of GBSS 12.72 Anon Williams of SAS 12.40 and right behind him on his heels uh, Shaquan Thomas of McDonald College 12.39 but really, um, the elite ones coming out of the triple jump so far, GBSS and Timothy Greenwich leading 13.02 and Ashan, Asha Day 12.90. Leslie? Thank you, Jason, for that update. And again, for the people keeping scores, that's important information. Um, SAS and GBSS with one and a half points separating them at the beginning of day three. Uh, those two schools occupying the top four positions in the triple jump. GBSS at the moment in one and three and SAS in two and four. And those points are going to be crucial points for them in terms of championship honors. 
So, uh, Conrad, the rivalry in the boys' category continues. I mean, I think a lot of people are commenting on that the way that Intercol is designed now is only the larger schools, schools with the bigger populations that really have uh, maybe the best chances of winning. And here we see that happening in the boys' category to a certain extent. With GBSS and SAS being the perennial uh, powerhouses and that rivalry that goes on between those two schools coming into sharp focus again in 2023. Yeah, it's it's a very healthy rivalry that has uh, lasted um, for a lot of years now, and um, it is very good to see that it is continuing between between these two schools. So that's a 100 meter sub junior boys that's actually taking place here now. As we go back to that, we see from Westerhall Secondary Alden Clark, and then on the inside from St Davis Catholic Ronel Hosford. Hosford eventually winning, coming from behind. And winning for St. Davis Catholic Secondary, a flash time of 12.16 seconds. So that's in the sub-junior boys category. So that was one of the events that was missed. And they had a rerun of that event. And it was uh, from the St. Davis Catholic Secondary. Ronald, tell us for the flash time of 12.16 seconds. So, Conrad, yeah, we were speaking about that rivalry between those two schools. Yeah, as I said, it's, it's very healthy healthy rivalry and it's all good for the sports um, to see the two schools again battling it out but i don't share your view that um it's only the big schools that can that can vie for for championship well, we would always argue about <laughs> a yeah, yeah. Conrad, we mr will. antoine here with bmo pbc one i think in 1976 it was no no the system was different the system right, was different 1976 um the point and, system was completely and, different and 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 yours truly Yours truly won <laughs> one intercall <laughs> with a mayor with a mayor with a, with a with a total of three hundred students, boys and girls. So we had a hundred and something girls and book a one intercall and we were very outstanding in the boys, you know. So I don't share and I that agree, view. And I agree with that call, I share the view that if you different. have good programs, if you have good programs in your school, it doesn't matter. You can have fifty boys and you can come and win into call and it all depends on your management of that team and your program that you have in your school. Well so we I don't we're gonna argue on this until the cows <laughs> come home because with <laughs> with, with heptathlon now uh, with yeah. uh, hurdles with all of the, the triple jump in the different categories well it's open back it's back open again. The smaller schools would obviously be dis be disadvantaged in feeling full teams and in having the quality athletes to do it. There are some exceptional cases. St. Davis Catholic Secondary is a small school and they've been doing well in the girls' category. But they have a good program there. But the schools with the smaller populations is at a disadvantage. You may find the, the, the circumstances like the St. Davis Catholic Secondary, but uh, we, we, ca we can't dispute that. But we'll come back to that. We'll go down trackside for the first medal presentation for the day and we'll be back momentarily. 4.94 meters. Event 24, Boys Javelin Throw Junior. Bronze medalist, Jelani Barnes, PBC. 46.36 meters. Silver medalist, Josh Thomas, Paddy's Enterprise, Hillsborough Secondary, 49.42 meters. Time now for your gold medalist, Jarrell Clement, also representing Paddy's Enterprise, Hillsborough Secondary, 51.89 meters. We can back up to event nine, girls high jump senior. Bronze medalist, Azuri Isaac, St. Joseph's Convent, St. George's. 1.40 meters. Silver medalist, Shadel and Twine. St. Joseph, St. John's Christian Secondary, 1.48 meters.
Now your gold medalist, Akira Morena, representing St. David's Catholic Secondary. A height of 1.48 meters. Congratulations to all of the winners. A round of applause, ladies and gents. And we thank very much Mr. Daniel Thomas, former principal of Happy Hill Secondary School. So thank you very much. And we're back here at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. The spectators are really coming in in their large numbers now. And uh, Conrad is still with us. We're going to have a final section here with Conrad. And Conrad, I want to talk about, in the past, um, we used to have this intercult preview, this document that previewed the athletes coming out of their school sports and giving a good perspective as to what to expect. And some people in recent times have been asking for that preview to be done to give a good guide as to what to expect and maybe some of the challenges of intercult and some of the, the new proposals. I know that you are one of the persons who would have um, prepared or assisted in preparing that document in the past. Are we going to see an intercall preview coming back and, and give us a perspective on the, the significance of that document that was prepared prior to intercall games? <laughs> yeah, um, that's a big one. But just to make a correction, yeah. Yours truly produced this document. So not assisted right. in preparation, produced. <laughs> produced it. Thank you. <laughs> um, it. This was born out of the the, the idea of getting getting people to 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 really follow the sport, right? Getting the schools, the fans behind the sport. So you come to Intercall, you know exactly what to look what to look for. So. So what this intercall preview contains is a ranking of all the athletes from one to, I think it was one to 10, I did. I, so when you come to intercall, you know exactly who to look, who to look forward to because in those days, um, you didn't have, the, I mean, the internet was not that popular, you know, all the social media platforms and so on. So this document was, was, was produced and, um, People really followed it. People followed it, and and most of the predictions were were very were very accurate. And what we also tried to do in the, in, in the preview was to also um, do very various articles on, on interesting topics in, in track and field. And I, and um, thank you, Russell. Back on the track, it's the 100 meter dash. Junior girls. So the set for one athletes one for of five. There are five uh, the 100 meter dash junior the girls, they getting the themselves the ready. We're going to hear from Conrad in a while again, just to put a wrap on things. And uh, this event would have uh, Kiana Richardson from St. Rose Modern Secondary, Peaches Panchu, McDonald College, Janel Griffith, Westerhall Secondary, Kamali Phillip, St. Joseph Convent, St. George, Shafonia Houston, a member of the national team for Carifta from the Anglican High School. Representing the McDonald College, Peaches, Panchu. Representing the Classic Lighting, Wester Hall Secondary, Janelle Griffith. Representing the St. Joseph's Convent, St. George's, Camille Phillip. Representing the Anglican High School, Shefonia Houston. Representing the St. Davis Catholic Secondary, Akira Moraine. Representing St. Joseph's Convent, Grenville, Zania Belfort. Those are your starters for Heat 1 of 5, Junior Girls, 100 meters. And as I was saying, obviously, Shefonia Houston in lane 5 is the favorite to advance to the finals as the, um, she's expected to win this heat. And uh, we also need to look out for Camille Phillip of St. Joseph's Convent, St. George. She comes in with a season best of 12.79. And... Uh, Akira Moraine of the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School. She would want to gain a position into the finals as well. Maybe coming in with the next uh, uh, best three times. So Houston in lane five. She'll be competing at the Carifta Games and she'll be competing in the under 17, under 17 girls category. So they're up and running. Uh, keep your eyes on lane five from the Anglican High School in the white outfit here. 
Trafonia Houston and it's going to be an easy victory for Houston going towards the finish line here now. Uh, Convent St. George picked up the second position in Cameli Phillip and uh, the flash time for Houston 12.39 from the Anglican High School. Again, Conrad, um, Karifta, Selecti, Houston, living up to expectation in this one, an easy win for her. Official time, 12.41 seconds. Yes, as I said before, that um, she has been the standout female athlete for me of this, of these games. Um, it's a work in progress, you know, looking at her, she has to improve on her stats, you know, and the, the, the first phase of the, of the 100, the drive phase especially. And, and I think she will, she will get there and she could be a very tremendous athlete. So a season best for Kamali Phillip of Convent St. George of 12.73. Shefonia Houston advancing uh, to the finals. Conrad, finally, are we going to see that intercall preview back on stream, maybe in 2024? <laughs> now that you've retired from active coaching and so on? Well, and maybe with a little more time on your hand? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it probably, probably, it's, it, it's, it's under consideration, you know. Um, and I, I, I feel... As if sometimes uh, you feel as uh, well, prophecy is being fulfilled eh? because if you look at the the, the, the uh, edition of Intercall Preview 2002, you'll see that um, a proposal was made there for the revamping of of Intercall. And, and Colonel, let me let me just stick up in here in that because that's very very cru uh, crucial. So in that Intercall Preview of 2002, you recommended a number of changes for Intercall. Amongst them or the inclusion of the hurdles, the heptathlon, the pentathlon, heptathlon for boys, pentathlon for girls, triple jump for the girls. And uh, you also recommended a different point system. You recommended three days of intercall as well. You recommended qualifying standards so that we would not see things like what was happening over the two days where we have timed finals, which a lot of people were very, very upset about. So a number of your pro proposals that you had in 2002, we now see them at Intercall Games in 2023. So do you think that this preview might have been a resource that was used in terms of the development of Intercall over the years? Well, I'm not sure, because um, after 23 years, you're seeing um, um, we now move to, the, to three days. And um, so I, 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 I doubt that. Um, because I also have in, in the proposal the schedule of events for the three days. And if you look at the schedule of events for this meet, you'll see that it's a lot of, is to be desired about yeah, the schedule and, and of, that the, was some of the comments. events. Right? So I, I, I am not sure. <laughs> but it's still a food that can be um, consumed. It's available um, in certain quarters, the Intercall Preview 2020 from 2002. And Conrad is still around to give his input. He may have some changes to those proposals, um, considering the, the currency of time now. And, uh, but we've seen a, a huge transformation and evolution of Intercall Games. So Conrad, we want to say thank you very much uh, uh, for coming to TNR Communication Studio and enlightening us on various aspects of track and field. I know that although in your retirement as a coach, you're still following, you're the president of the Athletics Association and congratulations on all the outstanding work that you've been doing in track and field in Grenada. Thank you, Leslie. So we go back track side for the 100 meter dash for junior girls, uh, Shakita Bernard, Zenik Roberts, uh, they all here and uh, looking to qualify into the finals. We saw the first of the five preliminaries moments ago, Shefunia Houston of the Anglican High School. Uh, she would have won that first preliminary. And uh, Amia Chandley of the Boca Secondary School, she comes in with a season best of 12.91. We want to welcome back Bernard Antoine to the chair to provide uh, expert comments for the, the broadcast. Bernard, we've heard from Conrad Francis moments ago and some of his proposals from 2002, his perspective on the games as well, in terms of some of the performances of the athletes. 
But Conrad Francis must be etched in the memory of track and field in Grenada. When the book of track and field is written, I, I'm thinking that a chapter has to be designated to the work that Conrad Francis has done. Oh, you're absolutely correct. And just in this course with Con Conrad, there's so much to be learned. There's so much to be learned f from him. Uh, it, the depth of them demands knowledge, institutional knowledge about track and field in Grenada is something is something worth listening to, or something worth taking in. We are back on the tracks. It's, it's heat number two of the girls' 100 meters dash. All students at Petra. So there they are, Bernard, St. Mark's Secondary, Roberts, Grenada Christian Academy. Maureen, Westerhouse Secondary, Chandler, Boca Secondary, George, St. Rosemont and Secondary, Edwards, G.W. Fletcher Catholic, and the Charles of the Grenville Secondary School. And one can expect the athletes from Boca Secondary, Chandler, uh, with a coming in, time coming in of 12.91 to distinguish herself in this one. And we are, uh, we have a similar uh, um, issues, if you want to call it that, with the the lanes, even with the bigger girls like the junior girls. But some of the things that Conrad was talking to that have now come to pass, I, I think, is testimony to the to the insight and the the the. The, the knowledge that this this man would have had from many meets around the Caribbean and around the world that we have brought to bear to improve on our our product here, Intercol 2023, seeing some of the fruits of that. The game's record for this event is 12.04 seconds. Uh, Johnny at Thomas in 2018. Girls, 100 meters, heat number two. There they are, they're on the status orders now. 100 meters junior girls. There we see the bumping into lanes here by the athlete from Christian Academy. But Boca secondary Chandler emerges ahead of the pack here and it's going to be an easy victory for Chandler. Amaya Chandler of Boca secondary, a flash time of 13 seconds flat. And uh, a walk in the park sort of for Chandler from the Boca secondary school. According to the form, she, we expected her to win, but we, we, we had some mess up again very early and had to do with the crossing of lanes very early even though well, there was some explanation there the, the officials did try to explain here but the athletes still having some confusion with the oh an athlete going down here from st mark secondary school that's uh, shakira bernard let's uh, hope she's okay let's hope she's okay and again we want to remind the athletes in, in case you are listening in and taking part of somehow you need to keep yourself hydrated so Rikaya Charles came in second from Grenville Secondary, 13.69 and 13.02 for Chandler of the Boca Secondary School. So the spectators building up nicely, Bernard. Um, we see a lot of the students are coming in on the bleachers closest to the main pavilion. And there are also some students in the secondary pavilion and of course the main pavilion is filled with a lot of the past pupils and adult uh, population so we expect that by 3 4 p.m this afternoon there should not be much moving space in there, the stands there would not be much moving space and the noise will reach uh some level so we hope you we hope we hope you stay tuned we, the product is a good one and we expect some fine competition right on to the 4x400 meters that will bring the curtains down on this edition of the Inter-Secondary School Games sponsored by Republic Bank in 2023. We are getting ready for heat number three. Heat three. 
Well, this one is going to be an interesting one, Bernard. We see some quote-unquote big names in this one. Egypt Benjamin Anglican High School, Alina Dikoto, Happy Hill Secondary School. Uh, we also see Kayla McIntyre from St. Joseph Convent, St. George. Kamaya Telesford of the St. Davis Catholic Secondary. Uh, based on form, we expect Egypt Benjamin to come out of this one. She was third in the 200 meters. But don't rule Alina Dikoto out of this one from the Happy Hill Secondary School. Absolutely, absolutely. The winner advances to the finals and the next best three times. So I believe this may be one of the fastest preliminaries out of the five. Most let's competitive for sure. Let's see what happens here. And Shani Sylvan from the, the St. Andrews Anglican Secondary School is also in this one. Well, we saw a very good run yesterday from Alina Dikoto of the Happy Hill Secondary School. Idri Benjamin, Anglican High School. That's Dakota there right for you. They're on the starter's orders. Heat three of five. And the preliminaries for the 100 meters junior girls. Nice clean start here. Let's see what happens between E.G. Benjamin and Alina Dikoto. Dikoto seems to be in the lead at the moment. Alina Dikoto of Happy Hill Secondary School. She is going to win the seat and advance to the finals ahead of uh, E.G. Benjamin of the Anglican High School. A flash time of 12.52 seconds for Alina Dikoto of the Happy Hill Secondary School. Bernard, yesterday she looked very impressive indeed. And today, again, in good form, Alina Dikoto of the Happy Hill Secondary School. And she backed up her form of yesterday. So it is Alina Dikoto from the Happy Hill Secondary School in first position in heat number three. The yes. official time 12.52 seconds. Ije Benjamin 12.94 seconds from the Anglican High School. So this has been the fastest of the three uh, heats so far. And we anticipated that somewhat uh, with the level of competition that we saw in this race. And uh, Alino Dikoto living up to expectations. So too was Egypt Benjamin of the Anglican High School. The fastest heat and the most competitive one to date. And next will be heat number four. So there are going to be some big gunners in heat number four as well. The likes of Atalia Sampson. Also from the Happy Hill Secondary School. And uh, Talia Sampson. She's also a member of the Carifter team and she'll be participating in the 100 and 200 meters in the under 17 girls category. So she'll be an obvious favorite for this upcoming heat. The fans are out in their numbers very early. We're still in the preliminary events on the track and uh, some of the field events. I would think that the javelin has already been completed and so too is the triple jump for the, for the open boys. So Serena Alexander would have won the javelin in 39.09. .09. Alia Gedari and they're both athletes from the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School. Alia Gedari would have picked up the second position and these two are also character athletes representing Grenada at the car the games so look for lane number three talia samson the happy in secondary school one of our selectees the team. from the mcdonald college abigail williams lane seven from the st john's <coughs> christian secondary keontae williams and lane eight from the gtc bishops college dejeuner <coughs> brown 
Well, there we have it, the lineup for the girls' 100 meter dash junior, the fifth and final preliminary. And uh, what a moment it is for Happy Hill Secondary School. Moments ago, they won the preliminary and they're about to win another preliminary here in the likes of Talia Sampson in lane number three. So it's actually hit four of five. 100 meter dash juniors. Grenada Christian Academy, SAS, Happy Hill Secondary, St. Joseph Convent St. George, Hillsborough Secondary, McDonald College, Shaper, Bishop's College, scratched at the moment. Nice clean start here. Let's see what happens here with Talia Sampson. Already she emerges from the pack and pulling away from them. McDonald College giving some challenge on the other side, but an easy victory is going to be for Talia Sampson of the Happy Hill Secondary School. Back-to-back -back victories in the preliminaries, three and four. She looks very comfortable indeed and ready for the finals. A flash time of 12.26 seconds for Talia Sampson, the fastest so far we've seen. We await the official timing, but an impressive 12.2 for Talia Sampson. Very impressive indeed. In fact, um, 50 meters out, she was, she was a clear winner of this, this particular heat. A little bit of a challenge from the athlete from McDonald College, but not much. Well, 12.23, the official time and for Talia Sampson. 12.91, Abigail Williams for McDonald College. And I would think the two of them may just... And Dakota was 12.52. Especially the athlete from McDonald College with 12.91 uh, may just earn a position into the finals. The record in the, two on, in the 100 meters for the juniors, which is held by John Ed Thomas, formerly of the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School, 12.04 seconds established in 2018. Uh, may not be challenged, but a 12.23 in the preliminaries by uh, uh, Talia Sampson, she would obviously be looking at that and maybe want to send a threat to John Ed Thomas that, hey, I'm coming for your record. I would think so, because she had absolutely no competition 15, 15 meters out. There was no competition whatsoever. So at 12.23, running on her own suggests that in the finals, well, we she would see have, much better times. She would have a teammate, Alina Dicotto, who ran a 12.52 to push her to that record later on. So it's going to be a glorious moment for Happy Hill Secondary School if they can do that double in the 100 meters junior girls later on today. But they have a Shefonia Houston to deal with from the Anglican High School, and she's in ripping form as well. Very much so. Also Chandler, though, let us not forget Chandler from Boca Secondary School, with a 13.02 to date. Paddy's Enterprise, Hillsborough Secondary, Akela Roberts, Lane 6, GTC, Bishop's College, Portia Samuel, and running out of Lane 7, St. Joseph's Convent, Grenville, Celine Hankey. Your start list for heat five of five, junior girls, 100 meters. So the battle continues in the junior girls. It's going to be a real showdown this afternoon with Shefonia Houston, who ran a 12.41, and Talia Sampson, who did a 12.23. Shefonia Houston, the favorite, but so far we see a better time in return by uh, the youngster from the Happy Hill Secondary School, Talia Sampson. With a lot of confidence, she's running also. So heat five of five. Grenada Christian Academy, SAS, JW Fletcher uh, Catholic, Boca Secondary, Hillsborough Secondary, Bishops College, and uh, Shaper, the athletes competing from their schools in this event. Akela Roberts from Hillsborough Secondary seems very confident, and she has her. Compatriot from Bishop's College to her right and to her left, 
Cassidy Mitchell from the Boca Secondary School in Lane 4. Tamaya Thomas from SAS is also there. Let's see who wants it more. Tamaya Thomas in Lane 2 is looking good for SAS. Tamaya Thomas is in the lead at the moment. Bishops College is making a run back on the outside, but Tamaya Thomas of SAS wins it in Lane 2. A flash time of 13.21 seconds. And that will take her into the finals, but she might be struggling to get to the podium with this one. Well, the winner gets an automatic qualification uh, spot to the finals. But her timing here is way off the mark as compared to some of the other artists that did a sub-13 time in the 100 meters. So 13.20 for Tamaya Thomas from SAS. Cassidy Mitchell of Boca Secondary, 13.40. The top two in this heat. So Cassidy may not emerge into the finals based on what we've seen so far. So the likes of Ashefonia Houston, also uh, Kamali Phillip from Convent St. George, Amia Chandler, and others are going to make it. But we have, uh, I think, Sherian who is down on the field here, and we're going to segue to Sherian for another interview. Thank you very much, Leslie. We are here with the coach of the Hillsborough Secondary School, Imran George. Um, Imran, very impressive um, performance by your athletes thus far, especially in the field events. Um, speak to us about the preparation of, of, the, of the team, the actual work that went into bringing that team here in 2023. Well, in actual, um, we work towards that. We had uh, the chill, we, we, we exhibit, we do a threshold, we check and some of the children gravitate to some of the field, area, field events. So, for example, in the javelin area and the high jump area, we see that these are people that we can build on. So we give them the opportunity, we bring them into training, and then they were learning the technical aspects, how to make less necessary adjustment to cause you to show a further distance. So that's hence the reason we are successful so far in the field events. So the, the children are coming to the training and they're taking it, the, the corrections, so that's where we are right now. You spoke a bit to the throwing events, but I know um, I realize in the high jump and the long jump, and so you are, always, you are also picking up medals there. Yes, well, in the high jump area, we had um, um, Keston Kwashi doing some assistance with um, Kelani Kwashi, and you know we are grateful for that because Keston was, a character, was in character also. And um, with that, and she took the correction, there's still a lot of work to be done on her. So hopefully she can go further and further and further. So that is a plus with that. And even with the long jump, we, we, we try as our, our best to get them to, look, to work on the technical aspect in the long jump. Before we go back to our commentary team, um, you seem to be lacking a bit on the tracks in 2023. Yes, well, um, most of the time our games in Karakou is seasonal. You know, track and field season, then we have football, we have cricket. So a lot of the times you have some of the children doing multiple like, events. So when it comes to that, that does be a little EP. We don't really have the same facility to use all the time. So most of the times I'm going to do some off-season training, but some children will not gravitate. But you know who goes to the football, once they're doing the work, they, they get the endurance and they want to come to track and field but the lag is so long sometimes the workload that they're supposed to do here the body cannot do do it they're running 300 meters in front but by the time they read the next 100 meters the mind saying let's go but the body saying no so for the future what will be the plan well we need to take a different approach definitely we need to take a different approach i know that the children is seeing what the other schools are doing, they need to know, they know that, hey, what I think I, when I think I train up there, that's nothing. So I need to up my game in order to, to, to move to the next level. Thank you very much. That was coach of the Hillsborough Secondary School. We now return to our commentary team. Well, it's good to hear from the folks in Karaku, Hillsborough Secondary School. They're currently in sixth position in the girls and also sixth position in the boys, making a name for themselves. But we're going to segue now to the junior boys uh, 100 meter preliminaries and i want to welcome back to the commentary position jason skeet who has been roving the grounds bringing us the updates from the field events the javelin and the triple jump and back up here in the air-conditioned suite of the kirani james national stadium <laughs> gosh it feels good <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to leave that right there. Hi, hey, Leslie, good morning again. All right, well, here we are at the start of day three, the first session, the morning session. And boy, what a session it was, Leslie. I mean, wow. I mean, all we can say is, wow, I was particularly impressed with the senior girls javelin because 39.09 to win goal for the St. Davis Catholic Secondary. That's um, uh, 
Serana Alexander. She was she from from the from the get go. She was just right out there. Her first throw was um, somewhere within 38, I think it was. So she she stepped her she stepped on it really early and uh, just held on. After the second throw, really there was <laughs> n nothing to worry about. She could arrest it. But let's segue back to the track, Jason, <coughs> because we have a very very important race coming up here in the first of the preliminaries in the boys' 100 meter dash. A very familiar name here in lane four. He has run a season best of 10.7. Yesterday, he promised to do a 10 point something. And we heard from his coach this morning, and he believes that he can deliver on that promise. That's well, Ethan well, Sam of the Grenada Boys please Secondary please School. Um, he will get some competition here, I would think, from uh, Regis or uh, Knight, or maybe um, Gavin Augustine. From the, from the St. John's <coughs> Christian Secondary yeah. School. So they're on the starters orders now. Uh, Attention must be focused on lane four, Ethan Sam, to see how he uh, strategizes himself for this race. And there they go, Ethan Sam from the GBS SE lane four, already in the lead here. He can afford to turn it down now. Ethan Sam looking smooth as butter and impressive indeed. A flash time here. Uh, we didn't get the flash time on this one, but uh, a very, very it's, it, it, confident it, it, run by Ethan Sam. Yeah, I think, Leslie, it looks like um, a late 10, early 11 because um, really he came out of the gate in, in good form and with about 60 meters to go, that's when he really started to turn it on, started to separate himself and then with about 10 meters to go, you could have seen him starting to you know, pedal back just a little bit and um, trying to encourage the GBS supporters in, in the... Um, well, there. an easy 10.6 I would call that. He really looked easy in this one and to run 10.6 looking that easy... Um, 10.76, I beg your pardon, yeah. is impressive indeed. Yeah, 10.76, wow. You know, and um, this is the junior boys we're talking. 10.76, Ethan Sam really turning it on in intercall. He has promised us 10 something. And if this is what we're getting in the first round in the heats, um, I would suggest that with some competition, he's going to go um, somewhere about 10.2, uh, 10.3 something. Well, in that'll the finals. be very optimistic. He has done a 10.67 for the season. And, uh, but he looked very, very comfortable and easy in that one here. And not uh, with the competition we know that he's going to get from the Tariq Samuel and, and others. But um, a good run here by Ethan Sam of GBSS. We expect GBSS to dominate the junior boys on the track, as we've been seeing all day yesterday. As well as Sass in the sub-juniors. And the seniors, I think, is who's going to determine the overall championship in terms of how many points they're able to score. We know there are going to be some spoilers to the party. St. Davis Catholic secondary, Elisha Williams, is going to be a spoiler. Um, we expect PBC Telemark to be a spoiler to the party for those two schools as well. But uh, it's going to be curtains call. It's going to be down to the wire, I would think, to determine the overall champions in 2023. All right, well, we're going to go back to the house alongside just a little bit because now we're getting ready for Heat 2 in the Junior Boys. 100 meters. Um, Leslie? Well, it's going to be some more fireworks here. Tyreek McSween, he has done a sub 11 for the season two. He's going to be in lane four. And uh, uh, we're also going to see. Running out of lane one, representing the St. George's Institute. Oluwashineo Abbey. Lane two. The McDonald College, Mondell Lewis, lane three, representing the Westmoreland Secondary, Brandon Skeet, lane four, representing the Nagico GBSS, Tyreek Maxween, lane five, representing the Classic Lighting, J.W. Fletcher, Jaden McQueen, lane six, representing the St. Davis Catholic Secondary, Mikhail Redhead, and running out of lane seven, representing the GTC, Bishop's College, Koroni Joseph, your start list for heat two of five in the junior boys, 100 meters. Well, there they are, the competitors for heat two. And I was saying that uh, a Tariq Maxwin will be pushed to a certain extent by uh, Mikael Reddit of the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School. But going back to um, uh, Ethan Sam and the times that you're predicting he might, he might return, the record for this event is 10.5 by Kirani James. So a 10.2, 10.3 would be a new record. But I'm, I'm very doubtful that Ethan Sam can do that today. 
maybe on another day, but uh, time would tell. I, I'm sure you'd want me to regret those words, uh, Jason, but let's see what happens later on in the finals when he has competition on the other side of the lane for him. I have my side set on him breaking the record today, honestly. I believe it is very gettable for him. All right, so in this event, in this one, um, what are we looking at, uh, Leslie? You know, well, Tyreek McSween in lane four, GBSS. Um, he has a season best of 10.99 um, at national champs. Again, he was impressive behind uh, Ethan Sam, and he's expected to, to, to win this heat and advance to the final. The top finisher in each of the heats plus the next three best times goes into the finals. There's going to be five uh, heats in the Junior Boys 100 meter dash. And we have again St. George's Institute, McDonald College, Westerhall Secondary. And there they go. St. Davis Catholic and Mikkel Red looking good, but Tarek Maxwin in the middle of the track wins this one. Mikkel will have to settle for second. Uh, and we look to see the best times. 11.09 on the flash time for Tarek Maxwin of the GBSS. So you would have to go faster than that. You'd have to do a sub 10. Let's see what the official time is, but 11.09 for Tyreek McSween. Well, Tyreek McSween, um, I, I think he took a lot for granted. He really thought that maybe he had it covered and uh, it, it came back to haunt him a little bit because he got a little bit of a competition nearing the end from um, Redhead of the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School. Well, Redhead 11.12 behind uh, Samuels 11.07. And uh, I think they, well, Tyreek would have secured his position into the final. And Redhead with 11.12 should be one of those um, next best times to go to the finals as well. Yeah, 11.07, not a bad time at all. 11.12, um, there, there about, could get him into the next round, as you see. I'm not quite sure whether he's going to earn him a spot on the podium, but um, um, it's always good to know at least that you've got an athlete in the finals if well, you're the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School. Well, you have one foot in the finals. It's likely you can get a medal. You gotta be there first. We just saw a glimpse a while ago of the red section, the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School section. There they are, and they're always in their large numbers. The flags here, the t shirts, uh, they're very knowledgeable as well. We see some uh, of the green as well from the GBSS. And that section of the stadium, always a very noisy section with those athletes uh, other supporters from the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School and the Green Boys Secondary School. All right, Leslie. Well, uh, the weather forecast has predicted that today we're going to get glorious sunshine, very little cloud cover. And we're seeing that already. We're experiencing that already. Um, yes, your view shows us that very little cloud cover and um, no threat of rain at all. That makes it an awesome day for athletics, and that is what we've come to expect, especially at Intercall Championships. Also heard that our Intercall Championships was featured on the BBC News a few nights ago. So um, our friends right around the world who have been having access to the BBC would have learned a little bit about Grenada's Intercall. It has been featured. And uh, no doubt the world is watching because they're looking for something special coming out of Grenada. I'm quite sure Ethan, Sam, and uh, Bobby, as you call him, he's, he's affectionately called Bobby, he, he too would be on, on the radar. And a few others as well. Well, that's good news indeed as we compete with the Jamaicans because they have the champs going on at the moment as well. I mean, no big champs is, but I still contend that within the OECS that our Intercall Games is a premier junior event on the circuit within that sub-region. Um, if you are following the champs, Jason, some impressive times overnight. 9.99 seconds by a youngster in Jamaica. 10.9 in the female category. I mean, these are times unheard of at, uh, at, at school level. And uh, impressive indeed. Sub-10, 9.9 by any stretch of the imagination is an impressive time. And yeah. that came out of Jamaica yesterday. 9.9 .9 for many folks is just a dream. And in the female category, 10.9. I mean, these are world-class times, world beaters, so to speak. 
So the next event uh, in the boys 200 meter dash, we will see the likes of Rashid Jones, Isaiah Freezer, Aidan McIntosh, and on Daniel, Shem Smith, Kimron George, Timon Duncan. And there they are, the competitors in heat three. For their own concentration. And we see what the wind is doing, uh, Jason. Sand has actually been blown across the track. And that tells you the measure and the strength of the wind that we have in here at the stadium. Yeah, lost part of my results when I was on the field that. So, <laughs> I not know about that. <laughs> um, Burwanji Narumi, Burwanji Narumi, if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, 9.99 and the boys uh, 16. Nakrumi, Nakrumi. Nakrumi, yeah. Yeah, an impressive time indeed in the, in the 100 meters. He was shocked. Everybody in the stadium was shocked. Yeah. We're going to come back to that as we go to hit three or five in the 100 meters junior boys. McIntosh, want to look out for here. Aidan McIntosh of the Presentation Brothers College. McIntosh, another one of our Karifta athletes. He's getting ready for something. Big on the Easter weekend, representing Grenada. That's Aidan McIntosh. We say good morning to Brent McIntosh. And Aidan would be competing in the 4x100. Or he's on the team for the 4x100 and the 4x400 meters. Comes from a family with a, a very good uh, tradition in sports. He has some sisters that does pretty well in track and field. Trains with the MVP track club. There they go. 100 meters junior boys already. Aidan McIntosh from PBC in lane three. Establishes himself nicely here and is going to win quite handsomely, easily for McIntosh. A flash time of 11.11 seconds. 11.11 seconds and a lot of crews involved in that one. Um, he was out, uh, he was out nice and clean, stayed low and then started to push his chest up and by the time he got to chest up and arms rolling knee highs, he was always out in front and then with about 30 meters to go, he started to shut down because he knew there was nothing near and um, running 11.11 with um, a lot of cruise control inside of it, this was a good run by McIntosh. Well, a season best for McIntosh. His previous best would have been 11.13. Shem Smith from the GW Fletcher Catholic, 11.78. We will see if that is enough to take him into the finals. But Aidan McIntosh again looking very, very comfortable and smooth indeed. All right, so while we continue to bring you up to speed up here, sherri -Ann has got uh, Lee coaches Coffee. Mm -hmm. down there. sherri -Ann? Thank you very much, Jason. We are here with Lee Coffey. Um, in 2023, we have a new secondary school at the Intercall Games, the Gateway Christian Academy, and Lee is the coach. And Lee, uh, speak to us about the inclusion w within the Intercall Games. It's, it's a, a pretty small group you have, but yet still giving them the exposure, I believe, is what's important. Yes, most definitely. Participation and exposure at all platform is what we want to encourage. It's a very small group. However, having the first experience at the Intercall Games, I think that is a very noble experience. And um, it, will, it will only sell great for the development of athletics in Grenada as a whole. Now, um, preparation, it was actually a, very, a last minute decision. They got a very late entry into it. I was called upon to take up the mantle in the new ones, the young ones. And um, so far, the, the results are fair and I'm um, quite happy, as I say, of the fact that they're able to come out here and experience this, this um, Intercall Games 2023. You have five athletes. Um, just, just reiterate some of the events that you place them in and how satisfied are you? Yeah, well, um, most of them lies within the areas of sprints, 100, 200, 400. There's one guy that did the, um, the 800, the 15, and we've been the 3,000 uh, meter today. We have um, Nathaniel Alfred, who's been doing pretty well at the national championship. However, he did suffer some groin issues. Didn't give his best performance um, in the meet so far. However, yesterday he gave a very good run in his heat 
placing second in the heat um, among some star runners. So um, I think that smells good. It's some form of motivation, some form of encouragement. You know, as a new school, um, venting to more or less expand on, on um, what they begin here for future intercall games. Yeah. Thank you to very much. That was the coach from the Gateway Christian Academy, Lee Coffey. We now return to our commentary team. Thank you, Sherry. And it's good to have new inclusions at Intercall Games, the Gateway Christian Academy out of the Poinsellins area, coached by Lee Coffey. Lee Coffey is also the coach of the South City Rising Stars, one of the upcoming track clubs that is producing a number of uh, great athletes. Shafinia Houston, she trains with them. Uh, many of you may know Gamali Felix as well, who is out there on the collegiate circuit coming out of the South City Rising Stars, and they continue to produce some uh, good athletes. Um, Bishop is also from there, Emilio Bishop of the GBSS. He trains with the uh, South City Rising Stars. As we go trackside now for the 100 meters, I see the likes of a Kyle Ned from SAS, definitely one to look out for in this race. Um, uh, Yeah, Kyle seems to be one of the favorites to emerge. Uh, he's in lane seven. Kyle Ned has been uh, outstanding so far, picking up a bronze medal. Uh, there he goes. Um, some challenge from Bishop's College on the inside in the likes of Randy Jones. But Kyle Ned sprints to the finish line and wins with a flash time of 11.21. Yeah, 11.21. He looked as if he was really struggling for part of it. Well, for most of it, actually. Um, he came out the blocks, kept low, but um, and you looked at his face from about 30 meters into the race, he was pumping really hard. Not sure why, but um, he really had to use a whole lot of energy to come through the finish line for 11.23. 11 um, is that worrisome? 11.21 uh, worrisome and having to push really hard? Well, it took him into the finals, but he would have to do better than that, I would think, to get a podium position. Considering we have a 10.76 already done, 11.07, 11 11.11, 11.12. So Kyle would have to um, come much better. We go back down track side for another interview with Sherry and Noel. Uh, Leslie, we're here now with the coach of the Boca Secondary School. The Boca Secondary School is indeed creating some set of upsets here at Intercall 2023. Um, we've seen them doing great in the field and also on the track. Um, Ronald Charles is one of the coaches at the Boca Secondary School and he's no stranger to, to athletics. Um, Boca Secondary School is the school to speak about in 2023 without a doubt. We know of the big GBSS and the SAS and so, but the Boca Secondary School is creating an impact in Intercall 2023. The preparation? Thank you. Um, well, the preparation started since last year. Um, I came in not so long as my alma mater, of course. So I transitioned back to Boca in 2018, no intercall. And, you know, the, we're trying to build something, you know, from scratch where hopefully it will not just rush for one year or two years. You know, we're trying to build for the future so that we can actually try to compete, you know. So we started since last year and we try to bring that across into this year. So, so far, so good. One of your athletes in particular, I think it's a junior, he, he is doing pretty good both on the track and in the field events. Is it that you're trying to let him find his way in 2023 to know how, how to place him for 2024? Well, yes, we're trying to also try to give him the best opportunities. Um, last year we had few boys went away on scholarship from Boca. And, you know, so we're not just trying to, we're trying to let him find his way, but also choose his best events. And we're not trying to limit them to one event. You understand? We're trying to see how well they can do in many of the events. And young Chandler? Chandler, well, Chandler is starting to blossom into the talent she was from. You know, she has been off some years because of the COVID and the teachers, you know, but right now she is back and she's trying very hard in training. She's a junior next year. This is her first year junior, so hopefully she stayed the course and we see great things from her next year. Thank you very much. That was the coach of the Boca Secondary School, Ronald Charles. They're doing exceptionally well at Intercall 2023. We now return to our commentary team. Well, we, comment, we continue to lament the fact that Boca Secondary School has uh, returned some outstanding performances. And they have not only done that in track and field this year, but as I mentioned, they also featured in the finals of the secondary school's football tournament as well. 
So there is something great happening at the Boca Secondary School, and we want to congratulate the coach and the, the, the rest of his coaching staff for working with the youngsters here, Chandler and the others from the Boca Secondary School. So Chandler is a name to keep on the radar for next year, as he alluded to. And uh, let's see what more we can get from Boca Secondary School out of Intercall 2023. So hit 5 of 5, uh, the athletes are out there and they're ready. We should see the run sincere from Sass, Nathan Hille, Happy Hill Secondary, Tabil Joseph, Hillsborough Secondary, Jevod Nelson from McDonald College, Niran Theodule from Shaper, Rickelson George from Grenada Christian Academy, and Sebastian Plantagen from the Westmoreland Secondary School. What are we looking at here, Leslie? Um, who are at the top? Because um, we don't have any serious qualifying time. So you're seeing 12.80 from uh, Joseph and 12.99 uh, uh, from uh, Sebastian. But outside of that, no, nothing really. So there must be someone. Um, a lot of the qualifying times didn't come through. Well, so let's, um, let's look at Nathan Hille out of the Happy Hill Secondary School. He's expected to do well in this event. Um, from SAS, we also have Deron Sincere. Um, I would think we will see the, the two best times coming out of lanes two and three in Sincere from SAS and, and Hille from Happy Hill Secondary. But um, this may very well turn out to be maybe one of the slower preliminaries out of the five um, that is going to be run for the junior boys. All right, well, let's see how that goes. Sincere in two. Hille in three, Joseph in four, Nelson in six, uh, Thielud in seven, and George in eight. The final of the five preliminaries in 100 meters junior boys. There they go up and running. Happy Hill Secondary getting the best of starts here. That's Nathan Hille, and Nathan Hille is actually going to win this one. We call it correctly here. Nathan Hille wins. Sass, the run since here in second. The top two finishers here, flash time of 11.40 seconds for Nathan Hille of the Happy Hill Secondary School. Yeah, running um, 11 somewhere there about, is not bad at all. But uh, looking at Nathan Hille, I mean, he was a cut above the rest. He was, his form was good, even from the jump. He stayed low and then for a while, and then he came up chest up. And by the time he got to like 50, 60 meters into the race, there was no doubt that he was going to win because his form actually showed us that he was actually going to power his way through. Easy, easy, almost effortless and 11.36 uh, to qualify for the finals. Well, he has booked his way to the finals. Uh, the time by Deron Sincere from SAS may not get him into the finals. As we look at what were some of the best timings, we had the best time coming from Ethan Sam of GBSS. We also had an 11.07 from Tariq McSween, also from GBSS. 11.11 from uh, Boca Secondary, Alden Daniel. And 11.12 uh, from Mikkel Redhead from the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School. And 11.59 uh, from uh, Jaden Knight of the St. Rose Modern Secondary. 11.3 from Nathan Hiller. 11.23 from Kyle Ned. These might be the top eight finishers going into the finals for the 100 meters junior boys. Yeah, um, I think you call it right, but my eye continues to be on Ethan Sam. Um, and one of the reasons why I believe he's a, a good favorite to smash this record is because I, I look at his focus. He, he, he doesn't use much energy at all. He, he, he doesn't waste much energy. No unnecessary movement. He stays right there, stays focused. And then when it gets down to business, he handles his business. And he's been running literally uncontested for most of the, the events that he would have participated in. If any challenge at all comes for him in the 100 meters, it could push him to a limit that could show us something extra special. Well, Ethan Sam is an obvious favorite. He has been winning all through the season. Um, uh, he has competed against all of the other competitors in this event, including the Tyreek McSween. And so he's expected to win. Lead um. to GTC Anglican High School. Sophia Ross, lane three, St. Joseph's Convent, Granville, Jadine Batiste, lane four, from the St. Joseph's Convent, St. George's, Shante Augustine, 
Lane 5. From the classic lighting, J.W. Fletcher Catholic Secondary, Shaquille Clark. Lane 6. From the McDonald College, Verandel Roberts. Lane well. 7. From the Grenada Christian Academy, Simone Edwards. And running out of lane 8. From the Grenada Christian Academy, Monique Smart. Starting lineup for Heat 1 of 4 in the well, senior the girls. 100 meters senior girls, senior girls. they're going to have their turn on the track for qualification into the finals. Shanti Augustine from St. Joseph Convent, St. George, is expected to emerge here. She was second in the, the 200 meters yesterday, having just completed the long jump. And she was also second in the 400 meters. She's on the car of the team as well, Shanti Augustine, and she will be doing the 400 meters and the mixed relay at Carifter game. That's Shanti Augustine there for you. Spoke with her dad this morning and uh, he's very confident in, in her and her abilities and uh, the potential that she has in, in, in the future. Roger Augustine, we say good morning to you, bro. And uh, let's see what Shanti does here on this occasion. Jaden Batiste from Convent Grenville is also there. Shante with a season best of 12.1. And she will be looking to do something around that just to secure a position into the finals. So they're up and running. Shante already coming out of the drive phase in the lead. And uh, it's just an easy victory here for Shante Augustine. Let's see what the flash time looks like here for Shante. A flash time of 12.24 seconds. And... Uh, an impressive start to the first of the uh, four preliminaries uh, for the 100 meter girls senior. Yeah, Shanti Augustine was always in control, never losing any uh, command at all. Uh, she was out, up, and gone, <laughs> really. And uh, she didn't even have to do so much with about 20, 30 meters remaining. There was even there, wa there, there wasn't even a, a, a real need for her to pump as much because she was up, out, and gone in a flash. Well, the corrected time, 12.27 for Shanti Augustine as the fans continue to pile in here at the Kirani James Stadium. Sophia Ross of the Anglican High School, she was second with 12.92. Jason, we have a points update, so maybe very quickly we would All give right. you the top five positions. You do the girls, Jason, and I'll do the, I'll do the boys. All right, uh, let's see in the girls' category, St. Davis Catholic Secondary School, they are gone out front, 258 points. Anglican High School follows in second, but in a distant second, 156 and a half. St. Joseph's Convent, St. George in third, 127, and a battle be between third and fourth for that position right there, third. St. Joseph's Convent, St. Andrew, 124 and a half. So um, some contention there between three and four, the both convents, St. George and St. Andrew in uh, fifth position, the St. Andrew's Anglican Secondary School, SAS, 103. So th the real battle in the girls is between uh, positions two, three, four, and maybe five, if anything were to really happen outside of the ordinary. But 258 points, a clear um, 102 points ahead. The St. Davis Catholic Secondary, they're gone. Quite agree with you there. In the boys' category, let's take it quickly. In sixth position, we have Hillsborough Secondary on 53. In fifth position, Boca Secondary on 77 and a half. St. Davis Catholic on 138 in fourth. Presentation Brothers College 149, St. Andrews Anglican Secondary 235, and seven and a half points ahead of them is Grenada Boys Secondary on 243 and a half points. Well, there you have it, the lane assignments for the 100 meter dash senior girls. And uh, we were giving the results a while ago, and that would be after an adjustment would have been made 
after the triple jump in the boys and the javelin for the senior girls. I uh, want to look out for in the upcoming uh, heat here, Amelia Bob of the St. Joseph Convent St. George. Interesting to note that Amelia Bob is also a national footballer. She plays for the national senior team and she's still at secondary school level. So she's definitely one to look out for here in this 100 meters for senior girls. Say good afternoon to, or good morning to Lyndon Bob, another soccer dad, track dad as well it seems. They up and running here. Amelia Bob comes out nicely here in lane four. In the green and white for St. Joseph Convent St. George. Amelia Bob, Bishop's College to her left. But Amelia Bob with a slight advantage on the other side is Hillsborough Secondary. It looks as Hillsborough Secondary on the other side. In the likes of uh, Rihanna Rollins. The flash time 13.41. It's too close for us to call here in the commentary position. As three athletes were really vying for the top spot. Yeah, um... Oh, <laughs> wow, <laughs> wow. I mean, Bob was a little too confident maybe. She slowed down a little too early. Um, but pay attention to her right thigh. They've got some, there's some, some support on her right thigh. So just maybe she's not 100% comfortable. And that opened up a door a little bit for Rihanna Rollins, who went through the door, took full advantage. And 13.54, uh, just edging out Bob, 13.45, uh, 13 edging out Bob at 13.54. So Rollins gets the automatic qualification, and Bob will have to play the waiting game. Well, Bob seems to have an injury of some sort, as you mentioned, the, the, the thigh um, tightly wrapped there. But uh, I just want to go back to the, the technique of Rihanna Rollins of Hillsborough Secondary. We saw the head wobbling and so on, and that is something that the coaches may want to have a look at in terms of um, the form that she has to maintain um, for, for, for sprint events like that. But a good run by Rihanna Rollins nonetheless as she qualifies into the finals, and Amelia Bob would have to wait and see if she would qualify based on the next best four times. So, just going back to the point standing, Jason, again, we, ha we have to focus in the boys' category because this is where the championship battle really is. And uh, overnight, one and a half points separated the two schools. Now it has... Um, a little further to seven and a half points between GBSS and SAS and that would have been after the completion of the triple jump which is one event this morning and uh, we still have the javelin senior boys to go in the field for the, the in the boys category and then a host of track events yeah so I mean the, the boys is a little bit early to call let's check the lean assignments and then we're gonna come back and discuss this after this um, this batch of heats Heat three or four, the girls 100 meters senior. Um, what are some of the names we're looking at here? Leslie Smith, um, Shayla John, or um, Tellisford, or is it Sarah, uh, Sarah Holder out of the St. Andrews Anglican Secondary School? Well, Ariana Frederick of St. Davis Catholic Secondary in then seven is one uh, we can look out for. Um, Chloe Tellisford, um, Westmoreland. Uh, maybe you want to send a message here as well. And of course, we can rule out a Sarah Holder from SAS. Well, but I would think Ariana Frederick. Um, Chloe Tellisford ran 13.74. So um, if she's one to look out for, it means that everyone here is probably looking to walk 14. <laughs> so um, <laughs> very unlikely we're going to see that. So, um, and and we, we're not sure what is happening from Bishop's College with um, Ashila John. And they've spring a number of surprises on us already. So, so the threat will have to come from elsewhere, up, out, 
and gone. Let's see, who does it look like here? Still early yeah. days to call, but it looks like uh, Rihanna Fedrick of St. Davis Catholic Secondary School. She's on the outside lane closest to us, and then she's going to just run all the way through. Easy, no competition for her coming into the latter part of the race. Everyone was really in a bundle, even with 50, 60 meters, no clear winner. But then Rihanna Fedrick sort of started to separate herself and uh, lengthen the lead, and everyone else was left in the dust. Well, a flash time of 12.88, the, the adjusted time 12.86 for uh, Rihanna Frederick of the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School. And the second was from the J.W. Fletcher, Janisha Hosford, 13.65. So 12.86. Uh, 13.65 and Chloe Tellisford, your favorite Leslie, 13.99. <laughs> <laughs> Chloe, Chloe really you know, maintaining a good form. She came in with a, a 13.74. So they're about, I mean, Westmoreland secondary being given some feature, Jason. <laughs> uh -huh. But Rihanna Frederick, the standout athlete in this one, and uh, she's from the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School. She's on her way to the finals. We still have one more preliminary to go in the senior girls category. Yeah, so as we were saying, Leslie, I mean, the, the real threat in the boys' division here is uh, going to come down to uh, maybe the next uh, two hours at least. Then we're going to have some indication, if at all. Um, but between now and then, we're not going to see any daylight between one and two between the GBSS and the St. Andrews Anglican Secondary. Um, strategy is going to play a significant role in, 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 the, in moving forward. Well, I'm sure the strategies having their work done. Paddy's Enterprise, Hillsborough Secondary, Michaela Joseph, lane number five from the Westmoreland Secondary, Mika Sion Holocaust, lane number six from the GTC Anglican High School, Curdine Phillip, lane number seven, Nawasa Sass, Tara Joseph. Those are your lane assignments for the fourth and final heat. Jason, look out, there's going to be... A sprinter in lane number three, Kamisha Dominic of the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School. She will be representing Grenada at Kyrifta Games in the 100 meters and 200 meters. So she is the one expected to win this seat and advance to the finals. Well, there are a couple of 14 point something crawls in this one coming in qualifying. So um, if you're going to see something special, it's gonna, it has to come from Dominique. Um, it, it better be because anything that we've seen after that, the qualifying times coming in here is basically a decent crawl. Well, Kandi and Dominic, she will receive a challenge of somewhat from, I'm sorry, Kamisha Dominic from Kurdi and Philip of the Anglican High School. She's uh, expected to come second in this one and maybe with a second best time to go into the finals. And uh, that's Kurdi and Philip here from the Anglican High School. Um, a lot is expected from her as well, but I think it would be an easy victory for Kamisha Dominic of the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School. All right, so Philip is in lane six, and Dominique is in lane three. Well, we also have an the Amia Sylvester from the Happy Hill Secondary School, Jason. She is going to give Kurdian a good run for the second and third position. And uh, Sylvester in lane one. So we're keeping our eyes on one, three, and six. And out they go. And it looks like six. Yes, it looks like a Joseph. And um, St. David's Catholic Secondary, Dominic. Dominic is gone. St. Uh, David's Catholic Secondary and Dominic is gone. And then Kadreen Phillip of the Anglican High School comes in in second. And uh, we're looking at 12 point late. Um, well, a flash a time of 12.57 for Kemisha Dominic. Official time 12.59. For Kemisha Dominic and the Curdin Philip came in second with 12.93. And as I call it, it was uh, Amia Sylvester who picked up the third position in 13.34 from the Happy Hill Secondary School.
So looking back at the performances in the preliminaries of the 100 meters for the senior girls, the fastest time obviously came from uh, Shanti Augustine, 12.27. We also had uh, Sophia Ross of the Anglican High School do that 12.92. Um, uh, Kemisha Dominic did a 12.59. Should have had the second fastest time. 12.93 came from Curdin Phillip, 12.86 from Rihanna Frederick, St. Davis Catholic Secondary School. So these were the, some of the top finishers here. And then we had maybe a 13.45 from Rihanna Rollins of the Hillsborough Secondary School. May just earn her a place into the finals. So going into the finals, we expect Kemisha Dominic to win this one and maybe Ashanti Augustine picking up the silver and Akkadin Philip to pick up the bronze. Lane St. John's Christian Secondary, Javed Hosted. Lane 3, McDonald College, Kelshawn Andrew. Lane 4, Najiko GBSS, Emilio Blanco Bishop. Lane 5, the Grenada Christian Academy, Daniel Edwards. Lane 6, the Wesley College, Jabbar Hussein. Lane 7, Classic Lighting, J.W. Fletcher, Joshua Greenwich. Your start list for Heat 1 of 5. Jason, the big man in the business, are on the stage now. The 100 meters senior boys, these would be the fastest boys in secondary school coming out of those uh, five preliminaries. Um, in this one, we expect Emilio Blanco Bishop to win this. He has been running very well this season and uh, should get a podium position as well, I would think. Um, he would have to contend with the likes of Atelemak and Elisha and, and others and uh, uh, Josh and Sylvester of SAS. But uh, Blanco Bishop is a favorite for this event and he runs out of lane four for the GBSS. All right, well, let's see what Blanco Bishop has to offer. Blanco Bishop of GBSS in lane four, and uh, Jabbar Hussein uh, in uh, well, six. Bla Blanco Bishop has a season best of a 10.66, so he comes with a sub-11 timing, and that is no, e no easy feat, and uh, he's expected to win this seat quite easily and advance to the finals. Everyone is up, out, and Blanco Bishop is gone, but uh, he's getting some separation now that he's looking for. Yeah, Blanco Bishop has this one covered. Uh, no real challenge at all for him, and Blanco Bishop just goes through the motion and gives his GBSS supporters something to jump and shout about. And they're coming in to the first heat, winning, and Blanco Bishop wearing 5-12. No trouble at all for him, Leslie. Well, it was an easy run for Blanco Bishop here. A flash time of 10.89, actually corrected at 10.89 as well. But look at the gap that he established over the rest of the field. 10.89 for Emilio Blanco Bishop of the GBSS. Jabba Hosen of uh, Wesley College was second with 11.47. Uh, we will see if that would be enough to get him into the finals. But an impressive 10.89 for Blanco Bishop. Yeah, 12.89 easy as well. Um, no threat for him at all. And uh, I'm quite sure he'll be very happy with that. Blanco Bishop, and so too would be his other GBSS athletes. Well, he'll be happy that he ran at 10.89 to get into the finals. But I'm sure he's thinking about something much lower than that if he is the challenge for uh, the gold medal because uh, we have the likes of a Telemark and, uh, and, and, and others who over the season has run faster than a 10.89. Well, Telemac is uh, in heat number two of five. Uh, Telemac, of course, uh, a season's best. Well, coming into this, actually, not uh, coming into this one, the qualifying time, coming into this one for him, 10.73. And uh, generally, he goes about his business without any competition at all, even at, at the PBC level. So uh, if he has to face any competition here, in the 100 meters, it is going to produce something extra special. Well, I'm going to so tell you, he's, he's indeed going to get some competition from Josh M. Sylvester from SAS, who has been, he's on the, the, the character team as well, together with uh, uh, Telemac. And uh, we saw 
Josh and Sylvester winning the 800 meters yesterday and coming back within an hour to run the 200 meters and taking a, a podium position as well. Uh, so it's, he's going to get some competition from Sylvester. Maybe not Sylvester winning, but at least pushing him hard to make it sure that he wins the, the heat. All right. Well, let's see what's going to happen. Lane one of the classic lighting, J.W. Fletcher Carthenic secondary, Kareem St. Bernard. Lane two of the Grenada Christian Academy, Khalil John. Lane three of the classic lighting, Happy Hill secondary, Jamal Paris. Lane four of the Nexa PBC, Rikal Telemak. Lane five of the Nawasa Sass. Joshem Sylvester. Late six of the Wesley College, Ravon Sylvester. Late seven of the Westmoreland Secondary, Kevin Martin. That's your start list for Heat 2. Heat 2 of 5, senior boys, 100 meters. Well, the, the favorite for this one is Rikel Telemac, of course. Uh, he's going to have um, someone on his heels, maybe a Josh M. Sylvester of SAS. He has been doing pretty well too. He's right next to him in lane five. Um, not thinking any threat is going to come from Ravon Sylvester unless he produces something extraordinary. But uh, between four and five, and maybe, maybe um, Kyle John of G GCA. Leslie? Well, the real competition is going to come from uh, Josh M. Sylvester. Uh, to Telemac. Telemac uh, has done a 21.7 in the 200 meters. He did 21.5 yesterday, as a matter of fact, in the 200 meters. And he has done a 10.5, I think it was, throughout the season. Um, he comes in here with a season best of 10.73. But he can go lower than that. Um, let's see how he would do in this heat, if he's going to consult some for later. Um, taking into consideration that uh, a top place is an automatic qualification. Um, Sylvester, I'm sure, will be giving off everything because he knows uh, Telemac is much quicker than he is, so he would want that automatic qualifying position. I'm sure Josh M. Sylvester will be running as hard as he can. But Josh M. Sylvester is one of the artists I saw very early in the season that looked promising, but his development over the season is, is what I think is very, very interesting. The coaches have done a lot of work with him and he has really risen to that challenge and established himself to be on the character team in 2023. All right, well, they're on the starter's orders. The starter has called them to their mark. And uh, tense moments here. You're hearing some of the horns, the air horns going. But apart from that, tense moments. Up, out. And uh, Telemac has gone out the gate, really. But look at this. Joshim Sylvester is right there with him on the outside in one. It's looked like J.W. Fletcher, but Telemac is gone. He is in cruise control. He locks it down, chips across like Carnival Tuesday afternoon, really. And it comes off in, uh, this looks like a, 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 a late 10, a very early 11, because really there was nothing for him to, to go too much with. He was up, out, um, spreading his legs. And uh, I think... Sylvester was pumping a little too early, Leslie? Well, Sylvester had the better of the starts, but if you look, um, Telemark in the middle of the track really came into his own, and by 80 meters, he basically was on cruise control. I'm not sure about the Carnival Tuesday evening, <laughs> 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 but um, definitely in cruise control, and an easy victory here for Rickel Bobby Telemark. We look to see what time he has returned, but uh, looked impressive indeed going into the finals. Yeah, well, he was always a clear favorite coming into this one, and he didn't disappoint. And uh, we're done with that one. We're gone, and uh, heat number three is uh, <laughs> coming up. And heat number three has got another um, story attached to it, and we're going to get to that in, in a second or two. But uh, Raquel Telemac just uh, locked into cruise control and went on his way, and automatic qualifier. Joshim Sylvester has got to wait to find out if he will fight another day well the fans are coming in their numbers one of the bleachers with the students almost filled the capacity already as the one to our right here and uh, the overflows are happening on the other set of bleachers the main pavilion is almost filled to capacity as well and so those of you who are thinking about coming down to the stadium you should try and do that now 
There are still some seats in the secondary pavilion. And uh, maybe that's where you might be thinking about going in the secondary pavilion. Although it it's really has been designated mainly for some of the, the students as well. All right. This one, Leslie. Um, let's go to heat number three quickly. In lane four, we're looking at Tegan Peterkin. Um, he probably is the favorite in this one. Um, he's not been having the absolute best of seasons. Bouncing back from, from injury and a time off. And um, he seems to be the favorite going into this one. Your thoughts? Yeah, well, Tegan Peter Kidd, um, from what we've seen, as the season progresses, he's getting better and better and better at it. And um, he's expected to win this one. He would get uh, some com competition here from... Uh, um, uh, Joshua Noel from the Presentation Brothers College. He should offer maybe the, 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 the strongest challenge and a Jahim Tika out of the, the Bishop's College. Well, that's uh, Tegan Peter King there for you, a very determined athlete. And uh, um, he's expected to win the seat quite comfortably. All right. Well, we'll see how that one goes. In the meantime, we're paying attention to the crowd building up, as you would have alluded to, Leslie. And uh, a maximum of 34 degrees we're expecting today. Depending on your lack of shade, it could feel like 36. No threat of rain. And this is what students live for. They don't mind the extra shades of dark after intercall, but they can live in the sun. Well, in, in addition to that, the noise level, the decibel level will go up a few notches as well with all those air horns that we see in there. It's going to be a very, very noisy atmosphere. As a matter of fact, we've seen appeals been made to them to be quiet when the races have been started because it's extremely loud here at the National Stadium. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> So I think there's been a hold up here. We're waiting for the official time for the previous heat. And so the athletes were called off the track as uh, the beat managers are getting uh, the time sorted for the previous heat with Telemac and uh, Sylvester and company. In the meantime, the javelin for the senior boys has started. And uh, we'll go maybe go over to Sherion in, in a while to see what's happening down there in the javelin for senior boys. For the junior boys, I beg your pardon. The javelin for the junior boys. The short put for the junior boys uh, should start sometime as well. As well as the discus for the sub-junior boys. The boys high jump is also carded for this morning. In the junior category. So quite a number of field events. As we... Going to get ready for another interview from Sherry and Noel, Trackside. And Sherry, it's over to you. Thank you very much, Leslie. It's just an update on the field events. At this time behind me, it's the start of the Senior Boys Javelin. We have 28 athletes in that particular field event. The uh, record to break there, it's 71.07. That was set by Markham Felix of the Wester Hall Secondary School back in 2017. Now, we, as I mentioned before, we have 28 athletes. We're going to keep you updated as to how the throws are going in terms of the distances. But at this time, I'd like to return to you, Leslie. Thank you very much, Sherry. Interestingly, in the javelin for the senior boys, we have a character athlete there, Rivon Tellesford from the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School. And believe it or not, Jason, Elisha Williams is also competing in the javelin. And this morning in your interview with uh, Paul Phillip, he did spring that surprise and us that Elisha Williams is one of those athletes that is multi-talented and will be competing in the javelin event. Well, he did say to look, he did more than say he was competing. He did say to look out for him because he can cause some serious upsets as well. He did allude to that. So it, it's not just competing, but it is a real threat, according to Paul Phillip. Well, let's see what happens. But Raven Telesford, the character selectee, is expected to win. We see a very impressive throw here from Westerhall Secondary School. Ronaldo Ross, it is from the Westerhall Secondary School. While we're waiting on the start of heat number three in the boys' 100-meter senior, uh, we've got uh, the 
boys junior javelin taking place. Pretty soon we're going to be joined by uh, Bernard and Twine and uh, uh, he's going to come back and bring us up to speed on some of the, the developments. He has been making his rounds, chipping and uh, noticing what uh, some of the things happening around the ground. So he's going to bring us up to speed on that. Davis Adams has also joined or booth again today and uh, Davis Adams is going to be uh, with us on commentary as we go through the course of the afternoon so look out for that it's uh, just bordering on 25 and a half after 12 o'clock Spice Country Grenada the Kirani James Athletic Stadium was saying earlier on this morning that uh, the Intercore Games of day one was featured on the BBC News at the end of day one, the, some mention did happen. The Intercore Games making mention of the Intercore Games in Grenada, the premier track and field event, uh, particularly in the Windward Islands. So uh, good news for Intercore, the organizers and the athletes participating. Get ready for the character championships as well. So Westerhall in first and second in the boys javelin, the junior boys javelin. We're going to get the details as to the distances for you. So just as Paul Philip would have indicated earlier on, he did identify that there are some issues with the technical ability of some of these javelin throwers coming out of the pandemic, coming out of the lack of events or for the athletes um, because of the abbreviated versions of intercall. And it's very evident here from some of the schools as we look at uh, the techniques employed in, in the javelin throw. Yeah, one of the things he alluded to was the fact that many of these schools just um, pick somebody really and send them based on what they would have seen in their sports. And so folks are not going through the, the, the school, the coaches in the various schools are not going through the motion of um, making sure that the athletes are technically sound, getting them the proper training. It's, it's just uh, you wake up, you can throw the javelin, you throw it at a decent range and... Um, come on, let's go to Intercall and throw the javelin. So in as much as there's been an Anderson Peters doing well on the international scene and lifting the nose of Grenada, he's saying that there, there, there are not many following in the footsteps and really trying to get it right technically and uh, going on to doing it in a more technical and professional manner. And that, in fact, is a cause for concern. So the athletes are back on the track for the 100 meters. Lay number two, the Grenada Christian Academy, Zion Joseph. Lay number three, from the GTC Bishops College, Jaheem Tika. Lay number four, from the Nagico GBSS, Tegon Peterkin. Lay number five, from the Westmoreland Secondary, Christian Lauba. Lay number six, from the Nexa PBC, Joshua Noel. Lane number seven, Classic Lighting, Happy Hill Secondary, 
Jamal Belgrade. That's your start list for heat number three of five in the senior boys, 100 meters. Oh, so uh, Belgrave, uh, Noel, Peterkin. If it's going to come, it's going to come from there. But Peterkin, the obvious favorite coming into this heat. Well, Peterkin is a sub-11 athlete. And uh, he's expected to deliver a sub-11 time as well here in the preliminary. And that should take him to the finals as well to compete with the likes of uh, Telemark and uh, Tyreek McSween. Again, Peter King being a member of the character team to compete in the 4x100 meters. Yeah, one of the things that we, what was mentioned yesterday at, at the start of the 200 meters that he competed in, uh, he wasn't uh, um, among the real clear favorites. But remember, we said never uh, count out the heart of a champion. This young man is accustomed to winning. He understands what it takes to win. And when the time comes, he knows how to turn it on. Um, he gave a Telemac a little bit of competition f for most of the way, but then, of course, Telemac showed that he has the mo more power, more strength. He's a lot fitter at this stage of the game, and he separated himself. But this young man, Peter King, is not yet back to his full self. But guess what? He is on his way there because every race he continues to get better and better. And uh, the 100 meters has been one of his pet events coming through his entire career. So um, this year, as much as it may be routine, he's still going to try to produce something extra special to lift his momentum and his confidence. Well, he has certainly come through the ranks. We remember him here at Intercall in the sub-junior category, completely dominating. And then we're going up to the junior categories and dominating as well. So much is expected of the young man. Apart from the air horns, again, another quiet moment. Thomas in one, Tika in three, Peterkin in four, Noel in six, Belgrave in seven. One automatic qualifying spot and everyone else hoping for time. Who will that spot go to and who will come through on time? Up, out and off and Peterkin is up and out and gone in lane four. He's receiving some competition from Thomas of McDonald College on lane one. Peterkin has some work to do. McDonald College and Thomas is coming through but Peterkin runs through the end with a little bit of competition. Didn't turn it on as much as we anticipated he would have but a good run from Thomas to come in second. I think Thomas may very well come through on a qualifying time but it was Peterkin and Thomas but Peterkin going across the line before him well a good competitive run by those two here as Peterkin with the legs pumping really really high looks across for a moment to see where McDonald College was a flash time of 10.88 rounded off to 10.86 and Shakun Thomas 10.96 may earn him a spot a sub 11 should bring him into the finals but 10.86 for Peterkin impressive time going into the finals yeah he has done just about enough to get into the finals um taking chances <laughs> are you are you saying not uh, using the opportunity to separate himself a little bit more like telemac and the others would have done or is it just that he is uh, under pressure well i think he was under some pressure in this event when he looked over his left shoulder and he saw thomas of mcdonald college he recognized that he couldn't ease up in the race anymore so he had to push hard for the, the finish. And if you look at the, the, the results are pretty close. 1086, 1096 between the two of them. So he was really pushed to the line in my opinion. All right, well, that's the story. So um, three of five down, two more to go. In heat number four, we're seeing um, uh, Junior Alexander of Grenville Secondary School, uh, Elisha Williams of the St. Davis Catholic. So let's go to the house announcer for the lean assignments. Lena 
number seven, St. Mark Secondary, Shaquan Allen. This is your start list for heat number four or five, senior boys, 100 meters. All right, well, that's the start list there. Heat four or five, boys 100 meters senior. Um, Junior Alexander in two of the Grenville Secondary School. Elisha Williams in three. And uh, Boca Secondary in Jolan Langine in four. Um, what's your pick here, Leslie? Top two? Two well, favorites? Of, of course, Elisha Williams would be an obvious favorite. My concern, though, is that he's also competing in the javelin at the same time. So he's doing two events happening now, the javelin and uh, the 100 meter heats. And uh, he's a very strong athlete. We heard Paul Phillips say he's one that could have been considered for the heptathlon because of his strength and his ability in all these dis different disciplines. Um, uh, so he's the obvious favorite here um, going into this heat. I would also think that uh, Sherman Williams from Hillsborough Secondary may want to offer a little challenge to him here, but it's going to be an easy victory here for Elisha Williams of St. Davis Catholic Secondary School. Well, well, let's keep our eyes on lane three and see what will happen. Williams of the St. Davis Catholic Secondary in three. If he's going to receive a threat, it's uh, probably going to come from uh, uh, Shamron Williams, Hillsborough. Maybe, maybe not. Up, out, and gone. A slow start for everybody. But uh, Williams is starting to separate himself from this back, and he's uh, gone. He's gone, and he's gone. And uh, Boca Secondary School athlete Jolan Langain coming in second, a distant second. But it was easy pickings for Elisha Williams. He started to separate himself after about 60 meters, and really and truly, he was gone. Everyone was tight from the beginning. And well, uh, Leslie? Well, it's not uh, his favorite race, I can tell you. 11.01 um, on the flash time, he really eased into the tip, but he's a big guy and if you look at his stat, he really didn't have a, a, a lengthy drive phase, he basically stood up and this is something he would definitely need to work on. So it's rung it down at 10.99, again a sub-11 time for Elisha Williams, but um, the likes of Telemark and others are running much lower than that. Again, he's better suited for the 200 meters and 400 meters. But uh, a strong athlete indeed is Elisha Williams and booking his way into the finals to compete with the rest of the guys. Yeah, well, well, with a lot of folks running sub-11 in, in this category, I think it's going to set up for a really good finals because uh, we're going to have a finals where basically you snooze, you lose. So there we have it, 10.99 for Elisha Williams of the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School. And Julian Nangain of Boca Secondary, 11.43. We will look to see if that is enough to get him into the finals. But so far, we've seen some very impressive times. A number of uh, sub-11 seconds timings. We still have one more preliminary to go. And that will determine who would make it onto the finals. So there they are, the competitors for the final heat, they're making their way onto the track to take up their positions. It's going to be a much slower heat from the looks of it. A couple of athletes with a season best here in the high 11 seconds, 11.82 and 11.90. Uh, We're speaking specifically of Daryl Phillip and the Chevron Kudjo, Daryl of the Boca Secondary School and Kudjo of the Hillsborough Secondary School.
So, Jason, there you have it. But I think uh, the winner for this seat will come from an Anton Daniel of St. David's Catholic Secondary, a Brian Isaac of SAS, and maybe a Daryl Phillip from the Boca Secondary School. As I said, this is going to be maybe the slowest of the preliminaries. Let's wait and see what's going to happen. But so far, we've seen some sub-11 times being returned for the winners of all of the preliminaries. And I can't see a sub-11 time coming from this particular preliminary. But time will tell. Let's see what happens here. Let's see how hungry and thirsty Anton Daniel, Brian Isaac, Rodriguez, Jules, Daryl Phillip, Chevron Kojo, Dylan Nelson, and Rohan Bernard are for a position into the finals. I'm going to keep my eyes on Daryl Phillip in lane four. Philip in four, Isaac in three, Daniel in two, Jules in one. Up, out, gone, still tight, still early days, still tight, still early days, but it looks like uh, Daniel, Anton, Daniel, yep, Daniel just edges across the line in front of uh, Brian Isaac of SAS, but Daniel has got it. Um, I'm not sure it's as slow as you think it would have been, Leslie. I what? think it could be uh, an early 11. Well, 11.09 on the flash time, um, I was suggesting that it would not be a sub-11 time. But there again, the two contenders, Anton Daniel and Brian Isaac. Uh, Daniel easing up, and maybe it was not a smart thing to do because uh, Brian Isaac was really closing in on him. He still ima emerged as the winner, 11.08 and Brian Isaac, 11.09. Uh, the two top finishers here. So Daniel will go through automatically with 11.08. Isaac would have to wait to see what happens. But from my records here, it seems as though we have uh, Emilio Blanco Bishop as an automatic qualifier, as one of them. Um, of course, Rickel Telemark. And then we have uh, Shaquin Thomas. We also have a Tegan Peterkin, Elisha Williams, and Anton Daniel. Um, we didn't get the time for all of the athletes in the second heat with uh, Rickel Telemark and others. But... Um, we're certain because Rickel Telemark would have won that heat that he would go into the finals. And uh, Brian Isaac may just have to wait and see what happens as the next best qualifying time. All right, well, the, the stage is set for the finals, and what a finals it is going to be. I've got a point standings for you in just a moment. All right, well, um, Leslie has uh, done the, the part for the morning. Leslie is going to uh, leave us for a brief moment. He's going to refresh himself and then he's going to come back. We hope to see you back during the course of the afternoon, Leslie Smith. Uh, you're still on um, contract. <laughs> Whatever you do, you're still on contract. And uh, Bernard Antoine is going to occupy the seat to my left. And uh, we're going to go through until the interval, which is just under an hour. Afternoon, so, Bernard. Good afternoon, ma'am. For those of you who are tuned in to us, we have just witnessed the heats of the 100 meters uh, right through the, the last of the heats the senior boys it makes for some good running later in the day am jason oh yeah um my eyes are set on uh, um, telemac and uh, peter kin and williams of the st david's catholic secondary school um th those 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 guys are, are pretty well and of course in the junior category ethan sap always there so the boys i think the boys are sub junior right up to senior at the 100 meters um is going to be keen competition it's it's expected to be so if you when you have a number of uh selectees for a character teams on showcase one would expect that because in the under 17 boys we had the mcsween Tarek mcsween and ethan sam as well as Aiden McIntosh and Nathan Hilaire, as well as Michael Redhead. The 
so it, it makes for some a pretty good final, competitive finals later in the day in the under 17 boys. We still have on your screen, you would see we have the field events ongoing. In well, particular, the boys javelin throw. Boys javelin is still ongoing. And of course, the record for that event is 71.07 meters that was set in 2017 by Mackin Felix. Back in Felix in 2017, 71.07. Uh, whenever we get a, the opportunity to do so, we let you know what the progress is like in the boys' javelin throw for seniors. Uh, look out for Elisha Williams of the St. David's Catholic Secondary School, of course, and uh, from the Hillsborough Secondary School. Um, there's an athlete there from the Hillsborough Secondary School, um, Chad Samuel. I also let's pay attention to, to both of them in particular because uh, they've been progressing nicely. And in addition to those two, we also have Rayvon Telesford and Cameron Thomas. They're, they're both on the, uh, again, Carista Selectis and Javelin. So we should expect them also. So, it, so those two, together with them um, mentioned by Jason and Elijah Williams, they should make for some interesting competition in the boys' javelin seniors that's ongoing now. So I, th I think um, uh, we will have to depend on uh, Sherry and Noel. She is down outside there on the field, and uh, once she has the details, she's going to bring us up to speed with what's happening in the boys' javelin senior. In the meantime, though, ladies and gentlemen, those of you who are looking at us, uh, taken in this live feed, a live commentary. Uh, this is day number three, uh, final day of Intercol 2023, Republic Bank Intercol 2023. It's the third and final day, and we expect an afternoon session. The all final events in the afternoon session, and we expect some real keen competition. We have 17 such events in this afternoon session. All of the 100 meters finals, the, all the relays, the 4x100 meters, as well as the 4x400 meters, uh, male and female. So oh. those, should, those should be something to whet your appetite. This looks like Ravon Telesford now. In Ravon Telesford, this has gone almost to the moon. <laughs> this one has gone almost to the moon and some distance and you can hear the reaction from the, the supporters of the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School. Um, Rayvon Tellisford sending the javelin high and far. Uh, we hope to get the score if we can just get a, 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 a glimpse as to um, the, the score once it is posted. Because... 58.65 meters, which keeps him in the lead. The record of 71.07 being set by Mackin Felix back in 2017, not under threat at all. But uh, Rayvon Tellisford leading the pack with just under 60 meters, 58.56. Oh, it's a good one there as well from uh, the athlete from the St. Andrews Anglican Secondary School, SAS. Um, is it Antoine? Uh, Brian Isaac? 
Brian Isaac. And Brian would have just competed in the 100 meters. Uh, versatile athlete, you see. So Brian Isaac with a huge throw as well. They're still trying to get the details on the mark for him. But it, it uh, appears to be just a little bit over 50 as well. Uh, based on what we've seen, based on the marker that we've seen on, on the field. Oh, that's a 54.90. Just shy of the podium. Two meters shy. So 54.90 for Brian Isaac and Ravon Telesford is out there in front. 58 plus meters. So Ravon Telesford holding on to position number one. Um, really and truly the story here tells us that um, about what um, four or five meters? Uh, the, dis the difference between positions one and four. One and one to four. Between one to four. Yeah. A and uh, Raven Talisford. He has been the top performer all year in the javelin. Uh, we expect much more from Raven before the day is through. Ravon Telesford, uh, head of the pack. Ravon Telesford, also a, a member of the boys on the 20 uh, Karifta team. He's about to wear the red, green, and yellow to represent his country. So he's uh, separating himself, separating, showing that uh, he is uh, part of the big boys league. And keeping the flags flying with respect to javelin, we have, we have in fact established a good tradition on the Karifta scene in the field events, especially so the javelin and discuss and short put. And so that continues this year. We are going to be witnessing here is a re rerun of the boys' 100 meters dash heat two. Oh, yeah, because uh, a lot of the times were not recorded for for that heat. They had some issues with uh, the times being recorded. Hence, the reason why we could not have gotten uh, a lot of the times there, even though Telemark won. So um, they're going to rerun the heat now. Um, St. Bernard of uh, J.W. Fletcher in one, John of the Grenada Christian Academy in two, Paris of Happy Hill in three, Telemac of PBC in four, Sylvester of Sass in five, Ravon Sylvester, Wesley College in six, Ravon Sylvester, that should be, and uh, Kevin Martin of Westmoreland Secondary School in seven. So one through seven, a rerun of the boys' Junior, 100 meter, heat number two. The clear favorite going into this one, obviously, Raquel Telemac. And there's uh, some Some competition will probably come from uh, Joshim Sylvester. They're up, off, and gone. And uh, as we predicted, Telemac is up and out and gone. He's uh, getting some competition there from J.W. Fletcher in St. Bernard. But Telemac has a clear-cut uh, victory, just as he did in the previous heat. 
And um, yeah, he's out, gone, and it looks like St. Bernard of the J.W. Fletcher Catholic may just have come through for second. Um, a good start in, in lane three, actually, by Kyle John. But uh, Telemac being the stronger, the more powerful of the athletes, and uh, he was out and gone. So it is Telemac uh, from running from lane four. 10.74 10.74 seconds he stopped the clock at for a second run in a short space of time that's pretty good timing oh 10.74 and um his uh, closest rival joshim sylvester of sas 11.05 joshim may have a little bit of an issue there to come through we're going to wait and see compare the times of course um kevin martin of westmoreland secondary school a good run for him 11.08 and uh, everybody else really with not even the slightest of chances but um the real waiting game is for josh m sylvester of the saint andrews anglican secondary school who just did 11.05 but uh Rickel telemac of pbc 10.74 and he has booked his ticket into the finals again just to remind our viewers a rerun of heat number two of the boys 100 meter dash senior uh, that of course had a lot to do with the fact that the times were not properly recorded and as a result the officials thinking that to give everyone the best chance and Why not do it all over again? And of course, he has his own Charon's section there. I like it on your screens just now. Uh, she's wearing a T-shirt with his name on it. Rickel Telemac. So, ongoing is the, the, the boys. Javelin, the senior boys. And whenever we get an opportunity, we will let you know how things are progressing there. But when we so last back at checked the northern in, end, the boys traveling through. Uh, second position, 58.40 meters. Ronaldo Ross is back up to throw. So from the Westerhall Secondary School, Ronaldo Ross currently occupying second position. See what he has. He's looking for something above. 58, they wouldn't get it there because he stepped over the line. So he wouldn't get it there. He is still standing in second position. Ronaldo Ross. By a mere 0 0.25 meters in, in second position. That's quite competitive. The first position is, 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 is at 58.40 uh, Elisha Williams. No, I'm, I'm so sorry. It's 58.65 from yeah. Ravon Telesford and Ronaldo Ross in second position at 58.40. That's pretty tight competition there. Yeah, remember we said earlier on that just about four meters is the difference between one and four yes. in the boys' senior javelin. So um, still early days to call. It's going to probably come down to two athletes three athletes going for the gold medal in a final throw. We are at the GBSS for C, and I have with me Angelo James. How are you enjoying Intercall? We are day three, and it's very, very competitive. Well, I mean, it's very, very competitive. I just say, I mean, I love it. The energy is right. I mean, um, we're supporting GBSS. SAS is there on our backs, but we're not worried. We're holding the faith, and we're enjoying ourselves. So, who was most impressive for you so far on your GBSS team? Well, I mean, we have... Uh, Big roster of athletes, so I'm impressed by a lot of them. So Ethan Sam, Tarek McSween, Tegan Peter King, Emilio Bishop, and the list goes on. 
So, play the tune for me now. What? Play the tune, play the tune. Play the tune. Jam. Hey, play the tune. You ready? Alright, so we're going to move around to another set of posse. It was not a Grammy Award winning song by any chance, but uh, something that uh, showed off um, celebration and enthusiasm. Uh, give them that, but it was not a platinum hit by any chance. The sight and sound of Intercall 2023. Uh, way to go. All right, so GBSS enjoying a, a lead that they have not a massive one by any chance because they've got uh, the uh, St. Andrews Anglican Secondary School right on their heels. The last point standings we have showed us just about seven and a half points difference between one and two. So um, four schools battling for two positions really. GBSS and SAS battling for position number one and PBC and SDCSS battling for position number three. So that's where it's, it's going to come from, really. But um, sometimes it doesn't really come down to the, 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 point, the, the, the point standings with them. Of course not. It comes down to the celebration. sherry Ann, you've got more celebration taking place. So we are now with the St. David Secondary School Posse, and I have it in Mr. Gustin. Mr. Gustin, how are you enjoying this sports? Very well. Very well. Elijah Ronnie. Come to back up Elijah Williams. Fastest man in St. David in Grenada. Fastest man. Really enjoying this sport. Thank you, thank you. So, St. David's party. All right, well, uh, St. Davis, they've got reason to celebrate because even though she mentioned Elisha Williams, he was just participating in the boys' javelin throw. He's also, he was also participating in the 100 meters. I think he's through to the 100 meter finals as well. But um, she's speaking about the boys' category, but they already feel that they've got the girls' category locked down because uh, they're ahead by just over 103 points separating them and the Anglican High School, 258 and 156 and a half. So, Absolutely. Very healthy competition, really, uh, among, among boys. SAS and GBSS, uh, very tightly locked in competition. And for third and fourth position, it's, it's the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School and PBC locked for third and fourth. Yeah, well, as we said, that's where it's going to come from. Four schools vying for two main positions. And... Uh, at the end of the day, the celebration will continue no matter who picks up first or second or third or fourth. So as we come to the end of the morning session, the final event in the morning session is ongoing, a javelin throw for senior boys. Uh, you would have missed, if you are just joining us, you would have missed the 100 meter dash uh, in the sub juniors, juniors and senior all categories. and. Uh, you would have missed the female javelin throw and triple jump for male open. In the afternoon session, we have 17 events in the afternoon session. All finals, Jason. Yeah, well, w one of the things that really caught my attention this morning was the girls' javelin throw. Um, Ayanna Francis of, Happy, of Anglican High School, 30.22 meters, but um, real separation and a lot of daylight there between third and uh, the top two because Aliyah Gadari of the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School, um, 36.01, and uh, Sarana Alexander of the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School, 39.09. Um, after her fourth throw, uh, Sarana Alexander really had it locked down, so there was no need for her to expend any more energy just to relax because her day's job was completed in, in quick fashion. sherry -Ann, you you're there with us again. Let's go. So tell us, how are you enjoying the meet? It's keen, keen competition. It's very great. Very wonderful. I love the point standing. Very, very nice. Tell GPSS, SAS is coming. And we're coming with a full, full force, all the way from the big parish. Is it that you all are coming or you all have arrived? We have arrived. We have arrived and we're traveling with you up to the north, up to St. Andrews. 
And right, right behind of SAS, we have SJC from St. Andrew. So are you enjoying the meet? Yes, I am. I am. I really am. <laughs> Satisfied with the girls' performance? I am. I know. I wish I could have done a little bit better, but no matter what, I'm always going to support my SJC girls. Nice, nice. And we still have some more die-hard SAS people here. Down in their ties. Especially this one sitting at the bottom. Speak to us about the game. So are you enjoying it? Very good. Your anticipation for the outcome? Well, obviously, it's going to go down to the wire and we're going to come out victorious. It's only obvious. What is it about the SAS team that you feel would give you the edge? We operate better under pressure. Once you pressure us, you get the finest out of, coming out of us. That's the way we are. So we're still here on the bleachers. We're getting the, the views from the supporters of the various secondary schools. So we're going to make a pass and as fast as we see the ties, we are going to stop by. All right. Well, thank you very much, sherri -Ann. And uh, sherri -Ann has been searching, searching around the place and getting some good reaction from a lot of the supporters out there. Of, uh, it's good to see a lot of the uh, adults coming out and supporting these young athletes because I mean it must give them some extra motivation knowing that you're not just competing and looking at your schoolmates in the stands but also a lot of senior faces who you don't know but when you can feel their energy on the from the track and from the field what is quite evident uh, uh the rivalry, the rivalry amongst the school doesn't just stay with the present day athletes, but also the people who have been there long, long ago. So you look at the faces of the, uh, in, in the crowd and you look at their, their uniforms, what it is that they're wearing, the ties and the shirts and so forth. Uh, you, you can see it runs deep. The support runs quite deep. And, and this is a good thing. As we have predicted earlier, J um, Jason, sometime yesterday, you would have looked in the stands and there were gaps and space and so forth, but it's filling up nicely. In fact, um, uh, one would predict in, 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 in the next hour, hour and a half, because it, there is, there is a huge line, line up outside. In the next hour, hour and a half, uh, their place should be all packed out. All right. Well, while you say that, we've, we are also uh, awaiting the final results of the boys javelin throw in the senior division um, not seeing any action on the field so maybe they have concluded and uh, time will tell uh, we had Ravon Tellisford in the lead and um, uh, Ronaldo Ross from the Westerhall Secondary School in second position there was a battle between third and fourth at one point we know that Brian Isaac was in third position we heard that he dropped down to fourth um, we're going to wait and see how that plays out, but really and truly um, that puts the curtains call on uh, the morning session of the Intercall Games on day three. So what we are going to do is um, pull it back in, take five, maybe ten, and um, come back to get the final session of Intercall 2023 on the run. Champions will be crowned. Medals will be given out. We have the anticipation that records will be broken. It will all come true to form and the true story will be told over the next three hours. Until then, let's just uh, run away for a minute and leave you to refresh yourselves while we do the same and we come back in a tick or two. In it. Have your family or friends ever needed cash now? but you are nowhere close to give it to them directly? With the cardless cash feature from Republic Bank Online and your mobile phone, it is hassle-free and convenient to send money to anyone, including yourself, using the Republic mobile app. Simply log into your account, access the cardless feature, enter the amount you want to transfer, and using the access code provided, the cash can be withdrawn instantly from a designated Republic Bank ATM without a card. Republic Bank Cardless Cash is convenient at your fingertips. To learn more about our Cardless Cash features, visit RepublicGrenada.com for more details. Special terms and conditions apply. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. Home is easy as one, two, three. 
Thinking about your new home? Think easy. Think a Republic Bank Home Easy Loan. Think affordable. Think convenience. Think Republic. Home is easy as one, two, three. Republic makes home easy. Wow, that was such a breeze. Own your home with ease. So whether laying that first brick or purchasing an existing home, we've got you covered. Republic Bank will get you those keys hassle-free in no time. Home is easy as one, two, three. Apply for a home easy loan today for a chance to win a cash prize. Getting your new home is easy with Republic Bank. Republic Bank. We're the one for you. Terms and conditions apply. Building or renovating your home or business? Why not use clean, renewable energy? Install solar panels to power your home and office and see your energy costs go down and your savings go up. Using renewable, solar-powered energy protects our environment, reduces our carbon footprint, and slows the devastating impact of climate change. Republic Bank can help to finance construction and renovations that make use of renewable energy. Visit any Republic Bank branch and ask about renewable energy financing options today. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. Have your family or friends ever needed cash now, but you are nowhere close to give it to them directly? With the cardless cash feature from Republic Bank Online and your mobile phone, it is hassle-free and convenient to send money to anyone, including yourself, using the Republic mobile app. Simply log into your account, access the cardless feature, enter the amount you want to transfer, and using the access code provided, the cash can be withdrawn instantly from a designated Republic Bank ATM without a card. Republic Bank Cardless Cash is convenient at your fingertips. To learn more about our cardless cash features, visit republicgrenada.com for more details. Special terms and conditions apply. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. We are back live. We are back live on the grounds of the Karani James National Stadium, uh, Intercol 2023. And just giving you a feel of the sights and sounds of Intercol 2023. It's a beautiful shot here of the, what we call the bleachers, um, Adams. Yeah. Um, well, once again, it's just good to be here. Um, to be bringing you the sights and songs of Intercol 2023 
Um, basically, we are back to normal, and I'm sure everyone is really enjoying um, the fact that we are able to come into the athletic stadium and view uh, you know, good competition, but a beautiful environment. I mean, it's just a picturesque, um, wonderful looking environment, and the stadium is filling up to capacity, and, to, and this augurs well for our boys and our girls who are always looking for that scaffolding, that reinforcement, that show of appreciation for what they are doing. And so the stands filling up with all of the friends from the um, various schools surely augurs well for them for better performances. And this friendly rivalry among schools, it's, it goes on and on and on, even years after you would have left the, your, your, your particular institution. And, and, and this bodes well. It, it makes a good camaraderie. It makes a good friendship. It, it makes a good rivalry and engaging conversation. Yep, it does. Um, I, 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 I'll be honest with you. Um, Previously, my involvement in sport has to do with boxing. And of course, that's a, 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 a sport where it's one-on-one. -on -one. And you meet someone from, say, St. Vincent, someone from Barbados, whom you have to have battle with, physical battle. And then when you're finished, you, have, you develop a friendship that is long-standing, that lasts to the end. And, and so the same thing is happening here with our, our Intercall Athletic Championship, where the athletes from the various schools, passionately um, um, loyal to their schools first. And, 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 and so when they come to compete, they come to give their all. And no matter what school you're from, they're gonna make sure that his or her school, whether it's um, St. Andrew's Anglican Secondary or GBSS, they come to do the best for their schools. Ab absolutely. Even now we look at the the beautiful ocean, I mean, the beautiful Caribbean Sea outside there, the, the flags are fluttering. This is a really, the, the athletic stadium is really well decored and decorated. And, and if there's any paradise in the Caribbean, Antoine, Grenada is showcasing that. Oh, what a beautiful sight this is. And it's a perfect day for track and field, really. The weather is fine. It, it's nice and bright. The, although it is sunny, the wind is blowing. As uh, maybe for track and field, the wind might be a little bit too heavy to aid and assist in the, in the running times, but it keeps the patrons cool. Yes, it does. It does. But as we said, we could not have had a, a, a better day. It's almost perfect, to be honest, in terms of the, 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 the cloud cover, um, in terms of the sunshine. It's just almost a perfect day today. And yes. so we want to thank TNR Communications for the advance in technology um, that can bring all of those drone shots, things that you would have been thinking is only for the larger countries, the bigger um, economies. It's right here in Grenada, those advances. And if you are just joining us, you are in fact tuned in, you are tuned in to TNR communication platform where we are showcasing Grenada's premier track and field event, the Intercall games for secondary schools 2023 on the shoulders if you will of the republic bank uh, you are not missing any action on the field uh, we have a little height of snow in terms of actions and you would have missed day one and day two but there is a lot in store if you are just joining on this afternoon session for day three the afternoon session um adams with uh, there's this is where it will be decided. This is where it will be decided. And if I were to bring my mind to close competitions, um, um, Antoine, and I think you would remember that 2016 would have been one of those where it would have taken the last event to decide um, who would be Intercol Athletic Champion. And it seems as if we are heading in that direction. If it does, I know you normally say lightning don't strike the same place twice, but it seems as if Intercall 2023 could be an event where lightning strikes twice, where the final event of the day can decide who is going to be Intercall 2023 Athletic Championship champion. And so when we get back on the track and on the field for the afternoon session, we will we will witness we will witness the 
long jump for boys senior we will witness the longer distances the 3,000 meters for girls open and that will be followed by the 3,000 meters 5, 3,000 meters open for girls the 3,000 open 3,000 for junior boys so these are the these are the marathon runners. These are the guys with the long distance. The strong this guys. Is the strong <laughs> guys. guys. This yep. is the stamina. Yep. The stamina guys. And uh, the 500 meters. 5,000. 5,000 meters boys open before we get into our relays. Yep. And these are going to be extremely um, competitive events. Again, no quarters asked, no quarters given by any of the athletes. They're going to put it all on the line. And I can assure you, with the fact that St. Andrew's Anglican Secondary has an opportunity to um, um, dethrone, oh, this is a beautiful shot of the Grenada Athletic, uh, Key Randy James Athletic Stadium, um, Antoine. And just next door is a, is a glimpse of the, our cricket stadium, but it's a beautiful picture that you are seeing here of our national stadium. The Kirani James Athletic Stadium. Oh my, kudos must go to TNR Communications. They've invested quite a lot to be able to bring us this, um, um, Antoine. I mean, we must give credit where credit is due. And, and I think taking a step back now to, to appreciate what TNR Communication is doing in Grenada um, says a lot for our, our entrepreneurship, our business acumen, the fact that someone is willing to go on a limb and invest in all of those so that we in Grenada could enjoy the benefits of our boys and girls as they go through and achieve their potential. Absolutely, and if you, ex if you cast your eyes further into the, into the ocean, you can see where the sea uh, and the waves just kiss the rocks uh, uh, just outside of the, outside of the stadium there. Uh, and it gives you a pretty good idea of what life on an island looks like all around surrounded by water beautiful and, and you can extend your, your gaze as it's what we can see in this shot all the way down to the south the south yeah um of course the world famous grand dance beach in the south the only thing missing here antoine is a tourist ship um a cruise ship um at the port that would have just been able to um bring together all of the beauty of grenada where um, our visitors can come and enjoy what we know is really a, a, a wonderful place to be. Um, this is absolutely fantastic and, and a great and, sight. And that's not, uh, that's, that act is not unusual. In fact, over the last two days, whilst we have been here, uh, there have been more than one ship docked. So the, just what you are describing, Adams, is what, what we would have witnessed for the past few days. Absolutely picturesque, uh, a postcard type setting that we have here that we're bringing to you live. And, and, and as we look at the students now, let's talk about this, this fan base, these fanatic followers, the, 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 the colors that they would have brought. Of course, each school is uniform, but man, they would have brought a, 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 a kaleidoscope of colors with them, whether it's in their horns or in their heads or in the around their necks i mean they brought something with them to assist them in in celebrating the successes or the agonies of the schools that they they are supporting and you look you see a cross section the good part of it is that they are all together whether it is wesley college whether it's anglican high school or or st david's catholic they are all together and that's the beauty of what sport does for us absolutely and in fact the young people look forward to this day. The young people, are, uh, they, these are memories that they can cherish. And some of you might be aware we have not had a quote unquote a rail in the call in a, in a while. In four years. In four years. Yeah. W what they had last, um, last time around was something they call a special. special. Um, so it was not counted as part of Intercall Championships. So we are correct that they haven't had it for four years with all the schools present. And here we have a, a, a picture of the, the, the surrounding environs of the National Stadium. Uh, you, you, can, you can see our cemetery there. And oh, it's just a marvelous sight. It's this area that we refer to as River Road. And uh, directly into, into the gaze of your view now is the, the cricket stadium that just kisses our athletics stadium 
to, to its left. And, and, and well protected now by what we famously call the Dabo area, uh, um, just I mean, covering or, or, or protecting both stadiums filled with lots of houses and, and so on, well populated um, and, and able to look down upon the stadium and hopefully even from there are able to, to participate in the activities. But to be living up there, that must be a wonderful sight. Well, I tell you one thing though, uh, they have the front row view of all sporting events. That is true. <laughs> well, not just sporting events, all activities. <laughs> all activities. And the, these two stadia. Uh, you are, in fact, getting a, a, a glimpse of what it's like to live on a tropical island such as ours. The gentle waves are kissing against the rocks um, to going towards the north uh, uh, of the stadium. Of this, of the stadium, it l tells a story in itself that this is island living. This is peaceful. This is beautiful, beautiful, turquoise-looking waters. Um, uh, pretty calm. I mean, I'm sure it's inviting. Even now that they are here, someone might be saying it might be even just as good to go and take a dip in those waters at this time. As you see, the vehicles now traversing up into the Cherry Hill area um, and going on to the western side of the island. This is absolutely fantastic. And of course, what you note also is the fact that we are also entering into the dry season. So just on the left-hand side of the stadium, on that crag of rock there, you're seeing the drying of the vegetation at this time because we have just entered into the dry season. Yes, very much so. It's on TNR Communication uh, bringing you the live stream of Republic Bank Intercall 2023. Day three of three. All Everything I would say culminates today on around 5 36 o'clock. Correct. And all I would say there's still space down here at the National Stadium. Um, day three final day, the day that we are all expecting and anticipating, there is still room for quite a few of you. So if you are home and you were wondering, should I hide or should I not, I can confidently tell you that there is still some room that you can get into, once you don't mind being in the sun, um, into the open stadium um, seats where you can be part of the, the student body or on the secondary stand on the opposite side there is also quite a bit of um, um, room available lots of seats still available all i would tell you is walk with your umbrella walk, and be well hydrated absolutely when we rejoin the action on the track and on the field we will start with the long jump for senior boys then we we'll go on to the 3000 meters run open for girls the 3000 meters run for junior boys and the 5000 meter run open for boys and then we get into the finals of the 100 meters well yes and of course everyone looks forward to the 100 meter dash i mean i hesitate to say it but normally i look forward to my 400 and 800 and 3000 and 5000 meters but so many people are enwrapped by the that 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 energy that adrenaline that comes from running uh, 100 meters and also I join with them of course in that but we have quite a lot of um, athletic finals taking place the 100 meter final 3,000 5,000 we are looking forward to having a wonderful day and even as we speak the javelin is still in progress and I'm sure that they are throwing with in, in the back of the mind whatever they do to the best of their ability can they make the qualifying standards Thank you very much, Davis. Um, we're here now with the Minister for Education, Youth, Sports and Culture. Um, Senator Andrews, this is day three of the inter-secondary school games. Uh, what are your thoughts on the performances of the athletes thus far? Well, I think we've had some very, very uh, spectacular performances. I've seen some really, really good times and some outstanding talent among our athletes, I mean, from all the schools. And I think it's a very, very good sign. And I've been encouraged by what I've seen here over the last couple of days. Sports falls under your actual purview as well as um, Honorable um, Redhead. But um, in terms of the strengthening of, of the 
the coaching systems within the secondary schools and the encouragement of clubs and more events for the children to showcase their talents. Um, what are your thoughts on that and will you as the lead minister be pushing to have that anytime soon? Well, certainly, and I think some of that is already in the making. One, uh, with the push to implement the sports policy, there are some elements of that in terms of capturing the talent early and being able to identify and uh, nurture those talents, so that's there. Uh, additionally, there is already significant collaboration between uh, mainstream education and the Department of Sports to use some of their coaches to assist in some of the pr in clusters of primary schools where they may not be physical education teachers at the moment to facilitate the kind of enhancement of the talent that exists among our students. So there's a bit of that happening and we look forward to having more and more of it as we um, settle and begin to roll out more for our sports programs across the sector. And how happy are you with the Principals Association for the introduction of the two new events in 2023, the HEP and the OC? Because we see what's happening out there with Lyndon, Victor and Kurt Felix. Well, I think um, it just means that they're forward thinking, they are proactive. Now, if we're going to be competitive on the world stage, like we have shown our capacity to do, um, I think it's important that we begin to prepare more for our athletes for some of those competitions. And we've shown with Lyndon and Kurt that we can represent in those areas. So I'm very delighted that they were able to put those two um, events in to be able to give more of our athletes the exposure to what it takes to build the stamina and the kind of um, outfitting that it's going to take to perform appropriately at that level. And training of coaches? Um, well, I know there is uh, there are programs currently taking place to upscale the training for coaches, and um, I know the Department of Sports will be more able to comment specifically on that, but I know that's ongoing too. Before I let you go, I, I can't help but notice the little blue in the shirt. Um, <laughs> care to comment on that you're from St. Andrews well um, today I will do my best to support I will support um, good outstanding performances but my heart will bleed the color it has always bled blue thank you very much that was uh, Senator the Honorable David Andrew Minister for Education Youth Sports and Culture we're just going to just take just a quick break to go back over to Davis but however we have two other members of parliament sitting here with us, so we'll go and get a comment from them. One for the St. Joseph's Convent, Grenville, and the other on the St. Andrews and Lincoln Secondary School. So we'll be back with you momentarily. Thank you, Sherry, for such a beautiful interview, so honest and heartfelt as we take you back to the um, Kieran and James Athletic Stadium as we look at the sights and songs. Well done, uh, Minister Andrew from Ministry of Education. And we really are hopeful that the transformation agenda that you and your government would have promoted, um, it will continue to take shape, um, not only in education, but in sport and in all other facets of Grenada, character and pretty make of life that would improve lives, of course, in Grenada. At the end of the day, we're looking to get the best um, athletes from Gr Grenada. We're looking to showcase the talents of Grenada, Caraco and Pity Matnik. And we really are grateful for the, 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 the words that came from the minister in terms of what they would want to see coming from this. And the fact that they can congratulate the Forward Thinking Principals Association for including events such as the Octathlon and the HEP in this year's um, 2023 Athletic Championship. Okay, so we're joining us now. We have uh, the Honorable Kate Lewis and the Honorable Delma Thomas. Well, it's evident, looking at the red, that we can see some some association with one of the secondary schools in Grenville that is doing extremely well in the girls' division, the St. Joseph's Convent St. Andrews, and next to her, the Honorable Delma Thomas, which is a bit confusing because I'm seeing blue, I'm seeing gray, I'm not too sure whether it's SAS, whether it's GSS, but what are your thoughts? I am from SJC Grenville and I'm here to give my full support to the athletes of St. Joseph's Convent Grenville. I also commend the, the athletes of St. Joseph's Convent St. George because they are doing an excellent job. In the boys division, I'm from St. Andrew, so it's SAS all the way. My siblings went to SAS, so I'm also supporting SAS. But overall, I just want to wish all the athletes best wishes today because 
they are doing an excellent job and to make it at that level is commendable. Very well. Honorable Thomas? Hi. So I am here. I'm a past student of the Granville Secondary School. Four of my boys attended the St. Andrew and Lican Secondary School and I'm all representing St. Andrew. So it means that I'm here backing SAS to be victorious. However, I will also back all the athletes because they are performing well. And so to all the schools across the trial and state, I say kudos to you, your coaches and everybody for preparing those athletes. But SAS all the way. Thank you very much. And you see, these are what you call strong supporters of the alma mater, but they're also giving encouragement to all the athletes that is participating in the 2023 Inter-Secondary School Games. We now return to Davis and Mr. Bernard. Thank you, Sherry, for again conducting beautiful interviews, well spoken by our parliamentary rep, Ms. Thomas and Ms. Lewis. And of, of course, what's happening from both of them is the fact that they are wishing every athlete well. And at the end of the day, you have to have a, a place to stand on. You have to have a place to back. You can't be just atypical in those situations. So who can begrudge our, our, our parliamentary rep? The fact that they have a school that they went to or they, they've been supporting over the years. And so nothing wrong with that um, to our parliamentary reps. You have to support your school. Nonetheless, you know Grenada is a bigger picture. Absolutely. In fact, um, Adams, the support of the various schools is what makes this product such a unique product. Arguably second only to the Jamaican champs. Yeah, I'd say I'm not even sure the, J the Jamaican champs can. Um, I I'm sure they would say Grenada is really a beautiful um, athletic championship, well organized, well run, real competition, of course. So, yes, uh, Jamaica, the only one that could rival us, but I would go Grenada first. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we, we are, in fact, witnessing the. You are part of the live feed eh, of Intercourt 2023. Uh, on the shoulders of Republic Bank. Republic Bank um, as the main s sponsor uh, with many, many, many small players here and there to make this product what it has turned out to be over the last two days into the third day today. Um, uh, Bernard, just before you go leave this issue of the sponsorship, I just want to interject something here. While Republic Bank has been the major sponsor over the years, and we are so, so grateful for that investment into the life of Grenada, um, we cannot forget other sponsors who have been associated with schools over the years and have continued to invest in the boys and girls. Um, I can't name them all at this time, but we, we know for sure that almost every school has a sponsor. So when you look at Kariku, you, you see the, on, the, on the jerseys of, of the Hillsborough Secondary School, the logo of one of the sponsors. When you look at, at Bishop's College, you see a sponsor. You look at Happy Hill, you see, and all of the schools have sponsors that are doing just as much to ensure that these students of the schools get the opportunity not to have to worry about a uniform or worry about hydration or worry about um, breakfast or so as they train, but they are able to come because you have sponsors, separate sponsors, other than the, the general sponsor for, for these games. Uh, you are so absolutely correct. Uh, there, there, is a, there is a cost, uh, and in some instances, there is, you are talking about substantial cost to equip and outfit a school to attend, uh, to participate, the training, the preparation for these games. And we say thank you to all of the, sp all of the sponsors, GTC uh, for Anglican High School and Bishop's College Classic Lighting, Lighting Caribbean uh, for the Boca Secondary School, Happy Hill Secondary and JW Fletcher, as well as Wester Hall Secondary School. Th th these are the ones that we, uh, that we have in front of us, Najiko and G for GBSS, Nawasa for SAS, and Paddy's Enterprises for Hillsborough Secondary School. And this is absolutely fantastic that the, Kariku, the schools from Karakou and Piti Matnik, they have different sponsors. Paddy's in Karakou, a long-standing establishment um, in Karakou who have decided that I want to give back. Um, of course, um, Nawasa in Grenada, sponsoring SAS, the St. Andrews Anglican Secondary School. And of course, all of the others that you noted, we really want to let them know that your investment is not in vain. All right, stay tuned. We have an important interview 
momentarily. He's going to finish in sixth position. His best throw. Next to him, sixth place. And now his final chance to make it onto the medal podium this evening. Nawasa Sass, Brian Isaac. He's currently in fourth. So that's a fall on that throw. He's going to finish in fourth. So it's Nawasa Sass fourth, Nawasa Sass eighth. For those of you keeping track of the points, you can add that to the last point standings. And we'll see how hot things are getting for our afternoon session on day three of the Republic Bank Intercall Athletics Championship. Have your family or friends ever needed cash now, but you are nowhere close to give it to them directly? With the cardless cash feature from Republic Bank Online and your mobile phone, it is hassle-free and convenient to send money to anyone, including yourself, using the Republic mobile app. Simply log into your account, access the cardless feature, enter the amount you want to transfer, and using the access code provided, the cash can be withdrawn instantly from a designated Republic Bank ATM without a card. Republic Bank Cardless Cash is convenient at your fingertips. To learn more about our cardless cash features, visit republicgrenada.com for more details. Special terms and conditions apply. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. Well, uh, good afternoon again, everybody. And as you know, this is Intercall 2023. We are live in beautiful Spice Country, Grenada. And as we were showing you earlier on, and as you can see at the top of your screen, a beautiful sunshiny day makes for perfect athletic conditions, uh, maxing out to about 32, 33 degrees. Outside there in the middle, it feels like about 37. I've been out there this morning, and it feels nothing like early 30s. But guess what? Uh, these are children, these students, these are supporters. They don't mind leaving here today two shades darker what they will tell you is that they would have enjoyed everything pertaining to intercall 2023 the 50 50 edition now for us to get to 55 it didn't just happen overnight for us to get to intercall 2023 it required a whole lot of investment a whole lot of time planning effort and sacrifice and it could not have happened for the last 50 years without corporate grenada being right there front and center of it all and one such corporate giant 
uh, Republic Bank Grenada Limited. As you know, a lot would have happened, the, uh, the whole transition from one entity to the next. But what has remained consistent is the involvement in youth, sports, and particularly athletic, the Intercall Championship. My name is Jason Skeet, and with me is the Managing Director of the Republic Bank Grenada Limited, Mrs. Naomi Diali. Mrs. Diali, good afternoon. Welcome to Behind Our Scenes, uh, the production situation and set of the Intercall Championships. Just as Republic Bank has been operating, uh, doing a lot behind the scenes to make sure that the Intercall Games are a success, you would appreciate what you're seeing behind the scenes now. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Jason. Pleasure to be here. All right. Um, Intercall Championships 2023. Um, if you're walking in, not just as a corporate sponsor, but as a spectator, being here for the first time, give me your absolute first impression. Well, I was, as I was driving along the Melville Street um, Road, coming into the stadium, I was saying, wow, this is going to be a blowout day. Because it's parents, children, everybody is streaming to the stadium seem to be anticipating an exciting day of athletics and surely I'm seeing that before us today. Absolutely amazing. Um, Republic Bank, uh, we know of the transition as we said earlier on, uh, moving, you know, just changing banners so to speak, but what has remained consistent is the organization's continued support and commitment to the sport. Um, talk to us about Republic Bank in preparation for Intercall 2023. Right. So last year we had a, a warm-up, we should say, because it was only one day. It was a special day for us because just before COVID, when COVID hit, we were really looking forward to having that Republic brand stamped on Intercall. And it didn't happen because of the pandemic. Last year we did one day and we really was looking forward to that three-day event because that's the full-fledged plan out um, program for Intercall. So our marketing team months now has been preparing, planning, you know, strategizing on how we can deliver our best game for those three days. And I think they did a wonderful job. Hats off to Camille Goddard and her team. They did a good job. Yeah, well, you have no um, qualms with me there at all. And I've worked with Miss Camille Goddard in the past, so I'm quite knowledgeable of what she's capable of. And with a good team, I'm quite sure that, well, mm -hmm. the, the evidence is right here before us. Um, Intercall Championships, the, the Mecca event really, the Mecca sporting event in Grenada and in part and to the wider region, the, mm -hmm. the Windward Islands, the Windward Islands, right? Um, some are saying that the Intercall Championships are second to the national champs in, in uh, Jamaica. Yes, so actually I've been hearing that. Yeah. <laughs> Quite good to hear. Right. Yes. Um, an awesome feeling to be associated with a, an event like this for 55 years. Talk to us about that journey, 55 years. Well, our involvement with Intercall has not been that long. We acquired the sponsorship of that, those games or the privilege to sponsor it when we took over or we acquired the Scotia branches because it was Scotia Intercall. And um, that was one of the you know, highlights for us to be able to really um, have that marketing reach through Intercall because it was always seen as the premier sporting event. So we were ex associated with football. If you notice, the Republic um, Bank always try to ensure that we give back to the communities through those sorts of engagement, sports, culture, youth in, um, development, because we see it as a very pivotal to our vision and mission and to give back to our stakeholders and to show appreciation, appreciation to the communities that we serve. All right, amazing. Um, what, what do we have in store for the next 55 years? Can I be presumptuous and say mm -hmm. the next 55 years? You may. <laughs> Nobody has a, a, a real handle on time. But as long as we see the future before us, we intend to continue to give back, back to our communities. In whatever shape, form it comes, we will um, embrace those privileges. Because the Republic ba Bank brand is a Caribbean bank. Um, we don't have another place to go to when things are hard or where the economy gets a, a hit from maybe a hurricane or a pandemic. We are here to stay. So our involvement with our communities will continue to be um, one of the highlights of our engagement with the communities. All right. Any particular um, school that you have supporting? I know you may not <laughs> want to 
to to to to, to be too um specific but uh, you, you you can give away anything based on what <laughs> you see I'm not really supporting any particular school, I'm afraid. I am an old SJCSS girl, and so I have a little soft spot for them. Well, I, I know, hence <laughs> the reason why I asked the question. Come on, Abby. <laughs> I place you on the spot. Uh. But um, I, I really, I'm, I'm backing all the schools to do their best, to bring the best game forward. And from the competitive races I've been observing, I think they are doing a fantastic job. There's need to probably build the grassroots at the schools a little more to invest and so it's an encouragement to other corporate sponsors maybe not as big as Republic but everyone could play their part in trying to build these sporting programs within the schools and they encourage to do that. All right absolutely amazing we're speaking with uh, Mrs. Naomi Diali the managing director of Republic Bank Grenada and uh, Intercall coverage 2023 the 55th edition um, yeah, she's an old SJC girl, and yes, you heard it right, but she's not going to give anything away. But uh, if she's an SJC girl, it means that she's going to stay a little bit up that side. So um, she's probably looking at uh, a soft spot for presentation by the scholars as well in the boys' division. They're currently sitting in third position. Um, when you look at the rivalry you're seeing in the boys' division, oh, yes. uh, what do you make of that? Well, it seems like it will come down to final races this evening because GBSS is doing well, PBC doing well, SAS, St. David's, they powerhouse. So I think it will be very, very competitive right down to the end. So I, nobody should rest on their laurels at this time. <laughs> very well said. All right. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Diali. Anything you'd like to add quickly because I don't want to keep you away from the action for too long. I know you've got your relays to prepare for because uh, I'm not seeing your name on the relay start <laughs> list uh, at, at all because... Uh, the Republic Bank 4x100 meter, meter relay team um, head office will be decked off in, in, in red and um, Melville Street in blue, Grenville and Halifax Street in teal, mm -hmm. and uh, Republic House is going to be in, in purple, I think it is. Yes. Um, I'm, not, I'm not seeing your name on the starters Unfortunately, list. I leave that to the younger folks. Huh? <laughs> One knows <laughs> what they could play at. <laughs> All so right. I'm sure the young, one, the, the young men and women, they're really looking forward to showing their, their athletic skills. They, they're very excited and very competitive. They are um, you know, leveraging for bra bragging rights in the next few hours. We'll know what will happen there. All right. Well, I can tell you that's going to be a talking point in the branches for at least another six months. I am sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mrs. Diali, thanks a lot for dropping by. Mm -hmm. um, we do appreciate it. And um, thanks a lot again to Republic Bank and your continued support for the young ones, uh, their development, and of course the, the Intercall Championships. Uh, we continue to sing you praises, sing the, the, ba the bank praises, and um, we'll continue with the fantastic job that you folks have been doing. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure being here. All right. Speaking there with uh, Mrs. Naomi Diali, the Managing Director of Republic Bank, title sponsors for these Intercall Championships. Uh, the bank has continued to support and show their, 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 their support for continuing sponsorship of these games and um, thanks a lot again to them. All right, uh, what we are going to do, we're going to take you back to some decent drone shots, some of the, the best uh, drone shots that you would have seen in a long time. We're going to take you back to some of that. Uh, we're going to get some nice clean shots of the facility and uh, grab some ambience, some good uh, ambience. And then when we come back, we're going to start the final session, day three, the evening session, Intercall 2023. Catch you in a bit. Have your family or friends ever needed cash now, but you are nowhere close to give it to them directly? With the cardless cash feature from Republic Bank Online and your mobile phone, it is hassle-free and convenient to send money to anyone, including yourself, using the Republic mobile app. Simply log into your account, access the cardless feature, enter the amount you want to transfer, and using the access code provided, the cash can be withdrawn instantly from a designated Republic Bank ATM without a card. Republic Bank Cardless Cash is convenient at your fingertips. To learn more about our cardless cash features, visit republicgrenada.com for more details. Special terms and conditions apply. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. Home is easy as one, two, three. Thinking about your new home? Think easy. Think a Republic Bank Home Easy Loan. 
Think affordable. Think convenience. Think Republic. Home is easy as one, two, three. Republic makes home easy. Wow, that was such a breeze. Own your home with ease. So whether laying that first brick or purchasing an existing home, we've got you covered. Republic Bank will get you those keys hassle-free in no time. Home is easy as one, two, three. Apply for a home easy loan today for a chance to win a cash prize. Getting your new home is easy with Republic Bank. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. Terms and conditions apply. Building or renovating your home or business? Why not use clean, renewable energy? Install solar panels to power your home and office and see your energy costs go down and your savings go up. Using renewable solar-powered energy protects our environment, reduces our carbon footprint, and slows the devastating impact of climate change. Republic Bank can help to finance construction and renovations that make use of renewable energy. Visit any Republic Bank branch and ask about renewable energy financing options today. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. Reminding you to envision your future with a home easy loan from Republic Bank. It's more than a mortgage, it's peace of mind. Apply today. And don't forget, of course, special terms and conditions apply. Also, thank you to supporting sponsors the National Lotteries Authority, Stamalt, Fruta. and Glenel Natural Spring Water. Thank you all for your tremendous support here today. This is the third and final day of Republic Bank Integral Championships 2023. It's all happening at the Karani James 
Athletic Stadium. Now it's the time to call a family member, friend, neighbor, or friend. The session after lunchtime is going to be so amazing. You won't want to miss a beat. Once the action resumes, we're standing by for a steel pan presentation from Republic Bank HR.
So we're prepared to resume for the afternoon session. We're going to open with the boys at Long Jump Stadium. The boys are making their way out onto the Long Jump Track. Just one point. 
pointed behind them is the Presentation Brothers College. And third, we have the St. Joseph Convent, St. George's, with 100, sorry, 127.5 points. And we have St. Joseph Convent, St. Andrew, with 124.5 points in fourth. It's still anybody's game, ladies and gentlemen. And the afternoon session is going to tell it all right here at the Karani James Athletic Stadium. Intercall 2023. Two oh six in Grenada and the rest of the Eastern Caribbean medal presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Dorian MacPhail, manager, Republic Bank, Melville Street branch. Event 13, Girls Triple Jump Open, Silver Medalist Tiana Bridgman, Nawasa Sass, 9.11 meters. Now your gold medalist. Arona Cape also representing Nawasa Sass. 10.03 meters. Event 26 boys javelin throw senior presenting your bronze medalist Ronaldo. Ross, Classic Lighting Caribbean, Westerhall Secondary, 58.40 meters. Silver medalist, Rayvon Telesford, St. David's Catholic Secondary, 58.65 meters. And your gold medalist, Kizim Collins, representing Classic Lighting Caribbean, Westerhall Secondary. 59.30 meters. Event 25, Girls Javelin Throw Senior. Bronze medalist, Anya Francis, GTC, Anglican High. 30.22 meters. Silver medalist, Aliyah Kid Harry, St. David's Catholic Secondary, 36.03 meters. And your gold medalist, Serena Alexander, St. David's Catholic Secondary, 39.09 meters. We can back up to event 14, boys. Triple jump open. Presenting your bronze medalists, Micah Campbell, Nadja Kaur, GBSS. 
12.72 meters. Silver medalist, Ashad Tate Nawasa Sass. 12.98 meters. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting your gold medalist, Timothy Greenwich Najiko GBSS. Thirteen point zero two meters. Congratulations to all of the winners. Thank you so much for showcasing excellence on the track and field today. And thank you as well to Mr. Dorian MacPhail, manager of Republic Bank, Melbourne Street Branch. So ladies and gentlemen, we are on a break at the moment. We'll be back with so much more. Stay tuned, don't miss a beat. Stay tuned. It's going to get a bit. <laughs> you know what's going on. Finding a challenge in sexually abused can be distracting and you might be going to the next. The Child Protection Authority is here to support you and your loved ones and give you the advice you need to help navigate through a difficult time. Send us a WhatsApp message today on 533 6990. That's 533 6990.
Christopher in lane five. A gold medalist in the 200 from Bishop's College, Kayla Allen. In lane six, bronze medalist in the 400 and silver medalist in the 200 meter from the St. Joseph's Convent, St. Andrew, Samara Noel. In lane number seven, from the J.W. Fletcher Catholic Secondary School, Angelique Bain. And in lane number eight, from the Boca Secondary School, Kedonna Douglas. The lane assignments for the 100 meter dash sub -junior. All right, well, good afternoon and welcome back to the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. It is the start of the final session and uh, the session in which champions will be crowned and we're looking at the possibility of records being broken. We're starting off the final session with the 100 meters sub junior girls, the 100 meters sub junior girls. They have already been introduced and uh, let's run through the lane assignments quickly. Anglican High School, Thomas in one, Oliver Sass in two, Bascom of uh, SDC in three, Bascom and Christopher three and four, and uh, Allen five, Noel six, Bain seven, and Douglas eight. Um, coming into this one, we're looking at uh, the possibility of Allen of Bishop's College in lane five. She, yeah, Allen of uh, Bishop's College in lane five kayla allen she also won the 200 meters so kayla allen looking to do the double in the sub junior girls she's already won gold in the 200 and she's uh, got a side set on gold in the 100 meters time will tell with me is davis adams davis good afternoon good afternoon jason nice being here once again bringing the sights and songs at the king Rani james athletic stadium and there's a hush across the stadium now as we get ready for the start of the 100 meter dash sub junior girls and they're off up out and gone it looks like allen allen and christopher four and five but here she comes this looks like uh, allen uh christopher sdcss Christopher of SDCSS, Kayla Christopher of St. David's Catholic Secondary School, getting the better of uh, Kayla Allen of the Bishop's College. She really came through. She was determined to not let history repeat itself. She was on the losing end in the 200 meters, but this time she got it right. She came out and she was off like a rocket. Separation and went through the tape. Davis Adams, talk to us. Well, she started well. She got a blistering start, to be honest. I think she had the best start in the field and was able to keep her form, keep her, her fitness, keep it right through. She really, really was an immaculate picture of, of, of um, 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 running in this 100-meter um, dash for sub junior girls, and she deserved to win. 12.27, that's the time. Kayla Christopher winning the 100-meter sub junior girls for the St. David's Catholic Secondary School. 12.27, uh, Kayla Douglas of uh, Boca Secondary School coming through in 12.67, and uh, the 100 meter champion, Kayla, the 200 meter champion, sorry, Kayla Allen of uh, Bishop's College, 12.73. So uh, the medal count still uh, holds uh, true to form, really, because uh, Kayla Christopher, she got bronze in the 200, and here she is now picking up gold in the 100 and flipping the script. Uh, Kayla Allen picking up gold in the 200, having to go for the bronze in the 100 meters. Yeah, the good word is flip the script. Um, she was determined not to have um, history repeat itself with her. She was aggressive off the start, and you could have seen that there was a, a determination in her that she's not going to lose that one today. Well done, young lady. Well done to the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School. Of course, um, Kedonna Douglas and the um, Kayla Allen of Bishop's College, they took up the minor medals, but they would be proud of the performance also. All right. Well, that's uh, one for the history books, the 200-meter sub-junior girls. We're not wasting any time. Let's go directly back onto the track for the boys' 100-meter sub-junior dash. In this one, well, we've got something special brewing, I do believe. Delron John is there. Delron John for... St. Andrew's Anglican Secondary School coming through with the fastest qualifying time of 11.58. He's in the middle of the field in lane four. And uh, on either side of him in lane three, 
Jaden Pierre of the Grenada Boys Secondary School, 11.92. But more importantly, um, Christoph Kaliste, also of SAS, in lane five, uh, he came through with 11.86. So I'm um, quite sure the favorite for this one, um, according to what we see on paper, Delron John. Delron John in lane four. If we go back to uh, the 200 meters, he won gold in the 200 meters for Sass in a time of 23.48. So he will be looking to do the double as well. Well, you also have Jaden Peer of the Grenada Boys Secondary School who has a, an impressive time also of 11.92. So this is not going to be a cakewalk. Um, you have... Quite a few 11 pluses, um, Jaden Pierre, Delron John, um, Delron Christopher, and Christoph Kellis. They're all in the 11s. From the Nawasa Sass, he is your gold medalist in the 200 meter, Delron John. In lane number five, again from the Nawasa Sass, and he's your bronze medalist in the 200 and your gold medalist in the 400 meter, Christoph Kellis. In lane number six, from the St. John's Christian Secondary School, Vecchio Hines. In lane number seven, from the Najiko GBSS, Kamal Joseph. In lane number eight, he is your silver medalist in the 200 and your bronze medalist in the 400 meter from Nexio PBC, Ethan August. And that was the lane assignment for the 100 meter dash. Boys. All right. Well, the lane assignments were just given to us and we've got two gold medalists sitting in this one. Delron John, winner of the 200 meters and the gold medalist Christoph Kaliste, the 400 meters sub junior boys. So we've got what will be another showdown here at the athletic stadium, the sub junior boys 100 meters. Surely the medal count will come from somewhere within the middle lanes four, five, and probably it could be somewhere three and six. Let's wait and see. They're on the starters orders and a nice picture across your screen there. Everyone in deep focus, making sure they give themselves the best chance. They're off, up, out, and running. Delron John is up. Delron John is up. Delron John is gone. He's got his compatriot from Sass coming, Christoph, but he's not going to hold him. Delron John is gone, and it seems as though Og Ethan Ogis from PBC may have snapped the second coming out in the outside lane in lane eight. That was nothing short of awesome, Davis Adams. Talk to me. Well, it, it was obvious that Delron was the prohibitive favorite in this race, and he proved himself to be the favorite. He's strong, he has good form, he's fast, and he doesn't give up. He runs right through to the end. But what was amazing to see Ethan Ogis just come from nowhere and pip his partner to second position for PBC. Tremendous run also from Ethan Ogis of the Presentation Brothers College. Ethan Ogis had a very good run in the heat this morning, and just after the heat, he was speaking to one of his relatives and telling them he's got something left in the tank, which he is going to let out into the finals. And guess what? Le Ethan Ogis in lane eight, coming through in the last uh, five meters or so, and picking up the silver medal, an awesome run by Ethan Ogis, but more impressive, 12-11.26 from Delron John, and 11.57 from Ethan Auguste coming in third, Christoph Kalis of Sass, 11.66. The 100 meter sub junior boys in the record books. If you were to pay attention to the time that Ethan had something in the tank, Ethan's time in the prelims was 12 seconds flat. He Ladies smashed it. Yeah, well, he said he had something extra special in the tank, like I said, and he, he did promise it for the finals, so he did deliver, no doubt about that. We're getting ready now, ladies and gentlemen, for the 100-meter junior girls. What are we looking at here now? Let's go quickly to the lane assignments. Uh, the house announcer is going to take us through those spaces quickly. Here is your lane assignments. All right, well, uh, what are we looking at here now? In lane number one. 
from the McDonnell College, Abigail Williams. In lane number two, from the Nawasa Sus, Tamaya Thomas. In lane number three, GTC Happy Hill Secondary School. She is your silver medalist in the 200 meter. Elena Di Cotto. In lane number four, she is a member of our Carifta team. From the GTC Happy Hill Secondary School. Sorry, that's the classic lighting, Happy Hill Secondary School. Talia Sampson. In lane number five, another member of our Carifta team. From the GTC Anglican High School, Shafania Houston. And she is the gold medalist in the 200 meter and the gold medalist in the 400 meter. In lane number eight, from the classic lighting, Boca Secondary School, Amaya Chandler. In lane number seven, from the St. Joseph's Convent, St. George's, and she is the silver medalist in the 400 meter, Kamali Phillip. And in lane number eight, from the St. Joseph's Convent, St. Andrew, Zania Belfort. Well, we've got champions in this one as well. A Girls, lot of folks looking to do the double. In June. this case, one looking to do the triple. That's Shafonia Hostin looking to do the triple here. A clean sweep for her in the sprint event. She's got a side set on that. She came through with a qualifying time of 12.41. Not the fastest qualifying time, but did in fact show that she's got something in the tank. So all eyes are going to be set on her. That's Shafonia Hostin. She is in lane five. But uh, Thalia Sampson of Happy Hill Secondary School. That's the danger lady right there. She's in lane four. So no doubt it's going to come from right in the middle of the pack again unless we see another upset like we just saw in the previous one. Well, those things happen and um, we're not... Up, out, off. Good, clean start. And here we go. This looks like Anglican High School in Shafonia hosting. She's got some work to do, but oh no, she's going to be eclipsed. Happy Hill Secondary School for Leah Samson. It looks like Samson. Samson goes all the way through. So Samson does the big upset and picks up the gold medal. And Happy Hill Secondary does one and two. Gold and silver for the Happy Hill Secondary School. Alia Dikoto picking up silver. But Thalia Samson, strong, powerful, showing energy, keeping composure from the get-go. She ran a smart race. Never losing focus and went all the way through. Dean Salams, Well, Thalia Samson got a brilliant start. She was a stronger athlete. She managed to keep her form right through to the end. Actually, for me, that was not a surprise at all that Thalia won considering all of the events that Shifonia had taken part in previously. It was not surprising. She has the, the form and she was able to hold it through. I mean, kudos to Shifonia Houston, who has taken part in a lot of events. But the fact of the matter is, not surprised that Talia was able to peep her to the end. Go right ahead. The Happy Hill Secondary School. She is uh, the gold medalist and also the record holder for the 100 meter junior girls. Yes, um, again, as I said, when I saw what was happening, the fact that she got such a brilliant start of the block, she measured um, uh, her, her opponent on her right, and that is Shefonia Houston. She had her friend on her left. And that is um, Alina Dikoto. And she decided that there was no way any one of them was going to catch her. And so smashing the record, it's really icing on the cake for her. I mean, I am really thrilled, really, really happy for Talia Samson to see her come through. And kudos to the Happy Hill um, contingent. I know that they will be shouting for joy up there for the fact that they have the gold medalist in the 100 meters. Tremendous run, tremendous atmosphere. Um, nothing that Shefonia should be ashamed of, but Talia Samson, she is the, 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 the person of the day. Talia Samson winning the gold medal and doing it in record fashion, 12.02. Just eclipsing the old record, which was set back in 2018, of 12.04. So good news there for the Happy Hill Secondary School, as we said. And uh, Aliana Dikoto coming in third. 
Shifonia Houston in uh, second place. Shifonia Houston in second place with a 12.17. But uh, it was all about Thalia Sampson. She was strong. She showed power. She showed energy. And she delivered with a gold medal type finish now. And she, you could see that she, every phase of the race, her start, her drive phase, her finishing, the three phases of the 100 meters, she showed more composure in all of it, Jason, than any of the other athletes, including Shefonia and her friend. Her head was down for the first couple of meters. She, she um, got herself together and then went into her drive phase and she finished with power and with strength and with speed. If we're going to see a clean sweep of medals at any point this afternoon, if we're going to see something special and somebody picking up three gold medals in the one, two, and the four, if we are going to see that, we are going to see it now. And I tell you why. Because there's a man from GBSS, a young man from GBSS, in the name of Ethan Sam, who is on the track. Let's go down to the house announcer. Let's get the intro. today by one of these athletes. Your lane assignments, lane number one. GTC Bishops College, Randy Jones, in lane number two. Carifta Athlete, lane number two, from the Classic Light, Happy Hills Secondary School, Nathan Hiller. Lane number three, another one of our Carifta Athletes, from Nexa Credit Union, PBC, Aiden McIntosh. Another Carifta Athlete, in lane number four, from Najiko GBSS, Ethan Sam. And Ethan is a gold medalist in the 200 and gold medalist in the 400 meter. In lane number five, another Karifta athlete from the Najiko GBSS, silver medalist in the 200, Tyreek Maxwell. In lane number seven, from the Nawasa Sass, he is the bronze medalist in the 200 meter, Kyle Ned. In lane number seven, from the St. David's Catholic Secondary School, Mikael Redhead. And in lane number eight, from the classic lighting, J.W. Fletcher Catholic Secondary, Jaden McSween, McQueen. Again, the record on, on for this, this one event basically is. If you snooze, you lose. Because with a feel like this here set, I tell you something, even though we're seeing uh, some 11.50 and 11.55, it, it really doesn't hold much water because we've got a lot of these athletes who came through, some of them in cruise control, some of them just running to qualify, and one or two basically coming through with faster times. Now, it means that if you snooze, you lose because this one has got some fireworks attached to it. Ethan Sam is there. Um, Aiden McIntosh is there, Tyreek McSween is there, Kyle Ned is in this pack. This here is what you call a full pack. Yes, it is a full pack. Um, in, I mean, what's amazing is that we have a crop of these junior athletes and they are all performing at the top of the, the, the level. They're all brilliant. They're all doing well. And all we are looking is to see the times that they're going to produce because they are competing against the best. It's a really, really wonderful group of athletes, um, um, Jason. All right. Well, Kyle Ned is there running for the SAS, and he will want to do something extra special so that SAS could maintain their edge. GBSS has uh, better thoughts to stretch the lead as much as they can. Here we go. Off, clean, nice, neat, clean start. And here we go. This looks like Ethan Sam. Ethan Sam is out. Ethan Sam is out. Ethan Sam is gone. Ethan Sam is gone. And there's a fight somewhere for second place. But Ethan Sam did the triple one, two, and four. And boy, did he do it with zest. Yes, Ethan. This story was all about Ethan Sam and how well he can do, how fast he can run. And he did not disappoint us at this time, Jason. He really powered through. He started well. He measured his arm. He measured the athlete. And look at that time. 10.54. 
Ethan Sam was up. I mean, he showed class. He kept his composure. This young man has got a lot left in him still. He's not yet been pushed really to the limit, and he's still showing he's got something more to go. 10.54. That's Ethan Sam. 10.54. Just missing out on the record. 10.50 set by Kirani James. I had my sights set on this record. We spoke about this earlier on, and I was looking forward to him really stretching and beating this record, but he didn't have the competition right on his heels to do it. But a good run from Ethan Sam and his compatriot Tyreek McSween picking up the silver medal 10.86 so Ethan Sam and Tyreek McSween they did one two in the 400 in the 200 they did the one two in the 400 Ethan Sam picked up the gold in the 400 so Ethan Sam a full set of intercall medals in 2023 and Tyreek McSween picking up two silver medals in the 100 and the 400. The Grenada Boys Secondary School doing pretty good. Aidan McIntosh of PBC, he was one of the threats right there. Aidan McIntosh, a good run from him, 10.86 coming in third. A good run for Aidan Mac McIntosh as well. Well, I mean, hats off to these guys, these junior athletes. I mean, they made us proud. They've made Grenada proud. They've made the schools proud. They've made their family proud. They worked hard, they trained hard, and the times are showing what they have been put in. It's now coming out. 10.54.04 per second off the record of Kirani James. What else could you ask for um, today? A beautiful day, a brilliant day, and tremendous running. Oh, all right. This is nothing short of spectacular. We are here at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium in what many are calling off as the premier track and field event in the Windward Islands for sure and probably second only to Jamaica and uh, here we are at Intercall Championships 2023 sponsored by uh, title sponsors Republic Bank and corporate sponsors National Lotteries Authority, Flo, George of Huggins and Company, TNR Communications, Sol EC, Grenada Limited and we are live at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. Now we're getting ready for the 100 meter senior girls. We're getting closer and closer to the fiery furnace. And when I reach the fiery furnace, I will tell you. We're getting closer and closer to the fiery furnace. The senior girls 100 meters. Yeah, um, we're getting to the big guys and the big girls um, in Intercol 2023. Let me say that I consider our athletic championship, our school's athletic championship, to be one, the best, of course. Um, kudos to the Jamaicans, they're doing extremely well, but I hold no, I take no, no hostage, hostages when it comes to Grenada being and producing tremendous athletes. We are doing extremely well. All right, well, Shante Augustine is in this one. She's the gold medalist in the 400. And uh, Kamisha Dominic is right there next to her in lane five. Kamisha is the gold medalist in the 200. Shanti Augustine doing silver in the 200. So uh, Shanti Augustine looking to be the spoiler here in this one. But she would love to walk away with a double. Yeah, she won gold in the 400. So she's a gold medalist in the 400. Um, I want to believe that Shanti um, is going to continue to to produce. She's From been an Saint excellent Joseph's athlete Convent, and I'm looking Andrew. forward to her performing extremely Jean well. Baptiste in lane number two from the GTC Anglican High School, Sophia Ross in lane number three from the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School, Rihanna Frederick in lane number four, one of our Carifta athletes from the St. Joseph's Convent, St. George's, Shante Augustine in lane number five. Another one of our Carifta athletes from the St. David's Catholic Secondary, Kamisha Dominic in lane number six. In lane number six. From the Hillsborough Secondary School, Rihanna Rollins in lane number seven. GTC Anglican High School, Kadeen Phillip, and in lane number eight, from the McDonald College, Ver Verandell Roberts. Again, the record for this event is held by Sherry Fletcher of the St. David's Catholic Secondary School, set back in 2003 in a time of 11.5.
and uh, no doubt uh, Shanti Augustine will be looking to smash that record and I'm quite sure Kamisha Dominic would have the same idea. Rihanna Fedrick is there and um, Rihanna Rollins. So uh, let's wait and see something special could come out of this one too. Davis Adams, we've got Kamisha Dominic and Shanti Augustine, two of our uh, athletes that will be representing Grenada come East the weekend in the Carifta Games. And uh, making a mark, stamping authority is what this one will be all about. Yeah, and I, I look forward to just tremendous competition between those girls to bring the best out of each other, of course, um, Jason, because that's what we want, the best that they can bring out of each other. Of course, at the end of the day, the one is going to be the gold medalist, but we want them to bring the best out of each other. Shanti has been doing well over the years, and we look forward to her doing well. But the athlete for St. David's Catholic, Kamisha Dominic, she has shown herself to be uh, an exceptional talent also. So we want to see her do well. Kamisha Dominic picking up gold in the 200 meters. And uh, Shanti Augustine, gold in the 400 meters. So there's a showdown of sorts here for sure. Right after this one, we're going to be going over to Sherry Ann Noel. She's down in the mix zone. And uh, Sherry Ann Noel would most definitely have uh, some superstars with her. Um, so we're going to go to her directly after this one. But we've got to get through this one. This two hundred, this 100 meter finals. Senior girls. Into call 2023. Batiste. Ross. Fedrick. Augustine. Dominique, Rollins, and Philip, lanes one through seven. No Roberts for McDonald College in eight. Keep your eyes on Kamisha Dominic, Shanti Augustine, lanes five and four. Up, off, clean. Here we go. This looks like Shante Augustine. Oh, she's out like a rocket. She's gone. Shante Augustine is gone. She's into next week. But here comes uh, Kamisha Dominic uh, in second place. But uh, Shante Augustine was into next week very early. It was a brilliant run. I think Shante is, is determined. I think she, she really wants to do well, knowing the, the, the kind of personality she has. She is really, really, really wanting to do well, and I'm really proud of her to see her come through. Um, I think she understood that she had competition, and she did not um, mess it up at all. She went out there, and she stamped authority on the rest of the field. 20 in, meters, yeah. Including Kelly and Dominic. 20 meters into the race, she was gone. Shante Augustine was gone, and it was daylight, and a whole lot of daylight. More than one day, a few days. Yes, Sherry Ann Noel, <laughs> are you there with us, Sherry Ann Noel? Talk to me. All right, well, we're waiting on Sherry Ann, but in the meantime, 12.1. Two. So uh, a little bit distance off the record, 12.12, but uh, she'd be disappointed she didn't get that. But uh, the gold medal is good enough at oh. this stage for her. Correct. And she lowered her time coming in from the hit. Uh, her hit time was 12.27. She did 12.12, so she can feel good about herself that she's managed to improve in her running. Well done, Shanti. Well done, um, Kelly and um, Kamisha Dominic. 1242, um, improving on a time of 1259. So both one and two, first and second, were able to improve their times. And that's what we want, getting the best out of themselves. Well, if I, if I tell you a story about this, 12.02, 1212 um, actually. Um, yeah, 1212, a good time there for, for Shanti Augustine. Uh, we're still trying to make sure we've got contact with Sherry Ann Noel, but just before we go that, we, just before we go down to Sherry Ann, we have just found ourselves in the fiery furnace. Yes, and here sir. we are. <laughs> this is what it is: the fiery furnace, because this one is going to be one for the record books, uh, whether the record is broken or not, and the record is a, a pretty decent one too. Make no mistake about that. The record is a very decent one as well. The record stands at 10.40 set by Marcus Julian. Yeah? Um, the 100-meter boys. Hmm. Here we go. 
Look at these lane assignments. We're going to go down to the house announcer in just a bit for the lane assignments. But I tell you, this one, really, you can't afford to miss a step. Because Ladies if you miss a step, we're getting ready for event number four. somebody can take you in a flash. The record for this event is held by Marcus Julian, set back in 2003, a time of 10.4 seconds. Here is your lane assignment. In lane one, from the Westmoreland Secondary School, Kevin Martin. In lane number two, from the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School, Anton Daniel. In lane number three, from the Najiko GBSS, Emil Blanco Bishop. In lane number four, he is the gold medalist in the 200 meter. Next up, Credit Union PBC, Rikael Telemark. In lane number five, from the Najiko GBSS, he is your silver medalist in the 200 meter and bronze medalist in the 400 meter. He goes by the name Tegon Peterkin. Ladies and gentlemen, in lane number six, from the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School, your gold medalist in the 400 meter. From the St. Davis Catholic Secondary, Elijah Williams. In lane number seven, from the McDonald College, Shaquan Thomas. And in lane number eight, from the Nawasa Sass, your bronze medalist in the 200 and silver medalist in the 400, Joshem Sylvester. There are no clear favorites here. Rest assured, absolutely no clear favorites. You might have a personal favorite, but there are no clear favorites. This one, you can't afford to miss a step. The field is packed from top to bottom. It is going to be a burner, um, Jason. That's a fact. But if I were to make a choice, um, if I were to put myself out on a limb, I am still going with form, Rikael Telemark. I am not prepared to lose a limb. I am not going in that direction. What I will tell you is that my four limbs will be intact at the end of this one. What I will tell you as well is that this one requires a good heart, a good mindset, and if by any chance you're hypotensive, please stay calm. Get your medicine. Get your tablets. But it's going to be a burner. It's going to be fast. And I'm really hoping that this, he can take it down the, the, the mark um, to below 10.6. Um, I'm hoping we can get a 10.6 uh, at a minimum. They're waiting for total silence. And now, as they, as they are called to order, there will be a hush around the stadium. Never count out the heart of a champion. Tegon Peterkin is in five. This young man knows how to win. He has gone through it all. Rikael Telemac is there. He has so much to gain from this one. He wants to prove a point. Elisha Williams wants the St. David's Catholic Secondary School to move one step up the ladder in the boys' division. Emilio Blanco Bishop thinks that he is quietly overlooked most of the times and would want to make a statement. Joshim Sylvester in lane eight not talked about very often but as dangerous as they come anton daniel saint david's catholic secondary school a good qualifying time anton daniel 11.08 and he knows he can do this this is what champions are made of the 100 meter senior boys Silence. Tension. Oh! 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 The right word to use there was tension. And look at what has happened. Elisha Williams. Disappointment. Elisha Williams. Agony. Elisha Williams. Tears. He is done his 100 meter male dreams sadly are over. 
This is what the pressure does to you. It was as clear as daylight and sadly he gets the Linford Christie treatment and he has to walk away in disappointment. Well, I really pity the young man. I am really sad for the young man. Um, he's prepared for this. He's come to this point. He infringed on the rules and the rules have to be upheld. But man, this is really, really tough one, a tough break to have gotten. And I can understand the agony that he's going through at this time. He wanted to be part of the dance. He worked hard to be part of the dance. But unfortunately, there was an infringement and he cannot be there. But Jason, well, that's the loss. If you want to be part of the dance, you've got to wait for the music. And when the music starts to play, that's when you dance. They're all waiting on the music. The music this time is mirrored in the sound of a gun and they're gone clean start good start everybody's up and running even but here comes Raquel Telemann Raquel Telemann he's under pressure Bishop Bishop Telemann Telemann does it at the tape Telemann does it Telemann does it at the tape with some measure of uncertainty coming down the track Telemac does it finally in the last five meters and Emilia Blanco Bishop rewrote the script up until 95 meters. Here we look at it again. I tell you something, take on Peter King was right there. Let's go, Davis Adams. This was brilliant. I mean, it was pressure. As you would have said before, there is a pressure cooker in the men, in the young men's 100 meters senior. And I mean, Rikai Telemark was under tremendous pressure from the start and managed only to pull it off with the last five meters to go. Man, this is indeed a miraculous run by Telemark. I thought he was done and out and I thought he was done. This is what champions are made of. This has to be his mom. She was wearing a t-shirt marked Rikai Telemark for the entire intercall. This is what champions are made of. He never gave up. He went straight through to the end. He understood that it is not over until you get past the tape. Rickel Telemac, congratulations. 10.58. And uh, Kevin Martin of Westmoreland Secondary School, a good run for him. He came in fourth in 10.97. So something for him to cheer about. But guess what? Look at the three. Emilio Blanco Bishop, the guy who was rewriting the script all the way through from the gun to 95, coming in second in 10.61. And Tegon Peterkin, GBSS, 10.82. A good run for him coming back from injury. This is what we call pressure. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I am kind of gutted for Emilio Blanco Bishop. He led the way right up to 90 odd meters and Rikai Telemac just decided, my God, this is the last, I cannot give it in. And within the last five meters, he managed to pull off a mirror. So we're here now, the winner of the 100 meter senior boys, uh, Raquel. Raquel Telemark, I realize you celebrated that victory in a final. You went straight to the stand, straight to your mom. 10.58, how do you feel about that timing? I feel really good about the timing. I was visualizing myself winning the race, running that time. And I'm really happy with the performance. Uh, the opponents of mine give me good competition, but I commend them on that. But 10.5 is an awesome time. It was a little bit disappointing for fans who wanted to see real competition because one of the athletes who had the, the potential to push you even further had a, had a false start. Um, what was the feeling after that? I mean, in the first start, I didn't know what happened, but I hope he shakes it off and let's get back, uh, let's get back to some awesome competition from him. What's next for you on the tracks this evening? The 4x1 and the 4x4 relays. Thank you very much. That was the winner of the 100 meter senior boys, the athlete out of the Presentation Brothers College, Rickel Tamalik. All right. now back to our commentary team. But before we do so, we do have the, the winners from the 
second and third positions that comes from the Grenada Boys Secondary School. I would just like to invite them to come across and, and you know, share a few words with us. But we've been getting some little information from the side that the guys are not ready to speak. So we're going to head back up to our commentary team that includes Davis Adams and Jason Skeet. All right. Thank you very much, sherri -Ann. Um, 100 meter in the books, Intercall 2023. Uh, disappointment for Elisha Williams because he would have caused some trouble as well. He would have caused some serious trouble in this one. But the day belongs to Rikel Bobby Telemac. 10.58. Presentation College, take a bow. Good run by Telemac. Good run by Emilio Blanco Bishop. Good run by Tegan Pizikin, but even more astounding was the run by Kevin Martin of Westmoreland Secondary School. He shocked me when I saw him really competing for third place. It was really one of those that opened my eyes as to what was happening on the track. Yeah, um, but I tell you something, Emilio Blanco Bishop, this guy? <laughs> no, it, it was a, it was a guy. burner, man. It was a burner. I mean, I, I, I think the, whoever, wherever you're looking at it from, I want to say that you saw a tremendous spectacle. My heart went low for a minute because everyone was looking at uh, the possibility of Raquel Telemac and uh, Tegan Peterkin and probably a uh, Joshim Sylvester. But Emilio Blanco Bishop, remember in the, in the introduction, we said that he was one of those that felt he is not given sufficient credit. He's been living in the shadows of Peterkin and Ethan Sam for these games. And boy, did he come forward and stamp his authority on this one. Well done, Emilio Blanco Bishop. Well done, Ricard Telemac. Well done, Tegan Peterkin. But well done to the field. The field made it possible. And that is what we are so happy about. Well, we've got medal presentations happening down there. Let's go to the house announcer and uh, let's deal with that. Let's share in the joy of the medal presentation. Boys, Octathlon Open bronze medalist, Shamar Fleming. Classic Caribbean, classic lighting Caribbean. Boca secondary, 4,147 points. Silver medalist, Jordani Lewis, Nawasa Sass. 4,223 points. And uh, your gold medalist, Saviel Williams, Nawasa Sass, 4,419 4, points. Event 35 girls, 100 meters, sub junior. Bronze medalist, Kayla Allen, GTC Bishops College. 12.73 seconds. Silver medalist, Kaydonna Douglas. Classic lighting Caribbean. Boca secondary, 12.67 seconds. And your gold medalist, Kayla Christopher, St. David's Catholic secondary, 12.27 seconds. Event 36. Boys, 100 meters sub junior. Bronze medalist, Christoph Kalis, Nawasa Sass. 11.66 seconds. Silver medalist, Ethan Ogis, Nexa PBC. 11.57 seconds. And your gold medalist, Delron John, Nawasa Sass, 11.26 seconds. Event 37, girls, 100 meters junior. 
bronze medalist, Alina Dakoto. Classic lighting Caribbean Happy Hill Secondary. 12.26 seconds. Silver medalist, Shafonia Houston, GTC Anglican High. 12.17 seconds. And your gold medalist, Talia Sampson, Classic Lighting Caribbean, Happy Hill Secondary, 12.02 seconds. Event 38, boys, 100 meters, junior. Bronze medalist, Aidan McIntosh, Nexa PBC, 10.86 seconds. Silver medalist, Tyreek McSween, Nagicor GBSS, 10.86 seconds. Now it's time to present to you your gold medalist, Ethan Sam, Nagicor GBSS, 10.54 seconds. Event 39, girls 100 meters, senior. Presenting your bronze medalist, Rihanna Frederick, St. David's Catholic Secondary, 12.70 seconds. Silver medalist, Kamisha Dominic, St. David's Catholic Secondary, 12.42 seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting your gold medalist, Shante Augustine, St. Joseph's Convent, St. George's. A time of 12.12 seconds. Event 40, boys, 100 meters, senior. Bronze medalists, take on Peterkin, Nagicor, GBSS. 10.82 seconds. Silver medalists, Emilio Blanco Bishop. Nagicor GBSS, 10.61 seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, time now to present to you the gold medalist, Rekyle Telemark, Nexa PBC. A time of 10.58 seconds. This is the end of this medal presentation. Thank you very much, Mr. Sherman Douglas, IT Manager, Republic Bank, Grenada Limited. So we're going to give you the full point standing for both categories. The most recent point standing. In the female category, in 19th position on two points, the Grenada Christian Academy. In 18th position on three points, the Westerhall Secondary School. In 17th position well, uh, on five points, huh. the Grenada... Now that the dust has settled, and uh, there's some semblance of normalcy in the commentary booth, and uh, things have been put back in place. Tables and chairs has been uh, relocated. They would have been relocated to their proper position. 
we are back to doing commentary in the Intercall Championships 2023 at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. Let's run through the top five positions quickly in the Intercall Championships in the girls' division. Davis Adams, you've got that? Yes, I've got that. Uh, in fifth position, St. Andrews Anglican Secondary on 126.5 points. In fourth position, St. Joseph's Convent, St. Andrew, 133.5 points. And in third position, St. Joseph's Convent, St. George, on 144.50 points. The top two positions, um, Jason? Anglican High School won 76.50 points and way out front, leading by over 100 points, is the St. David's Catholic Secondary School on 289 points. Well, they've got points to spare for next year's intercall. Now, let's go into the boys' category, the top five. Let's run through that quickly. Boca Secondary School, surprise there. Boca Secondary School, 79 and a half points. St. David's Catholic Secondary School in fourth with 160. PBC has moved from fourth and jumped into third with a good performance right there. Now they're on 175 in third. Out ahead of them by some distance is St. Andrew's Anglican Secondary School on 266. And uh, out in front, enjoying a slender lead. The Grenada Boys Secondary School, 284 and a half points. Those are your top five as we get into, as we get deeper and deeper into the close of these games. Well, Grenada Boys Secondary School and the St. Andrews Anglican Secondary School, it is still tight, 16.5 points. And those can be easily made up. And so it is looking to be close, extremely close to that matter. And I don't think the GBSS is taking anything for granted. And SAS has something to work toward. Four schools battling for two major, major positions when you look at the, the scores, really, because GBSS and SAS battling for that first position. And the PBC and the St. Davis Catholic Secondary battling for that third position. So that's where the action is really. Uh, four schools battling for two of the major positions. Of course, we have the other schools that are... We've got sherry Ann. sherry Ann, are you there? Okay, so we are here now with the winners of the, uh, the 100 meter senior girls, the athletes from the Happier Secondary School. In first position, we had Talia Sampson, and she broke the record with a time of 12.02 seconds, and third position went to Alia Dikoto. Um, Talia, uh, how comforting is that feeling for you? All during the past three days, you've been at it, you've been at it, and you finally got the gold. I'm very, very excited. I'm motivating myself, and I actually break the record. The excitement goes to go all to Carifta next week, and I know I'm going to make an 11 flat. I'm hoping to do so. Speak to us about your training regime. Well, I've been training for the past, for the past year. Um, I was like training for myself. Eh, so like I'm with myself, like me alone. I should be like in and out, out of training too. I did it for myself. So between now and Karif, so what is the plan to ensure that uh, uh, Talia is in good shape for mentally, physically? Well, Karif, I have a Saturday, so they plan to train us. As a trainer, I know I can do much better than how I did today. Thank you very much. That was Talia. And to my left, I have Alina Dikoto. Uh, a very strong run from you, but you had to settle for the third position. Speak to us about it. Well, I plan on coming, well, better than thought, but I, I was really checking on the timing too, more than the position. And based on how I ran and how I came in, I end up breaking my PB because I ran 12.55 in national champs and I came and ran 12.26 in the 100 now. So I am pretty pleased with my time, but looking forward to breaking my PB again, maybe in the next meet coming up. So what's next for the, for the happy team in terms of going and training to ensure that the next time around, it would be bet better points on the scoreboard for the happier secondary school. Well, I 
as long as we push in the other athletes and we get them into a positive mindset, for sure, have will be shining next year, for sure. Thank you very much. This was uh, the first place and the third place winners in the 100 meter. The athletes from the Happier Secondary School. I now return to our commentary team, to Jason. All right. Well, good and uh, confidence there from uh, Aliana Dakota and uh, Thalia Sampson, both of the Happy Hill Secondary School, bringing in gold and bronze for the Happy Hill Secondary School and the 100 meter girls senior. We're getting ready now for the start of the girls 3000 meter run in this blistering hot sunshine this is going to be a task um an unenviable one um to be honest i i i very much enjoy seeing the distance runners i'll tell you why i love to see people think um plan strategize which is what the d longer distances are all about so I, I look forward to it. I know the girls are prepared because they understand that the conditions could be tough, could be grueling, but I think um, they will be able to manage and be able to overcome the environment that's around them, whatever the conditions that they have to deal with. So I, I look forward to a good race. We're looking forward to good times um, from the girls. I don't think they would take part if they did not consider themselves well prepared. All right. Well, we've got the girls 3,000 meters to come. We've got the boys 5,000 meters to come. And that we, then we are going to get into the heart-wrenching, breath-losing, eye-popping relays. Usually, the relays are like the crowning achievements of the evening, team events, working together. Um, and yet, it is still the most fickle event. Um, for the athletes because it can bring so much anguish and agony. Um, but when it is completed, um, there is that joy of having overcome the, the jitters, joy of having overcome the hurdles, the obstacles that are there, and that is getting that battle all the way around in the most um, efficient time, the most um, um, beautiful way that you can do it. And that basically is... They, they, they really, it brings joy not just to the team running, but also to the crowd. All right, well, well said. We're getting ready for the start of the girls' 3,000. We're going to be dancing in and out of stuff even while this race is going on. So we're going to be paying attention to this, no doubt. But we're going to be dancing from left to right with other things as well. Um, while we get, well, let's deal with the start of this first and foremost. Some, a lot of young talent here. Um, anyone you know in, in this event, Davis Adams, that uh, brings uh, memories or thoughts of uh, doing something extra special for us this afternoon? Well, what I can say is that we still have Gidari in this 3,000 meters from St. David's. So it means that um, she's a very, very um, consummate athlete in the distances. So Aliyah Gidari is one that we can look for. Um, we see we have Destiny Langain also from the Anglican High School, and she did well also in the distance events. Um, and there might be those who would come up and be able to do, um, upset the, 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 the favorites. Um, there is a Charles from St. David's also that, have, that has done well uh, in the past. So we're looking forward to seeing them. Belgrave, of course, of um, Wesley College. She's a pretty good athlete too. All right. Well, you mentioned Belgrave and you mentioned Gidari. We are going to pay attention to them as they get ready to travel along on their journey of 3,000 meters. 3,000 meters in the hot sun. Basically seven and a half laps around the track. Anxious moments there for these young ladies. The record for this, um, Jason, is 11.31.19.2016, Kelly and Alexander. And we're hoping to see good times. Basically, we want to see good times. Well, Kelly and Alexander doing this damage back in 2016. 
11 point three eleven minutes 31.19 seconds i'm not quite sure if that record is going to be under threat at all this looks like an easy chip for the most part we'll wait and see how that goes this is one with uh, a test of endurance more than anything else it is a test of endurance um, and form um, ensuring that um, your form remains no matter what the stresses come your way um, we also must look for the athletes actually from the Boca secondary Boca actually has a history of distance athletes um, and so I would not be surprised if we have athletes from Boca secondary who would come through doing well um, basically that is um, one of the schools you could look forward to um, also you had a couple athletes Kelly and Alexander came from the Grenada Christian Academy at the time um, she was absolutely fantastic and I see an athlete from Grenada Christian Academy there if she's anything close to Kelly and Alexander then um, the Grenada Christian Academy also has another gem on their hands well that's um, Tiana Joseph and uh, Sabrina Lewis but I, I want to just take our, our, our viewers back for just a brief moment now. Um, in the 100 meters, we saw um, the disqualification, the disqualification on, on the false start, obviously, in the 100 meter uh, senior, senior boys. boys. Yes. All right. And uh, And that, of course, was Elisha Williams, who we're all really looking forward to seeing yeah. um, competing and, and, and giving the best. Because at the end of the day, we have high, high expectations of Elisha. Um, he's big, he's strong, he's fast. Um, he seems to be able to do everything. And we believe that he would have pushed um, um, all of the athletes to their fullest potential. Yeah. Unfortunately, we did not get to see Elisha. Um, complete his event he didn't e he wasn't able to start because of course rules infringement um, has to be kept and Elisha Williams uh, he's not having a, a, a good uh, intercall in the sprints because in the 200 meters when he was uh, about to qualify he had a false start and had to be uh, removed in the preliminaries with a false start in the 200 meters as well so um there's something here for him and his coaching staff to work on elisha williams having the fall start as well in the 200 meters in the preliminaries and uh, getting to the finals of the 100 and suffering the same fate and uh, he would have been some real competition for rikael telemac because uh, telemac knew he was always on his heels i think he defeated telemac in the national champs as correct, well correct correct so um you know um unfortunate but uh, don't hang your head down for too long. Get on up, get on out, and let's do it all over again. Yep, and maybe um, it's something that these coaches would have to um, um, take into consideration. Once beaten, second time, a, a problem. So I I'm sure his coaches will be paying attention to him and to working with him on his start so that such infringement infringements don't take place again because at the end of the day, you don't train this hard get to this point and not able to participate. So we have Sass out front. It, it's either Irona Cape or Leona Williams. Um, Sass has taken a really big lead at this time. If she can hold this form um, going forward, then I think that she is in for a good result. Um, let's hope that she understands her body well so she can pace herself in a suitably man suitable manner. I, I, I think that is what she has to be careful about. Where am I in terms of fitness and form that I can go out front and be the front runner, or should I wait for the pack? Oh, well, she that's more than a thought if you're asking me. Because when you're so far out, it means as though it seems as though you would have already made up your mind. So she has made up her mind that she's gone already. Um, doesn't look too, too jaded, too bothered, but um, still early days in this uh, 3000, the girls 3000. And the qualifying time for um, Karifta for this is 10.50. So she has a lot of work to do. Okay. 
So you're not missing anything. As a matter of fact, you have the 3,000 meters here taking place at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. It's Intercall 2023. And you have the athlete from SAS um, picking up the lead and going out front, um, followed by a, a, a first pack of about six athletes, followed by two athletes and then another big pack behind. But she's making the front running and hopefully she can keep it up and hopefully increase her speed. Um, we really are happy to see that she's unafraid to go out front and to lead. Um, so that's the athlete from SAS and she has about a 100 meter lead over the rest of the, the pack and they recognize something dangerous is happening. So you can see the effort now of the second two athletes, the group of two, um, then another group and then another group. So we are seeing them all stringing out now. The pressure of the front running has taken its toll on the field and they have stretched out all the way around the track, Jason. That's what front running does. It stretches the track apart. And let's see what happens from here. Yeah, well, let's see what happens from here. That is the right, that, that right phrase, of course. Uh, the, the gap being closed significantly so. And uh, some tiring taking place. But what is even more important to note is that um, Boca Secondary School, the athlete from Boca Secondary School, I'm going to get her name in just a little bit because she was uh, Aliana Brown, I think it is. Yes, Annalisa Brown. Annalisa Brown from Boca Secondary School. She's a very good long-distance runner. Now she's uh, in the lead. She's wearing 0357. Aliana Brown, look out for her. She did, in fact, mention that she's got the 3,000 and she was looking forward to it. So with her being in this pack, um, she's got some, some potential and she could be uh, the, the person to do to some look damage for. here. Well, yes, she's yes. out in front, Alalisa Brown. So it's good to see the Boca Secondary School <laughs> um, deciding that it's time to be serious about business and uh, Annalisa Brown has done well thus far Jason I think she won the 1500 meters in her category she really ended up in a, a wonderful finish with the way she finished her race and if she still has more energy in her then we believe that Annalisa Brown can come back in the 3000 meters and do well her other running mate more than likely is um, Siraya Phillip um, so it's Annalisa Brown and Siraya Phillip of the Boca Secondary School taking up the front running, followed by the athlete from the St. Joseph's Convent, St. George, who has also done well in the distance races. She has also done well, and I, I think um, she is deciding that she will stay as, much, as close as possible to the athletes from Boca Secondary School. So it's either Cassidy Ferry of St. Joseph's Convent, St. George, or Amir Samuel, St. Joseph's Convent, St. George. All right. While well, that is happening, Davis Adams, um, we're also going to zero in a little bit. We're waiting on Sherry Ann Noel to come back at us because Sherry Ann is on the ground and uh, you know, getting the reactions of uh, folks, getting the reactions of uh, patrons on the ground. So we're going to wait to hear what Sherry Ann Noel has in store for us. So sherry -Ann, if you are listening out there, sherry -Ann, uh, feel free to come back at us anytime with uh, some more of those biting interviews, and uh, we're right here waiting for you. So Annalisa Brown is chipping nicely, slowly, and uh, holding on to front. Doesn't look jaded, doesn't look bothered, doesn't look flustered. And she's in total control of her race. I think we need to pay attention to how they're moving the arms and how they're lifting. Um, if you pay attention to the lift and the movement of arms, it would tell a good story as to how comfortable they are. And so as when the camera brings them in closer, then we can say something about the running. Um, and you can see the arms are moving pretty well. You could, they, keeping it very conservative. Um, the legs are also moving. You can see the knees. So it means that they are pretty comfortable. And that's what I'm enjoying at this time.
So don't be confused with what you're seeing on your screen because uh, a couple of athletes are in full perspective of being lapped. But uh, that's the leader right there wearing 0357 Annalisa Brown. She has uh, clearly enacted a little bit more purpose now. She understands the, the timing, the location and what is required so she's activated purposeful mood turned it up just a little bit now you can see the stretch the stretch and the purpose there goes annalisa brown now she's starting to create separation and daylight She's getting a challenge from St. Joseph's Convent. But Annalisa Brown has switched gears. <laughs> she has switched gears. It's not a compression gear anymore. This is speed gear now. She's gone into third and fourth. She's gone into third and fourth. She will end in, in fifth probably. But she is uh, coming all the way through. Annalisa Brown creates a separation. And pulls it back a little bit and says, Thank you very much. I am home. I am comfortable. And... Uh, the gold medal she will live with 12.19 that's the flash 12.19 Annalisa Brown a good run take a bow oh man I mean I'm so enamored and and and, and I'm, I'm impressed with how Annalisa has run her race there was purpose you could see she's fit and she fits the mode of a distance runner and she powered her the last 250 meters home Credit to the athlete from the St. Joseph's Convent, St. George. She did not give in to Annalisa, but she had to settle for second. It was a brilliant run by both athletes, the three athletes. Annalisa, her friend, Siraya Phillip from Boca Secondary School, and the athlete from St. Joseph's Convent, St. George, taking the medals home. Um, medals and medals home. Gold, silver, and bronze. Well, we're not sure if it is... Um because they've got we've got two athletes here from St. Joseph's Convent. We've got two athletes from St. Joseph's Convent, Grenville. Easily going to figure out which one of them, but the goal in this one goes to Annalisa Brown. So she gets gold in the 1500, gold in the 3000, and a very good intercall 2023 for Annalisa Brown. And a good time. Um, 12 plus is not a time to sniff at. Um, she did well. And imagine she would have run the 1500 meters already. Um, well done to Annalisa. I mean, I mean Boca must be proud. Her family must be proud. And of course, all her friends and supporters must be proud of Annalisa. She's carrying the flag of Boca Secondary really, really well. And I'm sure that the sponsors of Boca Secondary, that is um, Classic Lighting Caribbean, they must be proud that the, the, the investment that they've made into the students at Boca Secondary School is paying fruit. Well done, well done, well done. All right, well, we're inching closer and closer to some more fireworks we're heading up to four o'clock it's uh, 20 minutes before four o'clock on this thursday afternoon 20 minutes before four the weekend will start early for a lot of people depending on which school they are supporting in the intercall games the weekend will start early for some correct uh, i'm sure that there would be a motorcade through the streets whether it's up in the big parish or whether it's in the Tantin area or whether it is in St. David, there will be a motorcade. Okay. There will be some fun. Of some sort. So Grenada um, sending forth a very good character team for the, the championships starting on Saturday. And... Uh, no doubt Grenada will be remembered for these Carifta Championships because a lot of the 
athletes, especially in the sprint events, have been doing fairly well when you compare their times, not just here, but to regional talent as well. Correct. So, um, yeah, they've been doing pretty well. So Grenada will, in fact, um, you know, send forward a good contingent. 39.09 for Serana Alexander in the girls under 20. She will be participating in the girls under 20 javelin. She just threw 39.09 without any real competition at all. So um, there's one to look for, character games. Um, Emilio Bishop, our silver medalist in the just concluded boys 100, senior boys 100. He'll be running the 100 meter and the 4 by one He had a blistering start in that 100 meter. He had a kind of a, a Safa Powell kind of start to the 100 meters here and uh, he was asking Telemac a whole lot of questions and not ordinary questions, questions that required some uh, specific answers. Yes. Um, you had to dig deep to respond and Telemac did dig deep to respond and um, uh, kudos to him that he was able to come through. But man, Emilio Blanco um, indeed was, he was brilliant. Um, we spoke about Grenada's participation at Intercall and the success we've had over the years both in the field and on the track and of course much more success in the field events starting all the way back with selwyn smith and coming right through to people like jody placid and um trevor modest and um colin peters to name a few um but grenada has punched if we were to use a boxing term grenada has been punching above its weight in the Caribbean when you come to track and field. And I mean, per capita, we want the smaller countries, Jason. And the fact that we are able to have um, um, Olympic champions, we are able to have world champions, both on the track and on the field, we have been punching above our weight for quite a while. And I think that's what we intend to continue doing. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Another athlete who has done pretty well these championships, Shante Augustine. Shante Augustine really um, doing what's expected of her, no doubt. Shante Augustine, you know, really decent. If you, if you take a look at the history of Shante Augustine in terms of performances, um, at starting at the primary level, of which I am intimately aware, um, Shanti has always been a good athlete. She's always led, she's always performed well. She carried it in, into the secondary school and of course, um, you would have found that that was interrupted by COVID-19 and a couple of injuries. And to see her coming back, it really is a pleasure for me because as a primary school principal, you're always looking forward to seeing these young people um, um, bloom and, 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 and grow and become the best version that they can be of themselves. So Shanti is one that St. George is intimately aware of. Um, and so we look forward to her doing well. But the other athletes that you would have mentioned, Shana. people like Ethan Sam and the others, we also want them to do well because they started, the foundation was the, the competition that they would have had at the primary level. Well, we just wanted to finish up on Shanti before we get to Ethan because Shanti did 58.82 in the 400 meters to win gold and uh, she was not as lucky in the 100 meters uh, she came in in the in the 200 meters sorry she came in second 25.68 in the 200 meters but uh, redeemed herself and uh, did it with a whole lot of zest in the 100 meters shanti augustine coming in and uh, doing the damage in the 100 meter senior girls so good work for Shanti. Yeah, you mentioned Ethan Sam. Ethan Sam too, another high point in these Intercall Championships. Ethan Sam, of course, doing one, two, and three in the one, two, and four. So Ethan Sam, really good. And I'm quite sure his, his dad in particular will be very proud of him. He's uh, from the quiet village of Lamode in St. George. And uh, Ethan Sam... A good young man, good athlete, very focused, steady, doesn't waste much motion, gets the job done, and he has brought the results so far. Yep. And if we were to select another athlete that we have seen doing well, 
Elisha Williams of St. David's Catholic Secondary, um, you see just a, a young man full of, of physical talent and, and potential, fast, strong, um, seems to be humble, and um, has made it after those, all of those years of inactivity in terms of competing at the highest level as a secondary athlete. Um, good to see Elisha Williams is another one that we can pick out who is multidisciplinary in terms of um, what he can do. Javelin, um, 100, 200, 400, 800, they, he can do all of them. So that's wonderful to see. Uh, disappointment for Elisha Williams, both in the 1 and 200 meters of these championships. Boy, it would have been a good showdown to see uh, all of them going together. I mean, um, this 100 meter field was really packed with talent. And uh, Elisha Williams, disappointing uh, for him, had to leave the pack because he danced before the music. Yes, Jason, he did. So we're getting ready for the boys. 5,000 meter open. Three, yes, 5,000 meter open. And again, um, those are races where you see strategy, you see form, you see fitness. You see someone who is prepared and not prepared to take on such grueling races, really grueling. But at the end of the day, it brings out the best in each and every person. I think once you can take part in those races, it says something about your inner fortitude, both physically and mentally. All right, good afternoon to uh, our friends uh, listening and viewing in, I should say, as well. Michael Bascom, good afternoon. And uh, Roald Titus, he's uh, on as well, viewing. A uh, very special afternoon to our friend Andre Jerome. I know that you're there with us, Andre. Uh, thank you so much. I've uh, been receiving your messages. And probably, if you don't mind, I can expand on that. We have a whole diaspora who's listening. Um, to what's happening in Grenada and with the advent of social media and, and it's become so easy to access what's happening. I know we have a tremendous amount of folks in the diaspora who's listening. I can call out at this time um, Pastor Stevenson Worm, who probably for, a, for the first time in a long time is not a wrong to assist in, the, in bringing um, Intercall Championship to Grenada, Karaku, Pitimatic and the diaspora. Hope you're doing well. Um, and all of the others who are listening and paying attention, we are really, really, really glad that you are supporting what's taking place in, this, in, in Grenada. Ah, Pastor Stevenson, well, good afternoon. He was right there with us, right at, the, uh, uh, at our commentary table in spirit. And he was right there at the commentary table from the live feed of our regional cricket championship. And I uh, want to say a very special thanks to him as well because... Um, he was right there encouraging us along. So they're off. That's the start of the boys' 5,000. The boys' 5,000 meters open. And uh, this race is going to be a long one. Junior Murray, I know you're there too. You're representing and supporting your alma mater, the Grenada Boys Secondary School. Junior Murray, good afternoon. He's one of those viewing in as well. Uh, didn't do much athletics, but represented his school and his country and the region. So uh, congratulations to you, my friend, and uh, thank you so much for being a part of our broadcast. So all of you out in the diaspora, whether you're in Brooklyn, you're in the UK, you're in Canada, um, wherever you are, nice having you paying attention to what's taking place at Intercall 2023. Um, hope you can uh, continue to invest in Grenada and, and, and support um, what's happening so that at the end of the day, um, Grenada gets the, the publicity that it, it, it has worked for um, um, with the talent that it has. And we continue to show ourselves, I mean, competing on the international stage in all events. Track, field, pool, ring, wherever those, those are, we want to be able to get the best from our boys and girls. One of the things I would love to see in uh, the next year or so is the return of a full form, the return to full form by Tegon Peterkin because this young man has really came through from the sub-junior level and has been a consistent and consummate professional and superstar 
and uh, injuries uh, sidelined him for a little bit and about a year and a half he was out and of course having to prepare for CXC examinations he did pretty well there too and uh, now he's back and on his way up and every event that he competes in he's a threat even with his injury so when you have um, Daniel and Telemac and Peter Kin and uh, Emilio Blanco Bishop and Elisha Williams and all these guys in full form in good peak operating that for me would be an awesome moment because I know they've got the capability to push each other and something special could come out of it. I am, I am on board with that um, um, comment, um, Jason. I mean, when we get the best competing against the best, and of course, at the end of the day, Grenada will benefit, and the athletes will benefit, and the families will benefit. That's what we want anyhow. But we see that athlete from, and actually we need to pay attention to that athlete out front. He is from the Grenada Christian Academy. I think he won the... 1500 meters and probably the 800 meters. Um, he's um, Keith Charles and um, he's come back to do the longer distance, the 5000 meters. And um, again, he's somebody to look at here, um, Jason, in terms of who, is, who could win this event. He might be the Iron Man of the field because Keith Charles has shown himself to be doing extremely well. All right, well, Keith Charles. Uh good strong young man he's as you say he's got a whole lot of medals already and uh, let's see where he goes from there but um but this looks as if it's going to be a competitive race there is a big group up front of four five athletes and they're all looking pretty comfortable um then there's a big gap between them and the rest of the pack um of course keith is leading but the athlete from Boca Secondary, he won the junior, I think, the senior, um, 1,500 meters. Um, that athlete from Boca Secondary, now he is <laughs> running with Keith Charles. This is going to make a tremendous sight and a yeah. tremendous finish. And uh, if you remember well, he was able to outkick his, um, his competitor with about 100 meters to go, and he did not let up right through to the end. So if Keith has anything called strategy in him, he should um, try to put it in place now and stretch him out so that kick will not happen at the end of the race because he was really, really strong when he kicked to the end. Oh, you're probably speaking of Nicholas Fedrick. Nicholas Fedrick, I think that's his name outside there with Keith Charles. And uh, yeah, two powerful athletes there, no separation. No separation just yet. There's a ding-dong battle taking place. And we are monitoring it. Look out also for uh, Yazid Richardson of McDonald College. Yazid Richardson of McDonald College is in there. And uh, Delaney Patrice of Happy Hill Secondary School. Yep. So, yes, you're correct about the athlete from um, Boca Secondary, Frederick. Um, he won the Oat Senior Boys 1500 meters. And... Um, Kit Charles won the junior boys 1500 meters. So it's a, it's a battle of the age groups in this uh, event for both. Um, of course, Yazid, yes, he, he looked well, but I said Keith outkicked them all coming to the end, as well as Frederick outkicked his opponent coming to the end with about 100 plus meters to go, and he did not let up one single bit. Keith Charles continues to be out front. Now we are going to get into the meat of the matter in this lap because we're going to start to see some separation. Obviously, when the, when the pack is this close, somebody's usu somebody usually waits until somewhere about the halfway mark and uh, says, OK, now let's start to separate the men from the boys. Let's see, is it going to be Keith Charles or is it going to be Frederick? But somebody's going to make a move here. I'm predicting this. Somebody's going to make a move here. Johnita Noel of the... St. Davis Catholic Secondary and uh, Robinho Philip of St. Davis Catholic Secondary is also there. So Frederick has decided to make the move. Frederick has decided to make the move on Keith Charles. Keith Charles, this is his second trip around trying to 
get a glass of water, but uh, <laughs> not much luck just yet. So 12 and a half, it's the boy, 3,000, boys, 5,000 meters. Well, one program says 3,000. The one we've got in front of us now says uh, 5,000. So um, whether it's three or five, we will know. It seems as though it's three because what's coming up on, on the monitor in front of us yeah. to our right now says three. So we're going to ignore what we have written here. So it's actually the three. We've just been confirmed that it is the boys 3000 mm -hmm. so look for some kind of action here now charles has moved back into the lead he rested for fourth allowed some to go through uh, is it that they went through a little faster or is it that he just maintained his pace i think what happened when he did not get the water break he sort of um, fell back into the pack but he was leading. So now that he's feeling comfortable again, he's taking different running. Um, so he's looking pretty good. Um, he's looking pretty strong. The admin from St. David's Catholic has now um, decided that he wanted to get ahead of the pack and, and ensure that he's not in trouble because that race can create lots of problems with, with spiking when it is extremely close. So it might be Noel. It might be Noel. Could very well be Noel. We don't have the numbers in front of us. Charles has moved back. Frederick has moved back. Charles and Frederick inside somewhere third, fourth, maybe fourth, fifth. St. David's Catholic Secondary putting some elasticity in the competition here, stretching things out just a little bit. And Keith Charles has moved from fifth back up into second. He's uh, turned the gear a little bit. This looks like EJ George. George from the St. David's Catholic Secondary still applying the elastic. <laughs> a little more. A, l a lot more elastic now from uh, George. George has created a, a whole lot of daylight. And uh, daylight will see him to the finish line. So congratulations to EJ George. And uh, he has done the damage. Frederick second and uh, Charles third mm. but a measured run from EJ George he was never in the mix at all I mean he was just hovering there in the top five just waiting for for his time and he picked his poison well yeah I, I think what he did he, he he recognized the competition he realized that maybe the weather was pretty um, biting out there and he took it easy for quite the first couple laps and then decided to pull out the stops, which he did and did extremely well. As a matter of fact, I think he's the winner of the 1500 meters. Um, yes, he was the winner also of the 1500 meters. So how we could have overlooked EJ George, I think he might be upset with us, Jason. But yes, he would have done extremely well already. So yeah. EJ has come back and won the 3,000 meters. Well, that's good news for the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School and the boys' division because that gives them a, a move up the ladder because Presentation Brothers College had no one in that event and they're trying to sneak back into third position because they're currently dancing in fourth. They're sneaking back up into third position, I'm quite sure. So that's going to put them in a, in a, in a better position yep. here now. Yeah, because 12 points for the individual events. So it brings them really, really close to Presentation Brothers College. And so it seems as if this evening's um, um, really events will determine quite a lot of positions. Yeah, well, 15 points separated them, so they have moved closer to Presentation College, now three points away. So um, 
as we continue to say school two, four schools battling for two major slots and uh, we are down to what we call the heart beat the palpitations will happen here now it's time for the relay good afternoon to our friend junior george junior george and uh, the entire crew in brooklyn they're, they're, they're part of the intercall broadcast good afternoon to my good friend junior yep that's nice junior hope you are taking in the sights and songs and enjoying the competition that's taking place So this takes us to the end of the boys' 3,000 meters run. E.J. George, St. David's Catholic Secondary School in a time of 9.52.98 seconds. 9 minutes, 52.98 seconds. E.J. George. Well, the track is cleared. And very soon you will see the lane markers coming out. You're going to see the blocks, the starting blocks coming out. And then we are going to get ready for the 4 by 100 meter relays. We're going to start that off with the sub junior girls, the 4 by 100 meter sub junior girls relay. All right, so when Davis Adams will step out for a minute, he will leave us, and then I'll be joined by Bernard and Twine. Bernard and Twine itching to get through here now because this is where the action is. Check your heartbeat, Bernard, because we're getting ready to go into the relays. and it's end game time hmm. every relay now has brought us to the point where we're literally at a game seven this is what it's at we're at game yep. seven we've activated game seven mood there's also one relay which we've got to look for which is the republic bank teams four by 100 meters relay the republic bank teams four by 100 meter relay the sponsors relay the head office will be their relay squad, their squad will be decked off in red. The Melville Street branch will be in blue. The Grenville and Halifax slash Halifax Street branch will be in teal and purple, representing Republic House. Um, let's see what sort of names that we've got here because I'm quite sure that there will be some former athletes of some sort. Uh, we've also got the Republic Bank team's 60-meter dash, senior supervisors, walking race. <laughs> Don't understand why the supervisors need to be in a walking race. Supervisors need to run. Uh, Bernadine Bain, Sean Phillip. Sean Phillip, my good friend, is here in this race. If he walks, our friendship would be fractured. And uh, Michelle Noel. So the lane markers are out. The starting blocks out. We're going to be getting ready for the relays. Bernard, um, quickly, your assessment of what you've seen in the 100-meter sprints from top to bottom. Absolutely engaging. And... Uh, True to form, actually. True to form in, in all the races. Uh, with m the exception of the seniors where we had that unfortunate, and you, you have to stress on the word unfortunate here, unfortunate disqualification for false start by the young man from St. Davis Catholic Secondary School. Lightning struck twice. Unfortunately, in the same place. In the same place, to the same guy. Uh, and he's a senior athlete at that, so you're not sure if he's going to be, going to be back for another intercourse. He just might be, but, I'm, but we are not sure. 
All right, well, representing head office in the 4 by 100 meter sponsors relay, uh, Doran Mitchell, Trent Thomas, Joel Kalist, and Alion Wells. That's the four. Melville Street will be represented by Casey Batiste, Teron Lendor, Kenson Thomas, Naomi Kreft. Grenville Street and Halifax Street branches will be represented by Doyle Douglas, Rashid Daniel, Damian Noel, and uh, Rena Ogilvy. And uh, Grand Dance, Republic House, Fitzroy Robinson, Kamal Tellisford, Akil Passe, and uh, Aliyah Sandy. Oh, it is a big shout out to the people who pay the bills. As the main sponsors, Republic Bank, they are showcasing their athletic skills or something that seems to ref look like athletic skills uh, in uh, the relay for the staff. I will not even go there and echo that because <laughs> I worked for three days and I will not let you or anyone else infringe on my payments. Uh, <laughs> in the walking race, the senior supervisor's walking race, Bernadine Bain, Michelle Noel. I'm not going to call the name of my good friend Sean Phillip because I don't think he should be in a walking race. He is a, a fit young man, agile young man. And if anything at all, he should be in the 4x100 meter relay. So I'm not going to call the name Sean Phillip. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a good one, Jason. That's a good one. Uh, so the afternoon session, we saw the conclusion of the of the 100 meters sub junior girls, the sub junior boys, uh, the junior girls, junior boys, senior girls, senior boys, and this is all like a precursor to the final events. The four by 100 meters would be up shortly and if you think there was some excitement and there was some suspense in the 100 meters wait for the 4 by 100 meters there's some events i don't do sitting there's some events when i'm commentating i've got to stand up so the camera will not be activated in the announcer's commentary booth so you wouldn't know but what I can tell you is that if you're at home or if you're on the job, and uh, I know no work will be taking place once you're viewing Intercall, and if you're at home, well then, you're at home. Do as you please. But electrifying, exciting, exhilarating, breathtaking, any adjective that you can find that would uh, refer directly to excessive palpitations, here we are. Absolutely. The 4 by 100 meter relays. And not just in the booth here, Jason. Just look across. Look at the stands. Look at that sea of young people in the bleachers, as we call it. Absolutely beautiful picture that's painted here. Well, when the relays are running, what you will see would be uh, a reflection, a mirror of tidal waves, because it will be a whole lot of vertical movement jumping a lot of vertical movement and it will be nothing short of a tidal waves coming in because that entire cross section will be in a ray absolutely and it's the colors it's the noise it's the, it's the sound it's the pecan it's this strutton uh, this is what makes up the full package of Intercall. So Intercall, yeah. Intercall Games 2023, the 50-50 edition coming to a close. A lot of emphasis was placed on these games. And uh, Bernard uh, Antoine, uh, because of the emphasis that was placed on these games, the return of the full three-day format to the championship. Uh, quickly, your assessment of it? I, I think it's a good idea. I think it's a good idea because you do not want to have stress athletes. These are... And I think the times that we have been seeing is a reflection on the fact that athletes had sufficient time to recover. There was still um, here and there, at least at the end of races, there were collapses and that kind of thing. But it really has, has a lot to do with diet and, and the sufficiency of the minerals and the being hydrated. And that the coaches must see to. But the three days, 
I think it's a good idea that should be continued. Ah, well, if it is one thing that you've got to make sure and have is uh, make sure that you, you're replacing your electrolytes. Absolutely. And uh, if the athletes would have done that, it would have brought them to, to this point. So let's see how that's going to play out this afternoon. Uh, very quickly, Jason, maybe we can go through the lineup for the relays. Yeah, well, there's a whole lot of lineups to go through. The house announcer is going to aid us there. But uh, yes, you're right. What we can do is just uh, skim it on the surface because yeah, the teams. there's a whole lot of line. Yeah, um, this one in the 4x100 meter sub junior girls. We've uh, got uh, Happy Hill Secondary School, Hillsborough Secondary School, that is in lane one. St. Joseph's Convent, St. George in two, Bishop's College in lane three, Anglican High School in four, St. David's Catholic Secondary in five, McDonald College in six, Boca Secondary in seven, and uh, St. Mark's Secondary School in eight. And that's the lineup for the girls, four by 100 meters sub junior. Uh, they would have come through the preliminaries and are uh, all now set the set the stage for a uh, rather interesting and exciting 4 by 100 meters. 49.24 and a record established in 2016 by the Anglican High School. Record of 49.24 2016 Anglican High School. The Anglican High School has got a team here of a racial Etienne, Rihanna Thomas, Jan Gilbert, and uh, Denia Modest. One through four. If this team can do anything reminiscent of 2016, then we will have another record on our hands. But uh, to come into this one, they brought the stick around in 51.94. Now, that's a long way off the record because the record stands at 49.24. And uh, they got the stick around in 51.94. They were the fastest qualifiers. But they're going to be running out of lane 4, 51.94. They need to do a whole lot better than that if they want to get to this 2016 record. The main competition, seemingly on paper, it would be in lane five, St. Davis Catholic Secondary School, if, if, who ran 52.10 in the preliminaries. Well, so St. Davis Catholic Secondary School in lane five and Anglican High School in four. Well, the track is set and ready. Not sure where we're going to go first because uh, we've got the Republic Bank 4x100 meter sponsors relay to come. And we've also got the start of uh, the relays for these championships, starting with the girls 4x1 sub junior. So, no indication yet from uh, the organizers where we're going to start, or which one we're going to start with. But uh, once we start with the sub-junior girls, we're going to go all the way through at least until we get to the, the juniors, maybe. Uh, but uh, just maybe they will go ahead with the sponsors relay. So let's wait and see. In the meantime, what we can do is get you ready. You've got some time. You can probably go get refreshed. What we will do is uh, take a quick commercial break and... Uh, get ourselves ready as well from our end for the relays nothing happening on the track just yet so uh, let's uh, take you to a quick commercial break and then when we come back we come back for relays relays relays
Have your family or friends ever needed cash now? But you are nowhere close to give it to them directly? With the cardless cash feature from Republic Bank Online and your mobile phone, it is hassle-free and convenient to send money to anyone, including yourself, using the Republic mobile app. Simply log into your account, access the cardless feature, enter the amount you want to transfer, and using the access code provided, the cash can be withdrawn instantly from a designated Republic Bank ATM without a card. Republic Bank Cardless Cash is convenient at your fingertips. To learn more about our cardless cash features, visit republicgrenada.com for more details. Special terms and conditions apply. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. Home is easy as one, two, three. Thinking about your new home? Think easy. Think a Republic Bank Home Easy Loan. Think affordable. Think convenience. Think Republic. Home is easy as one, two, three. Republic makes home easy. Wow, that was such a breeze. Own your home with ease. So whether laying that first brick or purchasing an existing home, we've got you covered. Republic Bank will get you those keys hassle-free in no time. Home is easy as one, two, three. Apply for a Home Easy Loan today for a chance to win a cash prize. Getting your new home is easy with Republic Bank. Republic Bank. We're the one for you. Terms and conditions apply. Building or renovating your home or business? Why not use clean, renewable energy? Install solar panels to power your home and office and see your energy costs go down and your savings go up. Using renewable, solar-powered energy protects our environment, reduces our carbon footprint, and slows the devastating impact of climate change. Republic Bank can help to finance construction and renovations that make use of renewable energy. Visit any Republic Bank branch and ask about renewable energy financing options today. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. Have your family or friends ever needed cash now? But you are nowhere close to give it to them directly? With the cardless cash feature from Republic Bank Online and your mobile phone, it is hassle-free and convenient to send money to anyone, including yourself, using the Republic mobile app. Simply log into your account, access the cardless feature, enter the amount you want to transfer, and using the access code provided, the cash can be withdrawn instantly from a designated Republic Bank ATM without a card. Republic Bank Cardless Cash is convenient at your fingertips. To learn more about our cardless cash features, visit republicgrenada.com for more details. Special terms and conditions apply. Republic Bank, we're the one for you.
Amaya Samuel, St. Joseph's Convent, St. George's, and uh, Keith Charles, Grenada Christian Academy. Keith Charles, Grenada Christian Academy. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the current point standing. The current point standing through events through 77 events. On one point, the Grenada Christian Academy. In the girls' division. On three points, Wester Hall Secondary. On five points, Grenada SDA Comprehensive. On seven points, St. Mark Secondary School. On seven and a half points in the girls' division, Westmoreland Secondary School. On 12 points, Wesley College. On 15 points, Granville Secondary School. On 17 points, J.W. Fletcher Catholic Secondary. On 11 points, St. John's Christian Secondary. Sorry, that was position number 11. 42.5 points. In position 10, Happy Hill Secondary School, 45 points. On 59 points, in ninth position, McDonald College. In eighth position, 64 points. Bishop's College in seventh position on 71.5 points, Hillsborough Secondary School in sixth position, 92.5 points, Boca Secondary School in fifth position, St. Andrew's Anglican Secondary. 126.5 points. In fourth position in the girls' division, St. Joseph's Convent Grenville, 133 and a half points. And here is the top three, top three positions. On 152.5 points, make some noise. St. Joseph's Convent, St. George's. Currently in third place. In second position at this time, in the girls' division, the Anglican High School, 181 and a half points. And leading the Republic Bank Intercall Championship 2023, St. David's Catholic Secondary, 291 points. Point standing for the boys' division. Wesley College is on one point. St. Mark Secondary, four points. J.W. Fletcher Catholic, eight points. Westmoreland is on 10 points in the boys' division. Grenville Secondary, 12 points. St. John's Christian Secondary, 14 points. St. Rose Modern Secondary, 15 points. Bishop's College, 17 points. Happy Hill Secondary, 41 points. Westerholt Secondary, is on 48 points in the boys division. Grenada Christian Academy, 49 points, and they're in eighth position. In seventh position, Hillsborough Secondary School, 53 points. In sixth position, McDonald College, 56 points. In fifth position, the boys division, Boca Secondary School, 87 and a half points. In fourth position in the boys' division, anybody from St. David's Catholic Secondary School, 
175 points. Ladies and gentlemen, the top three in the boys' division. Anybody from all Ford Cannons? Third position. Next up, PBC, 176 points. In second position, second position is currently at 266 points. And leading the boys' division, the score, 286 and a half points. Ladies and gentlemen, leading the boys' division, the Grenada Boys Secondary School, 286 and a half points. And we saw some more movements in the points. 293 and a half points. Najiko GBSS. Out front in the boys division. Thank you so much, Neela. 434 in Grenada and the rest of the Eastern Caribbean. Hello, everybody. I'm back with medal presentation. We. Please welcome the Honourable Gentleman Thomas, Member of Parliament for St. Andrew Northwest. Event 65, Girls 3000 Meter Run Open. Bronze medalist, Soraya Phillip. Classic Lighting, Caribbean, Boca Secondary School. 12 minutes, 33.67 seconds. We invite you to go over the correct. Thank you so very much. So you are the bronze medalist indeed. We go now to the silver medalist, Amaya Samuel, SJC St. George's. 12 minutes, 22.43 seconds. And your gold medalist, Annalisa Brown, Classic Lighting Caribbean, Boca Secondary School. 12 minutes, 19.98 seconds. Event 77. Boys 3000 meter run junior. Bronze medalist Keith Charles, Grenada Christian Academy. 10 minutes 03.32 seconds. Silver medalist Nicholas Frederick, Classic Lighting Caribbean, Boca Secondary School. 10 minutes, 64 seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting your gold medalist, E.J. George, St. David's Catholic Secondary. Nine minutes, 52.98 seconds. All right, this is the end of this medal presentation. Thank you very much, Honorable Delma Thomas, Member of Parliament for St. Andrew Northwest. So nice to see you, dear heart. All the very best. And thank you to all the winners.
ladies and gentlemen, we're getting ready for event number 67. The girls four by 100 meter relay sub junior. In lane one, Hillsborough Secondary School. In lane two, St. Joseph's Convent, St. George's. In lane two, in lane three, Bishop's College. In lane four, GTC Anglican High. In lane five, St. David's Catholic Secondary. In lane six, McDonald College. In lane seven, Classic Lighting. Boca Secondary. In lane eight, St. Mark's Secondary. Four by 100 meter, sub junior. All right, so once again, students, on. Are you here in one? as soon as we go down on the marks, all horns, pause, so that the race can go up. Let's, let's, let's go. So once more. All right, well, we are live back at the Grenada National Stadium, and you just heard the introduction from the house announcers getting ready to um, get this one off and running. The stick is about to go around, but more importantly, it has to get around. Ladies and gentlemen, viewers, we are at the premier track and field event in beautiful Spice Country, Grenada. The temperature is dropping, and that's if you're looking at the weather, but not outside there as it relates to the tension. Final checks, making sure everybody is getting the same sound. And we're getting ready for... Relays, sub junior, four by 100 meter girls. Leslie Smith has relayed himself back into the chair. And they are on their marks. Clean start. Everybody is out in this relay. Four by 100 meter sub junior girls, even Steven. But Boca Secondary School has made some stagger up from lane one. Boca Secondary School in the person of uh, Joseph. Joseph hands over to Bernard. Monticia Bernard is gone for Boca Secondary School. She comes to the second handover now. Yep, there in front. Boca Secondary School up. Oh, some difficulty there. We're going to wait and see what happens. She's holding on to it still. She's going. But here we go. It looks like Happy Hill Secondary School coming around. And the inside lane. Ha Anglican High School now making a move. Here comes Anglican High School. Anglican High School going in the person of Denisha Modest. Denia, Denia Modest, that is of the Anglican High School. A good challenge from St. Davis Catholic Secondary coming forward. St. Davis Catholic Secondary. St. Davis Catholic Secondary. Kayla Christopher. E yes. Wow. If that's the sub junior girls, boy, are we going to town this afternoon? Leslie, St. David's Catholic Secondary School holding composure, holding form, and coming through in big time. Coming through in big time for the girls 4x100 meter sub junior relay. Here we go again. Anglican High School seemed to be in good control right here. The handover was good. Modest seemed to have had it under cover. And then. Here we go. Here comes for the St. David's Catholic Secondary School, Kayla Christopher. Well, I thought they were very good runs from Anglican High School on the third leg. And then Kayla Christopher anchoring for St. David's Catholic Secondary really did it for them. Running back to catch the anchor athlete out of Anglican High School. And what an exciting finish to that relay. Yeah, Kayla Christopher was all over Anglican High School like white on rice. Well, I, I thought in the earliest, Boca Secondary did all the running. But on the third leg, we had a blistering run from Anglican High School. But when it got to Kayla Christopher, who was one of the most outstanding sub-junior athletes, she really pulled the curtains down on Anglican High School. Yeah, I mean, Ang uh, Boca Secondary from jump seemed to have had this one under control. But the mix-up on the second handover pulled them back a little bit, reeled them back in a little bit. That costed them a, a, a medal position, really. It even costed them the relay, if you're asking me, because there was some daylight between them. And, and the others, but Boca Secondary kind of messed it up there. But 
give credit where credit is due. The Anglican High School kept form, kept composure, kept on going. But then the real spoiler came. St. David's Catholic, Catholic Secondary Sorry. School. Kayla Christopher doing the damage. And when you're finishing, you've got to finish strong. Indeed, it was a strong finish here. And uh, the excitement is really going to a crescendo now with these exciting relays. And you can see the jubilation and the pandemonium in the stands. A sea of white interspersed with a kaleidoscope of other colors, Jason. And the fans are in for a treat this afternoon as the relays continue to provide that level of excitement. Mm, 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 mm. Well, Intercall Championships, the curtains are coming down. Intercall Championships 2023. The 4x1 Sub Junior Girls, we just had that event. It was one last time around by the Boca Secondary School and they were looking pretty good. But this time they had to make way for the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School who came through good run. Really good run by Kayla Christopher of the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School on the final leg to deliver the goal. Well, it was that close, 51.57 seconds by St. David's and 51.87 uh, by uh, Anglican High School in second, Boca 52.10. So that's how the top three went in this very exciting relay. But St. David's, as we saw throughout, have always had a very balanced team. Anglican High School had it for the taking here up until that very last leg with Kayla Christopher, who has been dominating the sprints for St. David's Catholic Secondary and really showed that at the anchor leg in that relay. It was a good quartet, by the way. Let me tell you this, because uh, Michaela Phillip, she handed over to Kayla Christopher. Uh, Phillip received from uh, Tashauna Bascom. Tashauna Bascom, uh, a decent athlete herself. She ran a decent second leg. Um, Anna Marie Paul, I think it was, that started for them. And it was really even Stephen, but the real separation, the high point of the St. Davis Catholic Secondary Sub-Junior Girls was Kayla Christopher. And uh, she did the right thing. They, 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 they did the right thing, I should say, by allowing her to finish. So because they knew she could have caught just about anyone in her sights. Well, the fans from St. David's, we know that they're always very loud and very active. And they got something really to cheer for from Kayla Christopher as she brought home glory for them. The excitement is going to continue with the boys' 400 meter, 4 by 100 meter relay in the sub-junior category. Uh, that record is held by GBSS. Um, SAS has been dominating those sprint events in the sub-junior category with the likes of uh, Delron John and uh, Christoph Kaliste. Um, we also saw some good performances from Ethan Ogist in the individual events in the sub-junior category. But SAS will be one of the schools that is favored to win the 4x100 meters for the sub-junior boys. All right, well. Championship contention is on the line as well, and uh, GBS is going into the relay with a lead over SAS. It's going to be a difficult undertaking for SAS, I would think, um, considering GBS's strength in the junior boys category. Um, time is going to tell what's going to happen. As you mentioned, and we keep saying, you have to get the stick around the, the park, and you have to do it efficiently as well, and anything can happen in these relay events. 51.57 for the uh, St. Davis Catholic Secondary School, 51.87, as you said, for the Anglican High School. And the Boca Secondary School coming in in third, 52.10. That's the story there. This one is in the record books. One, two, three. Uh, junior, sub-junior, 4x100 meter. Now, sub-junior, 4x1 boys. Let's bring you briefly into some history on this one because this one was won by the St. Rose Modern Secondary in a time of 50.22 seconds last time around, um, 2022, the last uh, time they ran the 4x1. Um, St. John's Christian Secondary placed second that time. Presentation Brothers College placed third. That was in the 2022. Now we come here today. Here's what we're seeing in this event. The sub-junior boys relay, the 4x1 sub-junior boys relay. This is what we have. Is St. Rose Modern Secondary in this one? No, not yet. Not at all. So the defending champs are not here. They didn't make it to this round. Who are the favorites in this one, Leslie? Are you well, calling it GBSS? Do you two, think? The or two Sass? favorites is Sass and GBSS. I will give Sass the edge by virtue of them having two top places in the 100 meters with uh, uh, 
Christoph Kalis and Delron John. We saw Delron John show bolting a lot yesterday with his confidence. Um, GBSS comes in with the fastest time of 48.32. SAS comes in with 48.88. But from what we saw of Delron John yesterday, I'm not sure if you recall that race, where he basically jogged the last leg and uh, commanding the athlete behind him to catch me if you can. And uh, that obviously would have resulted in the time that he returned here. But getting first and second in the 100 meter and uh, first in the 200 meter for SAS, with these two athletes, I think they have an advantage over GBSS. And he was more purposeful today in the 100 meters because he was in blistering form in the 100 meters and he came through in good form. Um, no show bolting today. Today is a day of business and Delron John did well. So with him, as you said, and Christoph Kaliste, um, magic can really happen for the St. Andrews Anglican Secondary School. But with the speed of um, the other athletes being combined and the technical discipline in getting the baton around, anything can happen. And you're correct about that. Um, what this means for SAS is that GBS has come in with the second fastest time, can come second. And uh, the points difference between those two schools, SAS would prefer they winning and GBSS coming lower down because that uh, two or four points difference would not eat away enough on the lead for, for SAS in their contention for championship honors. Yeah, well, relays are calculated, I think, 16 points for first position and uh, 16 points is a lot. And, uh, with two relays and uh, no position from your nearest rival, well, the lane assignments, let's go down for the lane assignments in the 4x1 sub-junior boys. So the difference between first... Now what's the sus? In lane number six, Classic Lighting Caribbean, Westerhall Secondary. In lane number seven, the St. David's Catholic Secondary. And in lane number eight, the Grenada SDA Comprehensive. All right. Again, the record for this event is 48, 45.28 seconds, set in 2017 by Najiko GBSS. All right, so 45.28 set by GBSS is what they're looking at, what they're going after. Let's wait and see how that will play out. The 4 by 100 meter sub-junior boys. St. George's Institute, McDonnell College, PBC, GBSS, SAS, Westerhall Secondary School, St. David's Catholic Secondary, and uh, Grenada SDA Comprehensive, one through eight. The speed is in four, five, six, and three. Three to six is where the speed is at. The technical ability is going to determine this together with the speed. They must come together. It must be a seamless gelling of speed and technical know-how. It's actually the first time I've seen this happening here where the starters are actually calling the athletes in the lanes to indicate whether or not they're hearing him, you know, because of the noise level we have here, Jason. Everyone is on to their mark. Sub-junior boys, four by one. Oh! Whoa, ho, 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 ho! Lane one it is. St. George's Institute. That's what I pick up from my vantage point. Well, here. it's either one or six because both of them went out. Westerhall Secondary went out in six. So it could be Jamari Thompson who had a little too much excitement or Kahim, Ka yeah, Kahim Smith Walters. So let's see who is going to be credited for this. And I'm using the word credited in inverted <laughs> commas. 
So it's, it's obviously between lane one and lane six. Um, from what I'm seeing here, we're going to have another look at it. But lane one, Grenada, uh, the St. George's Institute athlete in lane one. As we look back here again, let's look at one and six at the same time. They're in the set position. It's a, simultaneous. Close one. it's a close one to call it's, here. It's, it's simultaneous, but... I think the elect electronic starters may have to determine that one, and it's not been employed here today. There are no electronic blocks. Being no used. electronic blocks, but Cyril Cox is on the other side. He will have some work to do, because Cyril Cox is uh, going to have to pay some really close attention. The technical abilities of TNR Communications will now come into play. I will tell you that much, because TNR Communications here at TNR Communications, we've got the technical ability to slow this down, to bring it right down to a split second. That much I can tell you. So we will know just a matter of time. It looks like lane one is going to be credited with it because they, it says it's been slowed down even further. We might be seeing something a little slower than what uh, the viewers might be seeing, but uh, Cyril Cox is going to have his work cut out for him here. So he is going to have to send that information down to the officials on the track. Well, some information seems to have been communicated. I see the officials making a move. They are dressed all in blue and it's been given to Westerhall Secondary and he's been DQ'd from the event in lane six. Is he done? That's it. It's That's it. it. So, uh, so Westerhall Secondary has uh, sadly been removed from the event. The rules are the rules. When you come to the party, you've got to wait on the music to do the dancing. They didn't hear the sound of the music, which means you don't dance. They've been called again on your mark. What's going to happen now, Jason, is that they're all going to sit in the block for a while um, in fear of another foul start and another disqualification. And uh, we may see a much slower start now to this second attempt at the 4 by 100 meters for sub junior boys. It happened in the 100 meter senior boys. One false start, and then everybody didn't wait on the gun, they wait to make sure it was the gun. Good, clean start. Everybody's out. GBSS has made up stagger almost immediately. Yep, and it's the David's Catholic Secondary School as well. They come to the first handover now. Still even, Stephen. It looks like it's somewhere in the middle of the pack. GBSS and uh, SAS going at it, but out in front. Wester Hall Secondary School is out, but the this, this Grenada SDA is out in lane 8 and gone. Grenada SDA is gone, but here comes SAS. SAS, GBSS, SAS, GBSS. They come around the bend. The final handover. This is where the fat lady will start to sing. Let's go. GBSS is out and running, but Delron is coming. Delron John of the St. Andrews Anglican Secondary School has turned up the gear. He's turned on the heat. He's gone. He's raised his hand to the finish line in celebration. And the St. Andrews Anglican Secondary School pulls it back. Gold medal in the 4x100 meter sub junior boys. Delron John bringing it home with a little zest at the end. Leslie? Well, I'm happy for Sass. I'm happy that they've won this race. But again, somebody needs to talk to Delron John about the show bolting. A, a flash time of 48.83. It could have been a better time. But again, he has to run through the line. But uh, a great run by Sass here. A nice clean uh, transition here as Delroy receives it. GBS has actually got it moments ahead of Delron John. But the power and strength and speed of Delron John was too much for GBSS here. And he really pulled away from GBSS and winning. And this is what I really didn't like here. With maybe 20 meters to go, Delron John just turned it off and cruised over the finish line. Um, still returning 46.53. The record 45.28 and really deprived Stars of maybe getting closer to that record, I would think. Yeah, well, Delron John, he did the job he was sent out there to do, which was run, run, run. And uh, sometimes when that emotion gets to you and you know what you've been through to get to this point, um, let me tell you something, Leslie. Youth, exuberance, 
and knowing the journey sometimes can result in it. I understand what you're saying. I hear what you're saying, but I'm not going to kill him for it. What I'm going to say is uh, we're going to deal with that after the event, but give the guy his celebration. Sass has done the job they've sent him to do, and they are champions in the 4 by 100 meter sub-junior boys. Good run by Sass, great run by GBSS, um, but they've got to settle for second. And coming in third was McDonald College in 48.43, PBC fourth in 49.50. So the story continues. Sass out in front in the 4 by one sub-junior boys. The bigger picture here, uh, Jason, is that SAS would have eaten away four points on the lead that GBSS has, which is a, a critical thing in the contention for the overall winners of the intercall. But uh, we must bear in mind that the junior boys is where GBSS is expected to win. They broke the record in the preliminaries yesterday, and they are the hot favorites going into that event. Well, speaking to the coach of the GBSS this morning, um, Nick Benjamin, he did in fact say that they've got the records in their sights again because they're going to be looking to smash their own record. He did say that. So uh, let's wait and see how that is going to play out. But uh, he did say that they're looking to smash their own record, which was uh, created yesterday, their personal best. So let's wait and see how that is going to play out. Let's go for the late assignments of the girls 4 by one junior. Lighting Caribbean, Happy Hills Secondary. In lane four, GTC Anderkin High School. In lane five, Classic Lighting Jeep Bishops College. In lane six, St. Joseph's Convent, St. George's. In lane seven, St. Joseph's Convent, Granville. And in lane eight, classic lighting, Westerhall Secondary. And just a reminder, the record for this event, 47, 47.34. And that was set by the girls of the St. Joseph's Convent, Grenville, back in Well, Jason, this is going to be another cracker here. Anglican High School, the favorite here with Shefonia Houston, Emma McIntosh, and she's the sister of uh, McIntosh from PBC. Her other sister, Lauren McIntosh, is in there along with Egypt Benjamin. That quartet of athletes from Anglican High School is going to be extremely difficult to defeat in this event. Oh, well, here we go. This is the Anglican High School, as you rightfully alluded to. Uh, but don't rule out uh, Happy Hill Secondary in this one. There is Alina Dicotto. She's actually the daughter of Leon Dicotto, and we saw her running well in the 100 meters. Alina Dicotto, she'll be there for Happy Hill Secondary along with Ashara Joseph. Talia Sampson, a, a member of the Carifta team, she's there as well. And Makeda Joseph. So it's really a battle between Happy Hill Secondary and Anglican High School. Bishops College is also in there with a chance. But to me, the real running is between lanes three and four. All right, well, uh, Happy Hill Secondary School, Ashra Joseph is in one. Thalia Sampson is in two. Alina Dicotto is on three. And uh, Makeda Joseph will do. That's a formidable quartet from Happy Hill Secondary. And the McIntosh, Lauren McIntosh, and Egypt Benjamin. They on the starters' orders. It's going to be a cracker. Lauren Keep McIntosh is on one. Shafonia Houston is in on two. Egypt Benjamin on three. And uh, Kevonia Allard is on four for the, ha for the Anglican High School. They're off. Everybody's gone. Good. Clean start. Here we go. Even Steven to this point. But here comes the Anglican High School looking to make up some stagger on the Bishop's College. Anglican High School has gone. They made the handover first. Oh, no. That's gone. They're done right there. They've been... Well, they disqualify themselves, literally dropping the battle. There ain't no way they can get back in this one. But let's go down to the track now. Lane... The, the, the third handover. And here we go. This looks like coming out of the middle of the pack. Does that Bishop's look like College. Bishop's College? Bishop's College. Bishop's College. Yes. Bishop's College is coming. Handover. 
who have we got here now? Bishop's College Happy is Hill. in second. Happy Hill Secondary is gone out front. Happy Hill Secondary is gone, but Bishop's College is coming. Here comes St. Joseph's Convent. St. Joseph's Convent is coming. Can't make it. Bishop's College is running. Bishop's College is going to the finish line. Happy Hill Secondary gets there first. One for Happy Hill Secondary. Two for Bishop's College. Three for St. Joseph's Convent, St. George. And that's the story in the girls' 4x100 meter junior relay. Well, Jason, I told you to look out for Happy Hill Secondary with uh, Dicoto and uh, the other Cariff that Italia Samson. Unfortunately, Anglican High School spilled the baton on the first handover. Happy Hill Secondary also had a terrible handover on the first exchange. But uh, Bishop's College, the third contender in this race here, they fumbled the baton badly on the final exchange, allowing Bo uh, Happy Hill Secondary to gain some grounds on them. And then it was Curtin's call, Happy Hill Secondary, maintaining their form and composure and sprinted to the finish line to win for Happy Hill Secondary. Sherry and Noel, wherever you are, take a bow. That's your alma mater doing well. Gary Shortleg Simpson, you've done it. You've been asking for it. You got it here. Happy Hill Secondary doing it for the, the folks in the Northwest. 51.80 for Happy Hill Secondary School. Uh, Bishop's College coming in second, 52 flat. And St. Joseph's Convent, St. George, 52.10. That's the story. A real anticlimax, not having Anglican High School uh, battle with uh, Happy Hill Secondary. Because they were that close with Shafonia Houston. That would have really been the crowning moment for her. She's done so well over these games. And not even getting the battle to her because of a bad transition on the first leg for Anglican High School. Yeah, well, as we said, this is about speed. But equally, it's about tactic and uh, chemistry. Clean handover. Smooth, keeping the composure. Uh, getting the baton around 400 meters. I mean, so these athletes would have gone through rituals after rituals and hours of preparation with that batter transition. But again, on the day with the nerves, the anxiety, the speed, the aura of the environment, the noise and everything, it's a different kettle of fish on competition day. Well, Game 7 is always a Game 7. Game 7 comes with much more than the medal. It comes with the crowd. The anticipation, the excitement. That's what Game 7 does to you. So Without Jason is another very exciting one coming up. That's the Junior Boys 4x100 meters. All right, well, let's go to that now. The Junior Boys 4x100 meters. Um, the start, the house announcer will run through the starters list. Let's go down there now. So, Jason, it's going to be another cracker. Right. Thank you. GBSS is already begin. establishing a new record in the preliminaries of 43.03. SAS comes in with the second best time with 44.63. St. David's Catholic secondary in 46.09. These would be the teams to look out for definitely lanes 4, 5, and 6. All right. Well, Ethan Sam is starting this one. We know what he can do. Tyreek McSween is on second leg. Kimron Maslin is on third. And uh, Quanell Pierre will anchor for the GBSS. A formidable quartet indeed. All. They're off, up, out, and running. Here we go. Wow. This is Ethan Sam. Ethan Sam is gone. He has caught one. He has caught two. GBSS will do the first handover. And GBSS has made the handover. Tyreek McSween is out like a rocket. He's gone into next week. There ain't no way they could catch him once they keep this batter. Here we go. Third leg. Good 
running from the Grenada Boys Secondary School. Kimron Mathlin out around the corner, but here comes Sass. Here comes Sass trying to mount a challenge. Final handover. Here we go. GBSS gone in the person of a Saint. He's gone. Sensia is coming for Sass, but he can't hold Pierre. Pierre will go to the finish line. They're going for the record. The record is a 43.03. They're not going to get it. I don't believe they will, but they do get the gold medal. Good run for the Grenada Boys Secondary School in the junior 4x100 meter relay. Another one for the record books, Leslie Smith. Well, a flash time of 43.13. They did 43.03 in the preliminaries. Um, I thought it was a good all-round performance from GBSS. Um, I was kind of concerned about the structure of the team, having uh, Ethan Sam to start. I thought it might have been better for him to anchor. But whatever they came up with worked well for them. They won comfortably indeed. Kyle Ned had a very good second leg for Sass. But I think on the day, GBSS had a better all-round team. And they won by over 10 meters or so. A very good performance of 43 Point one three seconds. Yeah, very good. I think the GBSS decided, you know what? If we're going to get this, we're going to get this from the jump. So they wanted to use Sam at the start to make sure he picks up at least stagger on one or two and set the pace moving forward, ease the pressure from the handing over of the baton from the other legs. And that, if that was the strategy, guess what? It worked well to their advantage. So GBSS one, SAS two, and St. David's Catholic secondary three, PBC in fourth, 45.40. So in terms of the overall scores, what GBSS has just done is to really neutralize that four points that SAS had extended in the previous uh, uh, relay for the boys. And uh, by virtue of the same positions being exchanged, it's really uh, a, a null effect, so to speak, in terms of the points difference between those two teams. All the right. senior boys is going to be maybe where the difference is going to be made and of course the rest of the points that's coming in from the field and again i'm looking at the bigger picture here now in terms of the championship race all right well not you alone looking at the championship race everyone here the thousands gathered here and the millions watching from around the world <laughs> looking at the championship race We're getting ready now for the senior girls the four by 100 meter Senior girls, we've got that steering us down right now. Lane assignments for that will be, well, house announcer will give us the lane assignments for that coming up in just a little bit. But the St. Joseph's Convent, St. Andrew, Lane 1, St. Joseph's Convent, St. George, Lane 2, Anglican High School is in 3, St. David's will be in 4, McDonald College will be in 5, Happy Hill will be in 6, uh, Hillsborough Secondary in seven and Bishop's College will be in eight. Based on what you see here, Leslie Smith, um, what do you think? Who do you think are the clear favorites in this one, if at all? Well, there is no clear favorite. favorite, but I give the edge to St. Davis Catholic Secondary School. With the likes of uh, Alia Gidhari, a Rihanna Frederick, and a Kamisha Dominic, it's going to be difficult to get past these three to start with. Anglican High School also has a very good team with Kurdi and Philip, Safia Ross, Kiana Bain and Rhea Flanders, and uh, they're going to be challenging St. David's Catholic Secondary. But the likes of a Kamisha Dominic, Rihanna Frederick, and Alia Gidhari, I think um, St. David's, by virtue of that alone, is sending a real threat to the rest of the field. Well, Rihanna Frederick will be starting for the St. David's Catholic Secondary. She will hand over to Alia Gidhari. Gidhari will send it to uh, Denisha Scott on third, and Kamisha Dominic will anchor for the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School. The Anglican High School, as you mentioned, Rhea Flanders is uh, on one. Uh, Kadeen Phillip. Kadeen Phillip will be on the second leg. Uh, Sophia Ross will be on third. And uh, Shafonia Houston will anchor for the Anglican High School. Uh, Happy Hill Secondary School, pay attention to Happy Hill Secondary School because Amaya Sylvester is also on the start. Uh, Aliana Dicotto on two, Serena Charles on three, and uh, Thalia Simpson on four for the Happy Hill Secondary School. Well, I don't know if you notice anything here. Some of the athletes that competed in, this, in the junior relay are back here to run for the schools in the senior relay. So for example, we, we hear Shafonia Houston, she ran moments ago in the juniors. Dakota who ran for Happy Hill where they won gold moments ago, and Alia Sampson, they're back to run again in the senior girls category. This is what tactic and tactic and technique is all about. 
you've got to do what you've got to do within the ambience of the rules to win. So Happy Hill Secondary, um, a good list of sprinters there as well. Making up some serious moves, making some changes and uh, hoping that they too can get in among the medal counts. The record established in 2008 by the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School, 47.08. The fastest qualifying time coming in this evening, uh, 50.10 by the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School. They, they've got the talent to go well below that, especially if they are pushed and pushed hard enough. Well, I can tell you, Kamisha Dominic, her mindset now would be if anybody gets it before me, I'm going to take them down. If I get it before anybody, and nobody catching me. And that's the mindset I'm sure she has for St. Davis Catholic Secondary. They've already won the championship, but no doubt they'll be going all out to look for an impressive time, and maybe even challenge their own record of uh, 47.08 seconds. Their preliminary time is quite some way away from that, mm -hmm. but uh, obviously they'll be looking for a very impressive time in the final 4 by 100 meter senior girls race. The likes of Alia Gidhari and Rihanna Frederick, who have been featured in many of the sprint events, would complement uh, Kemisha Dominic. And then uh, the addition of Caden Fletcher really is just to get the stick around the park, I would think. All right, well, the athletes are now making their way onto the track for the start of the 4 by 100 meter senior girls relay. And uh, right after this, we head back to the Fiery Furnace. The Fiery Furnace in the 4x1 Senior Boys. The so the action continues to heat up just in the stands. The students really having a good time. A lot of green flags have been flown now. A lot of support from GBSS, from the convent girls, I would think. Well, convent is all, also in green and white, so it's uh, maybe a, a double whammy we're getting here as they support both maybe their school and GBSS. We know for a fact Anglican High School always throw their support behind GBSS. They often refer to themselves as the Tantin Bullets. Anglican High School having to settle for second position this year. And the GBSS in contention for defending the championship. They are ahead at the moment and looking seemingly to do so. Well, I am not even going to go that direction until it's all over. I've seen what these intercall championships can produce. And I've learned to stay on the safe side. And if it's one time I'm going to play it safe, which is quite outside, being, me being quite outside of character, <laughs> playing it safe. But I'm going to do that now. <laughs> and that's why I use the word seemingly, um, Jason, because it allows me some breathing space by just saying seemingly. But um, it's really, really an electrifying atmosphere here at the Kiriani James Athletic Stadium. The girls are on the track, Jason, and we'll go trackside to get the lane assignments for the 4x100 meters senior girls. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd also like to take this opportunity to welcome to the Kirani James Athletic Stadium, the Prime Minister of Grenada, Karakou and Piti Martini, Honorable Deacon Mitchell. And just by way of information, the Prime Minister, I am sure he's representing all Ford Cannons. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the lane assignment, the four by 100 meter senior girls. In lane one, St. Joseph's Convent, Granville. In lane two, St. Joseph's Convent, St. George's. In lane three, GTC, Anglican High. In lane four, St. David's Catholic Secondary School. 
in lane, in lane five, McDonald College. In lane six, Classic Lighting Caribbean, Happy Hills Secondary School. In lane seven, Paddy's Enterprise, Hillsborough Secondary. And in lane eight, Classic Lighting, Bishop's College. All right, well, there you have it, the lane assignments for the 4x1 Senior Girls. The 4x1 Senior Girls. It is Intercall 2023, and the story continues to be told right here at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. Shadows lengthening across the field. Flags still fluttering in the breeze. Tense moments around the ground. Tense moments in the homes of all pay-per-view viewers. They've been called to their mark. Out. Gone. Clean start. Sleeping. Oh. Thought it was a clean start, but we saw the athlete in lane number three from the Anglican High School spending some time on the block. So just maybe she realized that something was off. Uh, you don't take those chances, not in an event like this. Or maybe she didn't hear, but you've got to go. When you hear the gun, you've got to go. Let's see what's going to happen now, because clearly there's some infringement here. They were called back. Let's see, we're looking at the replay. Looks like lane two to me, is it? Also saw lane eight going out, so ah, this is going to take some doing here. Let's take it back a little, let's see what happens. Looks like lane two to me, if you look here, either lane two or lane eight. But from my vantage point, it looks more like a lane two infringement. Let's see what Cyril Cox the track referee, the head track referee, who is looking at the video replays. Oh, Cyril Cox has been very busy. So the entire field has been given the green card. So there will be no disqualification. He likes some silence at the start of the event. We're appealing for silence from the students once more. All students, we're asking you for silence. All right, so we're back again on the starter's orders. There's a murmur going around the ground as to what should or should not happen. And while that murmur is going around the ground, the athletes are on bended knees. Out. Gone. Everybody's gone this time. Good start. Clean. Even Stephen coming around. But here comes St. Davis Catholic Secondary School. She's made up the stagger quickly on uh, the McDonald College. St. Davis Catholic Secondary School has gone. Yeah, here we go. More excitement out in front there now in the outer lane between the Hillsborough Secondary School and Bishop's College. But let's go. That clean picture here now will tell a real story. St. Davis Catholic Secondary School on the inside coming out, running in lane four. We've got St. Davis Catholic Secondary School. And here comes the Anglican High School. St. Davis Catholic Secondary and Anglican High School. This one will tell the story right here. Even handover. And here we go. The finish will be photo. St. David's Catholic Secondary, Anglican High School, stride for stride. Anglican High School has the edge. Anglican High School has the edge. St. David's takes it back. And St. David's Catholic goes to the finish line. That was electrifying. Leslie Smith, talk to what me. What a race that was. It was an evenly matched contest. If you look at the last handover, the both teams in contention, they were almost there at the same time. But Anglican High School got off really fast. But Commissioner Dominic was not going to have any of that on the day. And she really had to dig deep and come out chumps to run back to, to get the athlete from Anglican High School. This what was a finish the, that was. This was where the story really began to get interesting. Because right on this handover, you look at it, everything was almost even on the handover. 
But look at the handover from Anglican High School, as smooth as butter, the best you can see. And she was off in a flash on the transition. And uh, a good run back here by St. David's Catholic Secondary School. Really outspeeding and outpowering Anglican High School. But a great finish indeed between those two schools. Kamisha Dominic did the job that she was sent to do. And she is going to be a hero in St. David's Town. Not because they needed the points really to win. But because of how she won in fantastic form. Good form. St. David's Catholic Secondary School. And that's what you do, Jason, when you're a Carifta athlete. You have to be able to eat up track. And I said to you. Kamisha Dominic will have the mindset that if anybody gets that baton before her, she's going to run them down. And if she gets it before them, there's no catching her. And that's exactly what happened there. She decided anybody who was in front of her, she's going to take them, and that's what she did. Well, you hit the nail on the head, Leslie Smith. Thank you for the use of the crystal ball. Keep using it if you can, because if it's one time you're going to need it, it's in the next one. The next one is where we've got all the fireworks. We're heading to the fiery furnace now. Thank you, Jason, for putting me on the spot, man. <laughs> and the fiery furnace is going to tell a story. This is where the noise is going to really turn up, because we have got superstars in this one and when i say superstars i mean superstars for all those of you uh, viewing around the caribbean for all those of you viewing right around the world this is what we have come to really see the four by one senior boys relay the lane assignments will be given in just a little bit and let's go to it right now Boca secondary in lane two Classic lighting, J.W. Fletcher Catholic. In lane three, next up, Credit Union, PBC. In lane four, Najiko GBSS. In lane five, and I beg your indulgence to continue with the lane assignments. In lane five, now what's the sus? In lane six, McDonald College. In lane seven, classic lighting Caribbean, Happy Hills Secondary School. And in lane eight, Wesley College! The record for this event. The time for this one, 41.91 seconds, established back in 2004 by the McDonald College. And Leslie, this is where the true test of speed and technical um, precision comes into play because anything outside of something special happening between three four and five will be an anti-climax really even though so even we will give good credit to whoever wins but all things equal three four and five so from what we saw in the preliminaries gbss comes in with the fastest time 46 point 42 point six five starts with the second best time 43.23 and then we have, I think it was McDonald College with 44.30. So although there is a telemark there for Presentation Brothers College, they really lack the depth to complement the efforts of, of telemark. But what I want to say, am I looking into my crystal ball again, Jason? The winner of this race between GBSS and SAS would be the overall champion of Intercall 2023. You go out on that limb all by your lonesome. I will not join you. That's like standing on the branch of a fig tree. Telemac is on two. Blackett is anchoring for PBC. Peterkin is on three. Blanco is anchoring for GBSS. Andal is on one. Isaac. And they're off. Out. Gone. Here we go. The boys four by 100 meter relay. Even Steven. No real damage being done just yet. Here we go, looking for the first handover. Telemac has it for PBC. He's gone. GBSS is out running. Telemac is picking up some stack now. He's 
coming down. He's going to look to hand over. But here we go. Take on Peter Kidd for GBSS. Ah, I think he has stepped over on the other side. He's come back, but let's see what's happening here. Sass seems to be going. Take on Peter Kidd is coming. Sass is gone in this one. The final hand over. Sass is gone in this one. Sass is gone to the finish line. Brian Isaac is gone, but GBSS is coming. GBSS is coming. Isaac has got to hold on. GBSS is coming, but Isaac holds on for the win. And Sass wins the four by one senior boys. And boy. Do we have some excitement building now? In the commentary position as well, Jason. And I can tell you, Sass, looking into that crystal ball again, I tell you, the winner of this event has a very good chance of winning the overall championship. GBSS really messed up on that handover to take on Peter King. They may get a DQ as well because we did see them infringing on the lane and GBSS had an injury again. Let's look at it again, Leslie, quickly. Take on Peter Kin handover. That was that wasn't the issue that you're discussing. That's not it. Um, there was an injury too for the athlete bringing it to take on Peter Kin. He was really pulling up. He had a muscle problem. But Brian Isaac and Ricky Isaac on Canal Road now would be elated to do that. His son has anchored for SAS and brought it home for them. Oh, what's even more interesting now is that PBC came in third in this one, which will give them the much separation they need between them and the Saint David's Catholic Secondary School fighting for third. But here we've got the results, 43.28, 43.28 for the SAS, GBSS in second at 43.39, and PBC coming in third, 43.83, JW Fletcher Catholic Secondary, 44.80 in fourth. And I do believe that there may be an alteration in the results here, Jason, because we saw something happening there on the exchange between second and third for a particular school, and I'm sure Cyril Cox and his team are having a look at that now as well, well. Uh, and let's see how that unfolds. You're speaking about the handover between uh, from Tyreek McSween to Tegon Peterkin. That's the connection you're talking about right there. So we're going to take a look at it and see how it goes. Because Tyreek Peterkin, it seems as though he had a little injury. So he pulled up and then it sort of shifted Tegon Peterkin to maybe step on the line. That's what we saw with the naked eye. The replay will tell the real story. We're going to get and to that. That's Cyril Cox has been called in to play again. And if that is true from what we saw, it could have implications again for the overall winners of the boys category. Because... The point setting has been so close between those two schools in contention. Any school who has not gotten a point in any of the relays would be at a gross disadvantage to, to, towards the championship honours. But let's see how that unfolds. But again, I love the excitement that these events are creating. Um, the SAS GBSS contention here, PBC, uh, St. David's Catholic Secondary. But I saw a very good run back from PBC here in, on, the on the final leg. So too was GBSS. Considering what happened on the, the exchange, um, Tegan Peter King had a very, very impressive run on the third leg. Well, Antoine Blackett for PBC, he's no stranger to speed and, and zest. And he did, in fact, run back really good. A good run back for Antoine, from Antoine Blackett for PBC to bring them in third. And as you rightfully said, Tegan Peter King, I, I always refer to him as do not... Uh, underestimate the heart of a champion even though he got it with a slight disadvantage he really fought his way back so the story is being assessed and Cyril Cox has got more work to do every really that has gone to this point Cyril Cox has gotten involved so folks the excitement again heightens here it's a very electrifying atmosphere if you don't have your insulation on you might just be electrocuted here. And that's just how it is here at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. That's what Intercall brings out. It brings out the best in the athletes, the best in the spectators, the best in the officials, and excitement, undeniable, the best, the, 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 the superior junior track and field meet in the sub-region. And uh, kudos to the organizers, the sponsors, our corporate sponsor here, Republic Bank, and everybody who has contributed to this very exciting and uh, high standard event. Well, St. David's Catholic Secondary has started raising their flags even higher now because they know that um, they've got something settled in the girls' division. They know that for sure. As it relates to the boys' category, well, they're currently sitting in fourth position, but we've still got to wait and see how that is going to pan out because we've got some results to add to the scores. There's also some field events that were going on. I'm not sure if those scores have been tallied uh, before the relay started. But we see a cross-section of the SAS supporters here. A noticeable face at Donald Noel. Would have taken some time off from work today just to be here. 
I saw earlier on the Shelley Waldrums and the Dwights and so on for the GBSS. They always say Justin Hazard and company. And I'm sure everybody's nervous in the stands as to what the final outcome would be in the boys' category. To all those of you viewing the people view broadcast, I know you've got your alma mater at heart. And uh, those of you especially in the diaspora viewing, good afternoon to you. I know you would have loved to be down here in this current 27-degree uh, Celsius weather. But um, guess what? We will enjoy it for you and we will also send you the fantastic photos that you're seeing, the flags fluttering in the breeze, a good uh, view of the southern part of the island. This, that view you're seeing there, that mountain range, basically is looking at the Belmont Springs area and uh, coming across the city harbour. Well, there is no cruise ship in the harbour today, Not to, today to add to this, the, the aura and the, the picturesque nature of the island. But you wouldn't want a better picture than what you're seeing now. Uh, an awesome track, well, a track that has been listed as probably one of the fastest tracks within the region. And a uh, good way to... Uh, good shot. Also, the Nawasa crew is also Nawasa here, you know, they one of the corporate sponsors. They've been, they've been supporting the St. Andrews Anglican Secondary School. And that's the general manager there, Mr. Husbands, along with the corporate supervisor, uh, Jamila Lewis. And it uh, looks as though they have some, the, the legal advisor is also part of the team. And we see former minister from CARICOM, P.T. Martinic, she's also there. Kendra Maturin Stewart, she has been here for all three days with the Nawasa team. And. Uh, there's some excitement in the commentary booth as well. We all have feet as well, Jason. The chair is a hot seat at the moment. <laughs> oh, if you can sit, if you can sit in an atmosphere like this, then it means that you cannot even walk. We have a points update that we'd want to share with you. And uh, that would be after event number 77. We're not going to go through the entire listing, but we'll do only maybe the top four because third and fourth has some um, uh, competition there as well. Jason, you do the girls, I do the boys. Okay, Jason, I've given way to me. So let's go through with the girls first. In fourth position, St. Joseph Convent Grenville on 134 and a half points. In third position, St. Joseph Convent St. George, 163 and a half points. In second position, Anglican High School on 205 and a half points. And St. David's Catholic Secondary already crowned the champions in 2023 in the girls category on 323 points. In the boys' in the bo division, Boca Secondary School, 90 and a half points. St. David's Catholic Secondary in fourth position, 195. But get this, hear the story now. PBC is only one point ahead in third position on 196. Let's move up to second place now. 310 points, the St. Andrews Anglican Secondary School. And 333 and a half points, the Grenada Boys Secondary School. So the serious ding-dong battle has now shifted to the third and fourth position, with PBC being one point ahead of the St. Dave's Catholic Secondary School. The GBSS, they're about 23 and a half points away from SAS, so they're extending their cushion but it's not a very soft cushion. There's, there's some cardboard in that cushion. And so they want to make sure it's softened as they continue into the afternoon with just one event remaining. The four by 400 meters. Thank you so very much, Kerry. We'll return for the boys uh, point standing while. So the we Grenada Boys Secondary Jason. School out in front with 333 points and the St. Andrew's Anglican Secondary School SAS and the Boys Division 310. PBC on 196 and the St. David's Catholic Secondary on 195. Medal presentation coming up. We're going to go down on the field, get the medal presentation, use the opportunity here to sip uh, some water. Refresh ourselves, put the furniture back together, and get ready for the 4x4. Four four. And I'm quite sure that the furniture will be disturbed again by the time we get to the 4x4. Four four. Let's go down to the medal ceremony.
Event six, boys, long jump senior. Bronze medalist, Desmond Campbell. Paddy's Enterprise, Hillsborough Secondary, 6.25 meters. Silver medalist, Kazim Collings. Classic Lighting Caribbean, Westerhall Secondary, 6.27 meters. And your gold medalist, Elisha Williams, St. David's Catholic Secondary, 7.16 meters. Event 67, girls four by 100 meter relay, sub junior. Bronze medalist. Classic Lighting Caribbean Boca Secondary, 52.10 seconds. Silver medalist, GTC Anglican High, 51.87 seconds. And your gold medalist, St. David's Catholic Secondary, 51.57 seconds. Event 68. Boys, four by 100 meter relay sub junior. Bronze medalist, McDonald College. 48.43 seconds. Silver medalist, Najakor GBSS. 47.48 seconds. And your gold medalist, Nawasa Sass. 46.53 seconds. Event 69, girls four by 100 meter relay, junior. Bronze medalist, McDonald College, 52.80 seconds. Silver medalist, SJC St. George's. 52.12 seconds. And your gold medalist, GTC Bishops College, 52 seconds. Event 70. Four by 100 meter relay junior. Bronze medalist, St. David's Catholic Secondary. 44.75 seconds. Silver medalist, Nawasa Sass. 44.32 seconds. And your gold medalist, Nadjakor GBSS. 43.13 A time of 43.13 seconds. Event 71, girls four by 100 meter relay senior. Bronze medalist, SJC St. George's. 49.78 seconds. 
silver medalist, GTC Anglican High. 48.68 seconds. Time now to present to you the gold medalist, St. David's Catholic Secondary. A time of 48.61 seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to, right after the gold medalist receives, of course, what belongs to her, we will end the medal presentation there. Congratulations. We end medal presentation here for now. For now. Thank you very much, Mr. Rohan Alexis, Divisional Manager of Huggins Automotive, a former national 800 meter athlete. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to make a special, I want to say a special congratulations to Elijah Williams from the St. David's Catholic Secondary School. Although he was disqualified in the 1 and 200 meters, he came back victorious to get gold in the long jump, senior boys. Congratulations, Elijah. Keep pushing. Never give up. So, good shots there from our drone telling the, the story, the excitement. We heard through the grapevine that uh, the athletes from the St. Andrews Anglican Secondary School has uh, launched a protest uh, coming out of the last event, the 4 by 100 meter senior boys. They've launched a protest because uh, of a mix-up on the handover between uh, Peterkin uh, Peterkin, they're protesting that Peterkin just stepped over. Peterkin was receiving the baton from a Tyreek McSween. And uh, whatever discomfort McSween would have seemed to have had, it uh, sort of uh, lunged uh, Peterkin inadvertently on the line. And um, it has brought a protest into play. In the meantime, there are athletes on the field we're now getting ready for this looks like another long distance event didn't even know that this was on the field this is the 5000 so the, the 5000 the 5000 coming into play now the boys 5000 meters and the reason they have this race at this time, Jason, is to allow for the artists in the 4x4 to get some rest. 
because it might be the same artist doing the 4x1 and 4x4. So this long race allows some rest and recuperation for the 4x4 athletes. All right, well, the announcers, the, the uh, organizers, I should say, are on the ball. So the men's 5,000, the boys' 5,000, really, the boys' 5,000 open. So this is an event that is expected to go for maybe 15 minutes thereabout. GBSS, SAS, and SAS already um, taking the lead in the lead pack here. So there are three athletes in the lead pack. And I'm sure it's a matter of strategy now between SAS and GBSS. I'm only seeing one GBSS, no, two GBSS athletes are there, one currently in third position, the other in fifth position, and SAS at the moment in one and two. Well, SAS, the St. Andrews Anglican Secondary School, understanding clearly the, the position and, and the, the dynamics involved now moving into uh, the final events of the championships, understanding that tactic is going to play a really big role in whether they can dethrone the Grenada Boys Secondary School or not. And the Grenada Boys Secondary School themselves will understand that they've got a job to do. And uh, we know how they feel about losing. So once again, it seems as though the trophy for the boys' division will come down to two powerhouses, the St. Andrews Anglican Secondary School and the Grenada Boys Secondary School. What is interesting to note here and what is good is that uh, still we're seeing some good uh, competition and uh, some good um, overall performances from Presentation College and the St. David's Catholic Secondary School and Boca Secondary School who've done really well in these championships, particularly in the girls' division. But right now they're sitting in fourth, in fifth, sorry, in the boys' division or somewhere thereabouts. So Boca Secondary School, they've done pretty well up to this point. Well, two schools that have impressed me, Jason, um, um, coming out of the group of schools of the, what I want to call the lesser known schools are Boca Secondary and Happy Hill Secondary. We saw Happy Hill Secondary winning one of the relays in the, in the junior girls category and uh, Boca continued to impress with Chandler and several of the other athletes. And uh, these two schools, I think, really has risen to the, the occasion on Intercol 2023. I think the difference between the, the Boca Secondary School and the other three schools ahead of them, and I'm speaking here now particularly about the uh, St. Davis Catholic Secondary, PBC, and, uh, well, basically those two, St. Davis Catholic and PBC, is that Boca did not have a whole lot of athletes participating in the field events. They've got to start working on getting some athletes to participate in the field events, and they're going to pick up some points here and there, and that's going to augur well for them because most of the points that they collected, the Boca Secondary School, in both male and female, they did it on the track, especially in the long-distance events. Well, the race in progress, the 5,000 meters open. Two athletes from SAS continue to lead this event. Um, we don't have the team list or the competitors list here, but I can tell you the athlete in the white trousers for SAS, he's the one that would have won the 1500 meters at SAS Sports. And uh, the two of them going stride by stride, the two SAS athletes, they must have discussed some strategy. A beautiful drone shot here from TNR Communications. And uh, we have just taken it up one notch with TNR Communications. There they go, the two athletes from SAS. And uh, nicely perched behind them is the athlete from the Grenada Boys Secondary School. A lot must be going through the minds of those athletes. That's the lead pack there for you. And then we have, it looks like, Cadet from the Grenville Secondary School who is currently in the fourth position. Yep. These points are very valuable points in terms of the championship race between GBSS and SAS. And uh, these two schools are fully aware of that. And it's going to tell a lot on the determination, the grit, the intestinal fortitude and the hunger for victory. All that would come into sharp focus in those remaining events. Well, pride is a serious thing, especially when youth and sport is involved. You do what you have to do within the ambits of the game to win. Strategy plays a major role. Talent, of course, is uh, more than significant. But how you apply that talent and the strategy used to get the best of that talent makes the difference. More excitement here, more tension between athletes, between fans, between alma mater, supporters, past pupils, it's all over. 
is all over the place. It's here at the National Stadium, it's in your living rooms, in your workplaces, throughout the region, throughout the diaspora. Intercall Games 2023, living up to expectations and creating that atmosphere as the athlete from the Boca Secondary School, it seems here, or the Christian Academy, was almost lapped on that occasion, just avoiding it for a moment, I would think. But well, they're going to catch up with him now. Really trying to avoid that lap. But the two athletes from SAS uh, moving away from GBSS to some extent. Maybe a 5 to 10 meter lead over GBSS. I think what is happening here, the athlete in the grey, we're not to show what school he's from, he's really um, providing a sort of uh, pacer for the athlete from SAS. And the athlete from SAS going along with him as he's trying to avoid that lap. And that may turn out to work in his favour, Jason. It might be a strategy of some sort. But he moves ahead of him now. Looks pretty relaxed. Nine laps to go as we've just been see seeing the, the card been shown to the athletes. So it's still very early in this event. We were also anticipating, Leslie, the... The relay, the uh, sponsors relay, the Republic Bank 4x100 meter sponsors relay. We were anticipating that and um, that didn't happen. So Nawasa Sass, we saw the management team led by Christopher Husbands of Nawasa here this afternoon. And uh, no doubt, I'm quite sure he's very proud of uh, the investment that Nawasa has made into youth and sport and the overall development of our nation. So uh, you wouldn't be hearing this now because he's here, but when he does get the opportunity to hear it, I'm quite sure he would understand that uh, we appreciate what the efforts are. So St. Andrew's Anglican Secondary School, SAS 1 and 2 in the 3,000. Potentially, that's 20 points you're looking at there for SAS. GBSS now recedes to fourth position. All right. Uh, McDonald College now moves into third position. GSS is in good contention here, maybe to overtake GBSS. So GBSS fans might be a little bit uneasy here now, seeing that their athlete is fading away and SAS continues to pull ahead of the rest of the field with maybe seven laps to go. That's 20 potential points you're looking at there. In the scheme of things, that can make a huge difference. Well, the statistician has spoken. Leslie Smith, the statistician, has spoken. And, uh, and here we see a GBSS athlete on the stretcher. So obviously, they only have one athlete remaining in the race. Not a good sign for GBSS. Well, what we do have here is a good sight for the St. Andrews Anglican Secondary School. One and two is going to come down to how, if they can hold on for the next six or seven laps. Um, we're going to tell the story. We're eight minutes and 37 seconds in. Six laps remaining. Eight minutes and 37 seconds in. The record for this event, I'm not quite sure if they are on course for the record for this event, but I will... Uh, take a quick look at it and bring you up to speed and let you know. But um, and Jason, while you do that, I can tell you in the boys category, there is only 11 and a half points separating GBSS and SAS. GBSS has 11 and a half points ahead of SAS. They're currently on 321 and a half, and SAS on 310 and a half. Um, uh, obviously, the focus is in the boys category, considering that the girls category is a done and dusted um, um, situation, and uh, everybody is really glued and focused on what is happening in the boys category. So 20 potential points here can make a huge difference for SAS. It means that they would actually go ahead of GBSS with one event remaining, considering GBSS does not get a, a top eight position. I, I, I think they would get a top eight position, but eighth position would only land them one point. Seven position would give them two points, sixth position, three points, fifth position, four points, fourth position would give them five points, third position, six points. So GBSS would want to get a, a, a good finish in this event and SAS also would want to maintain the one-two position here 
But we see uh, the athlete from the Grenville Secondary really closing in on Sass now. It looks as though it's Cadet Soto is an athlete from McDonald College. And uh, Sass still in the lead, but the second position has been changed and McDonald College is gaining good grounds on the athlete from Sass who is also in the third position. So these are the kind of combinations and permutations we have to go through with five laps remaining, Jason, as this is a championship um, final two events, and uh, the focus really is on those two top schools in the male category. Oh, well, let's wait and see how this one's going to turn out, because a lot of folks are sitting on the edge of their seats. Hello, my friend Junior, Junior George, I know you're there sitting on the edge of your seat as well. And as you mentioned, Junior George, I'm, I am sure I know what tie he's wearing today because I know what his alma mater is. And he has been one following track and field, following everything that has been happening in Grenada. He and his ride along team. And Junior George must be very uneasy now considering that one of the two top schools is his alma mater. Well, the rules also indicated that um, if the organizers determined that the infringement didn't interfere with the speed and the direction of the athlete, then uh, um, the disqualification may not, may not. But in this case, um, it has happened. The disqualification has come because the points has been reviewed. So hence the reason why we're seeing now uh, a drop in the points for the Grenada Boys Secondary School. Just before when we did the point standings, they were 20, 21 and a half points ahead. That has been reduced now to 10 and a half points. So the scores in the boys category, 10 and a half points, because the GBSS earlier on was on 333 and a half. Now the disqualification comes. And that has reduced the GBSS points. So now GBSS is on 321 and a half. And uh, the St. Andrews Anglican Secondary on 310. That's in the boys' division. So the, the protest was uh, successful. The, the protest was successful. And the GBSS um, has lost a little bit of ground. They're still holding on to position number one. For how long, we're not sure. Or if at all, they can continue. But uh, time will tell. 321 and a half. SAS is currently in second position on 310. St. David's Catholic Secondary on 195. And the PBC moves into fourth position, drops down to fourth position on 188. Uh, Boca Secondary School still standing, holding in fifth position on 92 and a half points. Don't think they would go past fifth position, really, irrespective of what happens up at the top. In the girls' division, daylight, three days a week and maybe about two months between St. David's Catholic Secondary School and the Anglican High School, 323 points as opposed to 205 and a half. And the St. Joseph's Convent Grenville, 170, St. George, sorry, 175. And St. Joseph's Convent St. Andrew, 140 and a half. So in short, Jason, what we've just seen there from your own assessment is that both PBC and uh, GBSS were disqualified from the 4 by 100 meter senior boys. Up front now is McDonald College in the 5,000 open event. Uh, SAS has been relegated to the second position. As you see the athlete from SAS just going past the finish line there. But up front is the athlete from McDonald College. Um, SAS moves back into third position, Grenville secondary in fourth. So SAS in second and third at the moment and potentially that would be 14 points for SAS if it remains like that. All right, well, you seem to be the qualified and authentic statistician of, of the broadcast. And uh, thank you for your assessment. Thank you for your statistical assessment. We can't... So that's the athlete that's in the lead now, Jason, from McDonald College, right in front of us here. Just lapping the athlete here from the St. Mark Secondary. He's looking back to see where the competition is coming from. He's looking back to see where the SAS athletes are. The SAS currently is in second position. But a distant second. A huge distant second as well. We can tell you there will be three laps to go. That's your leader here. SAS in second. He keeps looking back to see where Sass is. Sass is also in third. 
and they still have three laps to go. There's a lot of motion from him. I think he might want to not look back so often and well, it's do what he has to do to extend his lead. I think he's spending too much energy um, looking back and, and too much movement jogging. At this stage of the game, you need to just relax and let your momentum carry you through and let uh, the robotics do what they have to do. So I was about to tell you, Jason, there's actually two laps remaining. It wasn't three. And uh, the athlete up front from the McDonald College has a comfortable lead. Takes uh, oh, some refreshments there, some water. Keeps looking back. And whenever you're looking back, it's either you're getting a little tired or you're not certain of where you are. But uh, again, he keeps looking back. He just needs to maintain his form and keep pushing on. But McDonald College still leads here. That's him going there. That's the second place uh, athlete at the moment from SAS. And then SAS is also in the third position. So I keep saying potentially that's 14 points for SAS. At the moment, GBSS leads SAS by 11 and a half points. So it'll be interesting to see what position GBSS picks up in this event. And I'm sure many of you who are home are looking at those numbers and doing your own calculations. We're only trying to assist you with that here. 16 minutes, 40 seconds on the flash time. It's difficult for us to tell where GBSS is in the race at the moment. But what we know for sure is that McDonald College is in the lead. That's the leader right here. He begins to turn it up a little bit because he's approaching the bell for the bell lap. Keeps looking back to see where Sass is. He has one lap to go. So although he keeps looking back, he looks pretty much comfortable. He looks as though he has a lot left in him. Looks more like a road runner than a track runner. You can see the, the right arm going down. It's showing signs of tiredness. Let's see if there's going to be some additional pressure put onto him by the athlete from SAS. Well, it's going to be McDonald College Day in the 5,000 meters. He's extremely tired, but there's no real challenge for him. McDonald College it is. That's going to win the 5,000 meters. And he wins so very comfortably indeed. McDonald College. A very strong run. Very exhilarating run. Here comes Sass for second. Grenville secondary for third. And the other athlete from Sass is going to pick up the fourth position. So Sass picking up third. Sorry, second and fourth. It means that they would have picked up 13 points. 13 valuable points that would take them ahead of GBSS marginally. Because GBSS were 11 and a half points ahead of them. So SAS now should be one and a half points ahead of GBSS, setting up the stage for the grand finale in the 4x400 meters. Well, Leslie has called it down to the. And that's only yeah. if my calculations are correct, Jason. But from what we have from the scorecard and from what has just happened, that's the way it should be. Well, Leslie has called it down to the wire. And now we are set for the girls 4x4 four four and uh, the boys 4x400 four four meters. So the McDonald College winning the boys 5,000, a grueling event it was. Long race, lasted over um, 15 minutes. And uh, it's, uh, why Leslie Smith stretches his legs we are going to have a brief chat because the whole for the entire intercall games we've been speaking about the tnr communications and uh, tnr communications tnr communications and we want to bring into focus now the man behind the tnr communications and uh, the work that tnr communications has been doing so uh, joining me now is Mr. Richie Oliver. Richie, 
TNR Communications, you've done it again. Well, let me say good afternoon first, Jason, to all our viewers, viewers on, um, on GBN, viewers on the GIS, the two local entities who are broadcasting the Intercall Games, and of course our viewers on the, on the pay-per-view. So yes, Jason, we have, um, we have taken on quite a challenge with this Intercall Games, and I think we have done our best with it. I, I don't know what you think, Jason. Well, um, you, you, you're asking answers here now. You yes, preach yes, to the choir. Indeed. But uh, the, the, the truth is, uh, TNR Communications, we know that you, you folks have been doing a whole lot more, not just athletics. I mean, um, anything to do with videography at all and uh, live production, TNR Communications has stepped up to the fore. Uh, talk to us also about that and uh, the kind of uh, equipment and investment that you've made because this by no means is uh, requiring a, a, a minuscule investment. Well, yes and yes, we, TNR Communications, we have been involved um, in quite a bit of corporate broadcasting also. You know, we have, we have done quite a lot of corporate conferences and you just name it, we have, we have done it. You know, even down to funerals, we have been doing quite a bit of funerals. But our forte basically is, is sports because we have done quite a bit of sports, athletics in particular, over the last uh, few months. We have done some work for um, some football, uh, we have some cricket coming, but athletics, we have done quite a bit of athletics over the last few months. And Jason, it's, it's quite a, a significant challenge because we have made some, um, quite some significant investment. We have brought in basically about, we are using only new cameras for this, um, for this intercall vent here. And um, I don't think we have, um, we have done badly at all. We, we, have, we haven't done badly. The, the, the viewers out there would have seen a nice, clean, crisp um, picture. Um, and that is some of the investment we have, we have actually uh, made. The back-end equipment, in the in the different um, computers, uh, switchers, and, uh, and e e even down to the cables, and 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 persons must know that as small as the ca cables might sound, it's a significant part of making sure that the quality that you're seeing, you're seeing is the best. As small as it is, right. cables, you know. You you mentioned um, not just uh, athletics, but. Uh you even mentioned cricket, and uh, Grenada came into focus a few weeks ago when the regional cricket started here, and um, the commendations that came in after, in fact, indicated clearly that the quality of the broadcast coming in from TNR Communications from Grenada was by far um, among the best. Yes, um, cricket. We, we started cricket about three about three years ago, just um, after COVID, uh, and thanks for that opportunity by the, the Grenada Cricket Association for putting their confidence in us. And um, the Cricket West Indies indicated to us, you know, that we, 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 we are not doing badly at all. For a small for a small island, they have congratulated us quite a bit over the last few years, and more recently so in the in about the, uh, I think the last two months. You know, like, like, you would, you, like you would know, we have about two weeks of cricket coming up at the end of April. I think you'll be on the broadcast also. And it's the next opportunity for us to, um, to showcase and to, to, to put Grenada on the map because we have some new stuff that we are going to, we, we are going to showcase for the cricket coming up in, in April. So um, I'll let the viewers know to stand by for that. Right. Um, we also know of the fact that um you know some of the, the the long hours speak to us about the long hours uh, the tireless the tiring the tiring times um mm -hmm. when when this broadcast is over and done and when the day's broadcast is over and done with um it doesn't end there because no it, it requires a whole lot more getting into the next day talk to us about that well first let me just let me just say the crew that i'm working with is, is perhaps the, the greatest asset that I have. It is not necessarily the equipment that I, that I, that I bought, but it's the crew that I worked with. Blondell, you have um, Cullen, you have the, the, the two Joseph brothers, you have um, Corey, 
Um, you have Nazim who is a, in, in the engine room behind the quality of the stream. And you have my, my, my son, Cook, um, who is basically um, all about the place helping, doing, doing everything. And um, I, I don't want to forget anyone on this present broadcast. We have um, Ron Diali, who is perhaps the best or among the, 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 the top two cameramen in this country. We have Oswin Paul. You know, and these guys have added to the team quite a bit of quality to help us and make us into into what we am, what we what we are at the moment. Um, Jason, and the, um, go back to your, your 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 question. I don't know if I might have answered the, the, the oh, um, you speak the about the long hours. hours the long yes, hours. Um, I mean we took we have been preparing for the intercall games about two weeks now. The actual setup took us about at least one week to actually do one week imagine that we left here intercall was start intercall started on a tuesday and we left here on monday night we left here on monday night at around 12 o'clock just to make sure everything was in place you know so it, it it it's a job that requires you to be on your feet for quite some long hours in the preparation and also on the day for the cameraman and the other guys who are outside there to actually bring the nice shots and bring all the 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 the, the, the environment and the, the 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 whole ambience of the of the occasion to you so it's quite a, a back-breaking job sometimes all right well thank you very much richie Oliver. don't go far because we're going to continue chatting with you once we have the time what we are looking at on screen now is the start of the four by 100 meter sponsors relay so um the colors that we had originally is not what we're seeing now because what we were told is that um, head office, yes, head office in red, um, Melville Street in blue, yes, we're seeing that, uh, Halifax Street in teal, and Republic House in purple. So the sponsors, four by 100 meter relay very soon you will see a difference on the track if you pay attention to your photo because uh, i'm quite sure any moment now the lights will go on it is just after six o'clock and uh, we will see the lights going on in just a little bit so you will see a difference on the track So let's go down to the house announcer for the introduction of the sponsors relay. Aline Francis and Anderson Peters also in the building. We want to thank them for coming out and lending their support to the Republic Bank. It's lending their support to the Intercall Games, Republic Bank, Intercall Games. Reminding you that it all started right here at the Intercall Games for these athletes. And it will be our joy to see another generation of Olympians emanate from these Republic Bank Intercall Games. Once again, let's hear it for Aline Francis and Anderson Peters. Jason, the excitement continues in a different format now. The sponsors race. And uh, first of all, we have to ensure that our money is secured. And now they're going to take to the track by branches or by departments. So we have Melville Street, we have uh, Republic House, Grenville. And <laughs> fall start in four. So that looks like uh, it, it looks like Melville Street. Uh, Looks like I don't think the fall start rule is in effect for this race, Jason. Uh, it better not be. <laughs> Do I see Dorian Mitchell in this race? Dorian Mitchell, he's running for head office. He's supposed to be starting off. But uh, that is not Dorian, so I don't know if he is in the mix anyway in this quartet. 
Good clean start. Everybody's off. The 4x100 meter sponsors relay. And uh, Grenville has picked up the stagger early. Well, somebody's out of it already. This run seems like an eternity. And uh, here comes uh, Grenvi um, yeah, Grenville Street. Grenville Street is doing battle with head office. Head office is outgoing. But uh, Grenville Street in the handover. And the Grenville Street handover. Grenville Street handover. They're gone. Grenville Street, Halifax Street. They're gone, but here comes head office around the bend on the outside. A lot of work to do, too much work to do. And the Grenville Street branch will have this one easy into the bag. Some zest, some style, some... We may see a little bit of show bolting. Are we going to see that? Yeah, <laughs> just a little bit, just a little bit. But and, I saw, uh, saw head office <laughs> coming in second. And uh, everybody else um, way, way, way on the other side of the planet. So it was actually Grenville Branch, and you were saying Grenville Street, right? But, but it, it says Grenville Halifax, so um, Grenville so, Halifax. So maybe it's a combination of a, both of them. A, but a I look at Doyle Douglas on the third leg there for the winning team, really running a good leg and bringing it in for his anchorman um, very early. And uh, an exciting race. We saw the bottom is skewed all over the track. I, uh, it, and also some of the the employees on the track as well. Yeah, well, um, the, the drama started even before the first handover because on the on the first handover, uh, I think it was Melville Street that was virtually swimming in air <laughs> just before the handover, and uh, that didn't go too well. And then by the time we got to the second handover, um, the Grenville slash Halifax Street team. They had their own issues as well, so um, it's all good fun, but clearly we understand why now. Banking is banking and athletics is athletics, <laughs> and we want to say thanks a whole lot to Republic Bank Grenada Limited for continuing to be a part of the Intercall Championships 2023, the 55th edition of the Intercall Championships, and the Republic Bank was speaking to the the managing director of Republic Bank earlier on today, Mrs. Naomi DeGale, she did in fact indicate that when the acquisition came from uh, Scotia Bank to Republic Bank, one of the things that uh, they looked at immediately was the Intercore Games and how they can strengthen the Intercore Games with more injection of cash and then how they can continue in the support for the Intercore Games. So, um, this is. Uh, Diali. This is Diali of the Saint of the um, Republic Bank. Did in fact indicate that she is an, uh, an old convent girl, so she was quietly having a heartbeat for Saint Joseph's Convent, Saint George. But as the title sponsor, she had to keep her composure. But I'm quite sure either way, she's totally happy with the outcome of these championships 2023. Jason, again, I want to go back to the final event and the championship quest. Um, one thing we didn't pick up was GBSS's position in the 5,000 meters because if they came in the top eight position, it means that they would have added some more points to their current point standing. And then it would mean that rather than a 1.5 difference, it could be less than a 1.5. But looking forward to the four by 400 meters, I'm looking at the results of the 400 meter dash for the senior boys and GBSS had two finalists there they actually placed third that's in the likes of Tejan Peterkin he placed third and Kyle Victor placed sixth Kyle um, Sass uh, Josh M. Sylvester he placed second in that 400 meter um, senior boys and, and he was the only competitor for Sass in the finals and that gives a guide as to what the teams would look like but both SAS and GBSS would have to go in the junior boys category to maybe bolster the team. And the likes of Ethan Sam, who can run very well, a good 400 meters, may be injected now into that open event for GBSS to, to really strengthen their championship uh, claim and defend the title. SAS may also need to look into other categories to see if they can find um, another three persons to complement a, 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 a Josh M. Sylvester and so the coaches and the management teams from both GBSS and SAS are working overtime at the moment to put the best teams forward because this final event, whoever comes ahead of the other would be the overall champion of Intercore Games 2023. 
So they're not going for first or second now, but they're going to beat one another in this event. So if SAS comes ahead of GBSS, SAS wins. If GBSS comes ahead of SAS, GBSS wins. And that is the kind of finale we anticipate and would love to see at Intercol Games every year. All right, well, we're coming to that. We're heading to that. The one thing for sure, hold your breath. Um, the good Lord sparing life, we will get there. And uh, 10, 15 minutes from now, we'll be singing a different story because by that time, um, the fat lady would have used the microphone. So the pandemonium and the stands continue. Happy New Secondary celebrating for something. Uh, they were disqualified moments ago in the senior girls relay for a lane infringement as well. So if you see a change in the point standing for Happy Hill Secondary is because on the review of the tape, there was a lane infringement on the third handover. So well, the in-house announcers are really trying to rile up the spectators and uh, present that kind of atmosphere that would take them home for the final event. A very packed Kirani James Athletic Stadium. Not much jumping room, I would think, as well. The 4 by 400 meter girls, that's going to happen first. And then the 4x400 four meter boys, the real crunch time decider will come thereafter. It's uh, nearing 6.30, if it's uh, 6.23 to be more precise. And uh, we are nearing the real final of the Intercore Championships 2023. Only two more events remaining. The 4x400 four meter girls and the 4x400 four meter boys. Well, it's a foregone conclusion in the girls' categories, and Davis Catholic Secondary already has both hands on the championship trophy. They're just waiting for the official ceremony to be presented with it. And yeah. then it's going to be a battle of the perennial archivals and uh, archivals, sorry, between SAS and GBSS in the boys' category. Well, look at what we've just received here. Now, we're not sure if this is going to change, but just as you alluded to, GBSS has uh, Tegon Peterkin on one, uh, Cornell Peer on two, Ethan Sam has been brought in on three, and Kyle Victor is, in, is on lane, is in, uh, the fourth leg. Now, we're not sure if this is going to change based on anything that would have transpired recently, but um, PBC, they're operating out of lane three, um, a good quarter there, uh, Raquel Telemach is going to start off, Joshua Noel is going to be running the second leg, Jordan Newton on third, and Nathan Holas on four for the boys. Let's see what SAS has to offer. SAS now is uh, looking at uh, Joshim Sylvester on one, Devonte Hillier on two, Lennon Williams on three, and uh, Giovanni O'Neill O'Nelly on four. Um, one of the things that we can't o overlook really is uh, Boca Secondary School because they have done well, but they're not in this one. Yes, they are. Boca Secondary School. Yes, they are. Boca Secondary School is there. And uh, Aidan Daniel won. Andre P Patrick, the second leg. Tyrese Andrews on the third leg. And uh, Jalen Langine will be anchoring for the Boca Secondary School. Um, anything else other than that, really, uh, well, we've got to wait and see. But if we go back to 2022 and we take a, a quick look at the 4x4, the results will suggest that in the 4x400 meter relay, we should have had it here. The details here, we're going to get that for you. We should have had the details on the 4x4. I will get that for you momentarily because we wanted to look and see what was happening on the, on the various legs. But um, let's go back now to Hillsborough Secondary School because Hillsborough Secondary School, they've been, you know, doing, just hovering right there, thereabouts. So um, Leslie thinks it's going to come between GBSS, PBC, and SAS. He thinks that's where the real competition is. Not even so much 
Boca Secondary School or even St. Mark Secondary School. What about McDonald College? McDonald College is in this as well. And Quite uh, frankly, St. David's Catholic Secondary. Quite frankly, the race here is between uh, GBSS, PBC, SAS, not necessarily in that order, because PBC still had the likes of a Rickel Telemark. They can also slip in, a, they're going to slip in a, a Jaden Newton and a, a Joshua Noel. We know what Telemark can do in, in this event. Um, on paper, it looks as though GBSS has the, the stronger team. Uh, Tegan Peterkin, Ethan Sam can do sub 50. Um, Lennon for SAS, although he ran in the preliminaries, he did not qualify into the finals. And Devonta Healy and Giovanni O'Neill, they can hold their own, but not to the extent of uh, Ethan Sam and a Queen El Pay. Queen El Pay may be the weakest link here for GBSS. He's on the second leg. Um, Tegan Peterkin, who is going to start off, will have to run really, really hard, but he has been overworked. Um, we saw him in the 100 meters today, the 4 by 100 meters, and he has been working really, really hard over these championships. So too has been Ethan Sam and uh, Queen Alpe. But these guys are going to throw all out on the, the, on the rubber here today because that's the last event, that's the championship event, so to speak. And uh, Joshua Sylvester, Lennon Williams, and Devonte Hille from SAS would have to work very hard. I want to look to see what St. Davis Catholic Secondary School has because we don't see any Elisha Williams here. He has been working really, really hard today as well. There is a Akidon James, EJ George, who did the 3,000 meters, Zilon Cox, and uh, Jonathan Noel. These are the quartet for St. Davis Catholic Secondary School. And I believe because they may consider they are not in championship honors, um, Elijah Williams may be resting again. He's a character athlete, and you don't want to risk anything with him going into character. So I, I think that's the thinking of the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School. Let's break down the, the, the girls now. We did a good job breaking down the boys there. Let's look at the girls. Um, even though this, the outcome here doesn't really affect the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School, but they've got uh, Aliyah Gedari and uh, Akira Moraine on three. They've got uh, Telesford and four, another, oh, another Gedari. Uh, Alain Gidari, so Alia and Alain Gidari, one and four for the Happy Hill Secondary School. Um, Ashara Joseph starting things off, Amaya Sylvester, uh, Serena Charles, and Amia Harris. Any real threat coming from them there, Leslie? Happy Hill Secondary? Yeah, Happy Hill Secondary. Okay, see, they have with them Amia Sylvester, who is a very good runner. So they, 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 they're in contention. St. Davis obviously has a good team with Aliyah Gidari, Kamaya Telesford, and uh, Akira Moraine amongst their, 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 their thing here. But we also have to look at Boca Secondary School with Amia Chandler, Kedona Douglas, Annalisa Brown, we saw her in the 3,000 meters earlier today, and Monique Binder. So Boca Secondary School actually has a very good team. Uh, and they are going to be in contention for, for, for that 4x4 four four in the girls' category. Let's look at SAS. And let's look at before, we go to, before we go there, let's look at SAS. Uh, Leona Williams, Christina Charles, Breonna Olive, and uh, Tiana Thomas. SAS, uh, they are not um, explosive on paper, but a pretty decent quartet who can, in, who indeed. can, who can do some, some, indeed. some good SAS work. Indeed, SAS has a, a pretty good team here as well. Um, with the quarter that you've just called out, and so they can offer some challenge uh, to the other schools as well. All right, now let's go down to the Anglican High School. Let's see what Anglican High School has. They're decent on paper as well, more so, because uh, they've got Shifona Houston starting things off on one. They've got the Denia Modesta on their second leg, Amaya Henry on three, and uh, Kadeen Phillip, Kadeen Phillip, on four, the real um, danger is Kadeen Phillip, and uh, when you have Kadeen Phillip finishing and uh, Shifonia Houston starting, um, your middle just really needs to be a, f a good complement. Well, that's a strong team here, right there from the Anglican High School. Um, Houston Phillip, Denia Modest is also a good athlete, so too is Amaya Henry. So look out for Anglican High School in that event as well. But let's look at St. Joseph's Convent, St. George. Um, not St. Andrew, St. Joseph's Convent, St. George, um, Kamali Phillip, Shanti Augustine, that's a familiar name, uh, Kayla McIntyre, and uh, 
Amaya Samuel, any real threat coming from St. Joseph's College well, in St. George, you think? Once Shanti Augustine is in there together with uh, Kamali Phillip and uh, uh, Samuel, um, it's going to be a, a, a good race as well. So we have some pretty much evenly matched teams here in the girls' category. And the girls' category maybe is even more difficult to tell based on uh, the lineups that we see here from the various schools. All right. Well, just before we wow. get into that, let's uh, just before we get into the four by four, let's go now to some quick results. Let's run through the top five positions in both categories. So the St. Davis Catholic secondary in the girls' division out front with 323 points. The Anglican High School in second on 205 and a half points. Also, the St. Joseph's Convent St. George on 175 and a half points st joseph's convent st andrew on 140 and a half and the boca secondary school on 126 and a half points that's the the top five in the girls division well in the boys category it's a completely different story to take the top five boca secondary they're on 96 and a half points presentation brothers college on 188 points in fourth position in third position is the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School on 196 points. In second position, the St. Andrews Anglican Secondary School on 323 points. And up front, by only half a point, is the Grenada Boys Secondary School on 323 and a half points. So only half a point separates the two schools looking for championship honors with just one event remaining in their division the four by 400 meters so it's a, a winner takes it all so to speak between sas and uh, uh, gbss a half point separating these two teams and uh, just as we anticipated it's down to the final event yeah that's what it's going to come down to um enticingly so well we've got uh, activities happening on the field we can just take it for just a little bit and then we will come back for the start of the 4x4 four four girls and the 4x4 four four boys. Well, we see the officials from the bank already taking up the positions, uh, Jason, for the final closing exercises, the presentation of the remaining medals and the trophies to the divisional champions, uh, the champion schools, and the overall champion at Intercourt Games. 2023. So there's a, a bit of hush over the stadium as we get set for the penultimate event. A real hush over the stadium now because there's anticipation, especially in the boys' category, as to what may be happening. The updated scores have not yet been presented to the spectators who are here. So they're not yet even aware that GBSS is leading by half a point over SAS. We don't want event to go. And uh, some more anxious and tense moments for the patrons who are here at the National Stadium. It's a winner-take-all situation. And uh, you paid your money, you got here, or you subscribe for the pay-per-view it's money well worth money well spent i would think oh well, you got a lot more than your money's worth the problem here now the real hush and the murmur well the mush the the the, the, the hush or the murmur will come when this crowd gets to find out the real scores in the boys division because as you said um half a point lead is <laughs> something to be worried about for any school here whether you're supporting gbss or whether you're supporting sas half a point lead is uh, something to be very worried about it's not something to be comfortable about at all if you don't have 16 points ahead you're not yet on the championship rostrum and no school has that between those two schools it's just a half a point so it's a winner takes it all who maintains their composure, who gets the stick around, and who has the better team. So it all comes down to just one event. From nine months of training, from September last year, to today, all the schools who have been preparing 
it comes down to just one event. All right, well, this year will define what champions are made of. And uh, this is what you really want from your premier track and field event. And this is the reason why it is the premier track and field event, not just in Grenada, but in the Windward Islands and at the wider Caribbean Intercall Championships 2023. Uh, Pay-per-view viewers, good, after, good evening. Good evening. It is past 6 o'clock. It's uh, moving up closer to 7. Brenda Batista, I know that you're viewing with us. Good afternoon. And um, also my, my good friend Aruna is there. She, I'm waiting on all the, the licks that will come my way when we do meet again because you know what happens with the both of us, especially when we get to our own um, radio show. But uh, this is the story. We've got the results of of the boys 5,000 meters Nickel John of McDonald College 1758 Miguel Cape of SAS 187.27 and Joshua Cadet of the Grenville Secondary School 188.56 Devante Hillier of SAS coming in in fourth and DeAndre Smith in fifth Rickelson George of GCA in six. That's the story in the boys 5,000. Leslie? So that puts a different spin again on the 4x4 four four for boys. Because Devon de Hill had just run 5,000 meters and he's on the second leg for SAS in the 4x4. Four four. Not a smart idea in my honest opinion. Because that was a very grueling race for over 16 minutes. And to have him come back to do the 4x4 four may not be the wisest choice for SAS on this occasion. Also, a very special thank you to our uh, partnering team over at tizik.com, where many folks would have applied. To, you logged on to tizik.com and uh, subscribe to the pay-per-view. Sheldon, I know you're there viewing on with us. Sheldon, good evening, and thanks a lot for your professionalism. And... Uh, I think it's uh, Shelyandra, Shelyandra, Sheldon and uh, Shalyandra. Good evening and thanks a lot again for your professionalism and great work here at Grenada. The track and field, the premier track and field event. Also my good friend uh, Ruel just had a message from my good friend Ruel. He's also viewing the pay-per-view broadcast and um, quite sure he's enjoying it because uh, a lot of folks don't know when we had the first ever uh, simultaneous broadcast of Intercall. I think that was back in 2009 and uh, Ruel was a part of the management team back then and we pooled together a whole lot of resources and a lot of the folks are still here because all the folks you see working at TNR Communications today most of them were still here were here at that time I should say and uh, we had folks like Brian Pitt and um, Leon Francis was also with us on, on commentary um, Anil Roberts who visited from Trinidad and Tobago was also part of the commentary back then and we had a fantastic time. And as a matter of fact, that was the last time I did Intercall commentary until we started the 2023 edition here a few days ago. So, good evening to all those who would have paved the way, made it happen. And uh, thanks a lot again to TNR Communications. You heard Mr. Richie Oliver speaking about the sizable investment in ensuring the, the quality of the broadcast. Back then, we had uh, Michael Bascom, Royal Titus. Uh, veterans, Anderson, um, cameraman, Anderson Qualis. I know he's somewhere viewing. So um, a whole lot of talent it was, but we have come umpteen years later and uh, TNR Communications has raised the bar. As a matter of fact, earlier on today, one of our cameramen was saying that when uh, someone asks who's doing the broadcast, uh, they thought it was a foreign company. And he told them, no, it's not a foreign company, but it's an international company. The TNR Communications is not a foreign company, but an international company. An international company, homegrown, Grenadian. 
Well, we've come to expect very, very high standards from TNR Communication throughout every event that they've covered. And this Intercall Games was no exception. The high standard, the drone shots that we saw, the camera angles, the use of the footage is also for the video referee has come into play on several occasions during this meet. And so TNR Communication continues to deliver on the, the very high standards. Sherry and Noel work down on the field together with uh, Joseph Cador, who spent some time upstairs and downstairs. Bernard Antoine, who started off the broadcast and has worked diligently. So to Davis, Davis Adams and uh, everyone else who has worked diligently to ensure that uh, we got to this point, the final two events of Intercall 2020. We're getting now ready for the start of the four by four. 100 meters girls That's in the girls category it's the final event for the ladies and it's the penultimate event of intercall games 2023 these ladies have worked really really hard over the past uh, three days and it's down to their final event to put it out all on the rubber here leaving nothing left back and let's see how that turns out it's going to be a close one um, anglican high school has a good team so too is boca secondary so too is sas and so too is the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School. These, in my opinion, are the top four teams in, in this event. And let's see if they can live up to the expectation and hype that they've created over the three days. Uh, so this one is going to be dangerous. So the girls have been kept out there for some time. I'm sure there must be feeling, there must be some level of discomfort for them considering there are thousands of people looking at them. I've seen false stars in 4x4s already, Jason. Sacrilege. Clean start. Everybody's gone. No more waiting. The 4 by 400 meter girls. A good lineup here for secondary schools. 15 schools participating in this final event for the girls. St. Davis Catholic Secondary making a quick move on the outside early. St. Uh, this looks like Anglican High School having some work to do, battling with Sass. Out in front is uh, St. Davis Catholic Secondary. St. Davis Catholic Secondary and uh, that looks like the Happy Hill Secondary School. McDonald's so that's College. Bishop's, College, Bishop's College and then we have McDonald College. And then Conman making a run on the outside. Anglican High School on the inside. But I believe St. Davis Catholic Secondary would uh, lead from start to finish in this event. See, so Conman is not going to give them an easy run. They're going to have to work really, really hard for it. But already, St. Davis Catholic Secondary in Alia Gidhari putting good. on a good first leg performance. Good handover from Aliana Gidhari, from Alia Gidhari, giving it to Akira Moraine. And Moraine is gone, out and running. St. Joseph's Convent is uh, sitting in second position. St. Joseph's Convent sitting in second position. Uh, high school comes up now. The Anglican High School comes up and does some serious work here eclipsing holding on to the lead this is going to be momentary we're not sure but time will tell anglican high school trying to stretch out but to st david's catholic not giving up but on the outside on the outside mcdonald college is putting in some hard work stride for stride out in front mcdonald college and anglican high school anglican high school has decided no not just yet but the real tussle continues right there anglican high school uh, mcdonald college on the inside st davis catholic secondary coming in on the inside holding off now they're going to look to the handover it looks like st davis catholic secondary will get there first to make the handover 
Anglican High School will come in second on this handover. St. Joseph's Convent. St. George hands over third. And this could mean trouble now. But McDonald College is not going to give up. She's coming on the outside now. This athlete from McDonald College is coming on the outside. Let's see what happens because the Anglican High School has started to stretch their lead here now. The Anglican High School in the 4 by 400 meter. This looks like Amaya Henry of the Anglican High School going out and going fast. McDonald College is uh, right there in front with them on uh, second position and the St. David's Catholic Secondary School, uh, Kamaya Tellisford is holding on to third, St. Joseph's Convent, St. George. We spoke about them in the uh, prelude to this event, but they're holding to fourth. Anglican High School has hold on to the first position and here they come now for the final handover Anglican High School out and gone the Anglican High School out and gone whole lot of distance there between Anglican High School and McDonald College in the 4 by 400 meter girls relay a lot of daylight Nothing in the picture, just the Anglican High School. Look at the distance now. This is more like 40, 40 meters. And Anglican High School it has gone, coming around with just over 200 meters to go. Are we going to see a further kick now from the Anglican High School? Is this, is this lead going to be elasticized any bit? We can't say. Yeah, she's going to start pumping. She'll start to put some more legs into it, some more arm action into it, some more shoulders into it. And uh, she's going down the street, heading to the tape. And the noise continues. The noise continues. Anglican High School going over. Winning. St. Davis Catholic secondary second. St. Joseph's Convent. St. George third. Anglican High School winning the girls 4x400 four meter relay. A good ankle leg there from the Anglican High School in Kadeen Phillip running a really good ankle leg and bringing the Anglican High School home to victory in the 4x400 four meter senior. Well, the 4x400 four girls. Well, we did preview Anglican High School as being one of the favorites with the likes of uh, Shefunia Houston and uh, Kadeen Phillip. But I'm, I'm going to tell you, had Anglican High School not win this event, they would have protested. I'm not sure if you saw it on the second leg. Uh, the athlete from St. Davis Catholic second leg was actually trying to overtake on the inside and bumped into the athlete from the Anglican High School and gained an unfair advantage in the process. But nonetheless, I don't think they would pursue that because they won it fair and square, crossing the line first. Congrats to Anglican High School. Now, all's well that ends well. So the Anglican High School in a four minutes, five 4.5, 45.46, that's it, 45.46, and the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School, 407.77, 1 and 2 in the girls 4 by 400 meter relay. It's not going to affect the scoreboard in any way at all. The St. Davis Catholic Secondary, they're gone into the girls, they can use points for next year if they want. Uh, they're, they're way ahead and um, it's going to come down to the final event and uh, the anticipation is going to hit through the roof because this is what the patrons would have paid for. Well, it's the final event in the boys category. It's a championship race. Winner is going to take it all. Uh, between SAS and the GBSS and I'm sure there are a lot of butterflies in the stomachs of the athletes and the spectators who are here a tense moment there's absolutely no one sitting in the, in the, in the arena everyone is on their feet they're jumping there's only vertical space there is no lateral space whatsoever in the stands and it's going to be pandemonium an electrifying moment for all who are here witnessing it and I'm sure those of you who are at home might be standing as well and pacing your living rooms and offices because this is indeed a very tense moment. Well, based on how they walked out, I think uh, the initial lineup that we had showed that Tegon Peterkin was going to lead off a GBSS, but that could possibly change here based on how they came out. It looks like if Peterkin is going to 
come off on the second um, the second leg. And that's what I was saying to you. The coaches and managers of those two schools are working overtime now to put the best combination. First of all, to select the best athletes and then to set them up in the best combination. And that's why I made the point that Devonte from SAS, who did that 5,000 meters, I'm not too sure if SAS would really want to persist with him. That's Devonte Hille in the 4x400 meters, considering the extensive nature of the 5,000 meters. And uh, the recovery time between those two races is going to be interesting to see what happens with that team. Well, Peter Kinn is not going to start for GBSS because... Uh think someone else is going out there that looks like Ethan Sam I'm not quite sure yes it is Ethan Sam is going to lead off for the Grenada Boys Secondary School in this one 15 schools in this event so Ethan Sam is going to start uh, he may very well hand over to take on Peterkin uh, let's see what's going to go on with uh, the St. Andrews Anglican Secondary and uh, the, fo the reason why the, the focus comes in on these two schools is because these two schools are now running for the championship. These two schools are running for the championship. Only half a point separates GBSS in one and SAS in two. Only half a point. And the relay, the points for the relay, would show that coming in first gives you 16 points and the second gives you 12 points. So second place, hmm, unless someone else wins this relay and uh, totally throws off GBSS and SAS, which will pos most likely not happen. It's going to come down to GBSS and SAS. Leslie? So what has to happen here? GBSS and SAS, whoever comes ahead of the other in the top eight wins the championship. It's only half point separating them. They don't have to come first. They don't have to come second. They have to be in the top eight where points are located and one has to defeat the other. And that's, that, that's as simple as it is. Now, looking at the lineups, I see a Telemac, Rickel Telemac is starting off for Presentation Brothers College. And whenever you see your best athlete is starting off in a 4x4, it gives you an indication that the rest of the field is very weak. So he wants to be featured in the event and not getting the batter too late on the end and having to do too much work. So Telemac is there to start off for Presentation Brothers College. Now, SAS has made a change as well. Josh M. Sylvester is not starting as we have it on the lineup here. So they have someone else starting. That's the athlete in front of you here, 1775. Um, he's starting for SAS. So I believe Josh M. Sylvester would be uh, the athlete who will be anchoring for. Uh, uh, it's uh, actually Blackett, that's Antoine Blackett that's starting for Presentation Brothers College and Antoine. not. Um, and not Telemark, that's, that's Blackett that's Black there. Yes. And uh, Telemark may come in maybe on the, the third leg, not wanting to risk having to run too hard on that final leg. So let's see what Presentation Brothers College um, would do with the lineup. But, but, but Blackett was never listed in the lineup, so Blackett has just been inserted in the lineup for PVC because the original lineup that came, he was not listed. He has now been inserted last minute for PVC. So Blackett is going to go head-to-head -head on the first leg with um, uh, Ethan, Ethan Sam. Sam. And uh, the athlete for SAS, uh, not quite sure of his name, but he's there. Leslie's going to try and get it for us. It did not be Giovanni O'Neill for SAS, but um, it's going to be an interesting one. Jason, it's going to be a tight one. Well, there's a hush across the ground. Palpitations. Ethan Sam uh, is a pretty decent 400 meter runner. Palpitations are happening and uh, pressure tablets. Pressure medication have been brought into play. Breaths are held, now released, and that's the start of the 4x400 four meter. This is a championship event. Two schools have a lot to gain or lose from this event. One through four, and out goes the St. Andrews Anglican Secondary School, SAS. Ethan Sam is no way in sight on your camera now. One, two, three, four, five. And here comes Ethan Sam. He has decided to make this kick now. Blackett is there for presentation, Brothers College. He's coming around the bend, but oh, he's got a lot of work to do. St. Davis Catholic Secondary has come now into the picture. Shoulder to shoulder with Sass. St. Davis Catholic Secondary and Sass. But here comes Ethan Sam for GBSS. Ethan Sam is going to power his way through. Is he going to make the first ha the handover first? Yes, he comes out in the lead. Handover first. 
Here goes uh, the Grenada Boys Secondary School. We're not seeing take on Peter Kim just yet. Ah, they're holding him back. GBSS is gone. Here comes Sass now on the second leg for the St. Andrews Anglican Secondary School. He's working very hard trying to catch GBSS. PBC has moved up into third. St. Davis Catholic Secondary and fourth. These four schools have a lot to gain or lose because it is one through four. That's the present point standings. So a whole lot here for grabs. PBC is moving up now into second position getting to hold off the athlete from SAS. Yes, he's got him. He's going but uh, GBSS is out in front trying to make the first handover the crowd is raging everybody's bouncing more noise pandemonium in the athletic stadium gbss hands over take on peter kin is gone and take on peter kin for the grenada boys secondary school on the third leg here we go saint david's catholic secondary moved back into second wow pbc good run good stride but the elasticity has continued to explode from Peterkin. Peterkin has separated more than daylight maybe about a week now between Peterkin and the St. David's Catholic Secondary. This is going to be a nail biter on the finish. Here we go. Peterkin working hard running a good third leg for the Grenada Boys Secondary School. He's got just about 75 meters to go. Good shot from the drone. That is awesome. And here we go. Pay attention to the corner of your screen because Peter Kin is gone. He's going to hand that over. But now this point here, the final handover, St. Davis Catholic Secondary, Sass and Telemac for PBC. Two through four. Telemac would want to catch St. Davis Catholic Secondary. He wants to do that because PBC has a lot to gain here. PBC needs to catch St. Davis Catholic Secondary to at least move up into third as best as they can. Somebody needs to remember that GBSS is gone. SAS is remembering it. They know because they know fully well that they can win this without winning. But here comes St. Davis Catholic Secondary. He has caught the GBSS athlete and he is gone. And here comes Telemac for PBC. Telemac for PBC. He's going to pass GBSS. Telemac has gone. PBC is coming in second in this one. That's an awesome run. St. Davis Catholic secondary wins. PBC comes in second. It means that PBC will stay in fourth. Telemac couldn't get to hold off St. Davis Catholic. But more importantly, GBSS came in ahead of St. Andrew's secondary. And that means the celebrations will start with the color green. Well, an exciting conclusion to Intercall Games 2023. A spirited run indeed from Elisha Williams from the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School. We really didn't have them in contention for this 4x400 meters. But Elisha Williams delivering on the day. Telemark ha having too much to do on the final leg. Bringing up the, the silver medal for Presentation Brothers College. GBSS um, maybe having the most balanced team and the structure in the race well. A, a brilliant run from Tegan Peterkin. Look at Telemac coming around here now. Telemac knew he had a whole lot of work to do. He was really trying hard to catch uh, Hilaire. And he and Hilaire, they've got this ding-dong battle going. Hilaire got some redemption because he was not in the two. He was not in the one. Hilaire That's Elisha decided, Williams. Uh, Williams. He had redemption in his sights. And uh, he delivered St. David's Catholic Secondary, even though they didn't win into call in the boys. Would have loved that. It was good for him and uh, he did that in fine style if we go down on the ground now we see the celebration with the gbss sherry ann noel is there with the quartet from the same david's catholic secondary school sherry ann go ahead let's hear you elisha a brilliant brilliant um comeback um for the for, for, for the st david's team um you weren't at the front but then you pulled it through tell us about the strategy for this particular race well i mean with good good upcoming preparation the work got to be done. Got to train, train and work together and make a chemistry with your team. Make a chemistry with your team. So, you all didn't come first in the boys, but you, you did extremely well in the girls. What do you have to say to your female counterpart? Well, they work hard to reach they are, to reach the place where they are right now. So, I'm very happy for them. Uh, thank you very much. That was some of the athletes out of the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School. We are going to get a couple of them now from the Grenada Boys Secondary School.
Well, thank you very much, Sherry, but congratulations are in order for the St. David's Catholic Secondary School and the Grenada Boys Secondary School having defeated SAS in the final relay and to retain their championship in the boys' category. Too much work for Kyle Ned in the end. He couldn't deliver on the day. GBSS, the deserved winners of Intercourse 2023. Congratulations to them, and as I said, congratulations also to St. David's Catholic Secondary School in the girls' category. A fitting finish to Intercall 2023. It came down to the wire to the final event as we go back to Sherian, who has Ethan Samuda from the winning GBSS team. Ethan, congratulations on the win. You run a brilliant first leg. Um, speak to us about the actual strategy for this final race. You were down by 0.5. It could have gone anywhere, but you all pulled it together. Well, yeah, the team was falling apart, so they called on me to pull the team up together. I'm really proud to that well we came we, we came back and we won in tackle um, how satisfied are you I, I know that that you've won but with, with your performance over the past three days i'm really satisfied with my performance even though i'm on a spine injury i'm still doing my best so what's next for ethan sam are you on the carifta team too yes i'm on the carifta team and i'm looking to play some to to get some medal in that set of events Thank you very much. That was Ethan Sam, one of the star athletes out of the Grenada Boys Secondary School right here. And they are the winners of Intercall 2023. I now go back to Leslie Smith. Well, Sherry, Ethan Sam had a blister in first leg for the Grenada Boys Secondary School in the final event to determine the championship. And it, it's exciting always when the final event determines who the overall winners are. But again, we say congratulations to GBSS on retaining the title and bringing the trophy to the boys on the hill. SAS. Congratulations to them as well. I, th I thought they gave a very good fight. Um, the likes of Kyle Ned on that very last leg here, running his all, trying to catch that GBSS athlete. A well-deserved second place as well for Sass. And the St. Davis Catholic secondary, maybe going home with the momentum with that run from Elisha Williams. Telemark had a very good last leg as well, but they were basically competing for third and fourth positions at PBC and St. Davis Catholic Secondary. Again, the celebrations are in the green camp, the guys and girls from the GBSS, as they make their victory lap, Jason, a fitting conclusion to Intercall 2023. This is what champions are made of, and this is what people wanted to see when you pay for a pay-per-view broadcast. This is what you want to see. This is where it, 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 it really, this is what it really comes down to. And uh, fantastic run by the Grenada Boys Secondary School and when I say run I mean a run to the championship because they had a, a pretty balanced team all the way through and uh, they did what they had to do but uh, on the final event the guts of St. David's Catholic Secondary School the guts of St. David's Catholic Secondary School in the 4x4 not giving up showing the, the, the fortitude showing the tenacity and showing the spirit of what this Intercall Championship is really built on, they did nothing short of awesome to win the four by 400 meters. A great run from Raquel Telemac from PBC to come back. He left it all on the track, but uh, the beauty of that is uh, who won in the person from St. David's Catholic Secondary School, the anchor leg, as a, and uh, the telemark from the PBC, remember they've been going head to head for some time and we anticipated the showdown in the 200 meters between them, it didn't happen. We anticipated the showdown in the 100 meters. Uh, he falls started again and was out, but um, Hilaire, he... That's Williams. Williams, sorry. Williams finally got his redemption even if it was in the 4x4 four four for the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School. Well, they were also supposed to have a showdown in the 400 meters. Telemark opted not to compete in the 400 meters. But the championship honors goes to GBSS. They have won by two and a half points. And that is the closest I think you will ever get. Two and a half points separating the first and second place uh, winners in the boys category. Well, good work. Now we're getting ready to wrap our broadcast. Let's uh, run through the uh, assignment, the, 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 the top three positions quickly. St. David's Catholic Secondary School in the girls' division going out in front. I mean, they really stamped their authority from the end of day one. And uh, it was them going all the way through, never looking back. 
St. David's Catholic Secondary School winning the girls division of Intercol 2023. In second, the Anglican High School with a, a total of 221 and a half points. And uh, they were a few steps ahead of the St. Joseph's Convent St. George on 183 and a half points. Those were the top three rounding off the girls. Well, in the boys category, it was much closer than that. And I can tell you, we could take the first four positions because it was that close between first and second and third and fourth. Presentation Brothers College had to settle for fourth position on 200 points. And 12 points ahead of them was the St. David's Catholic Secondary School. So that last relay here determined the third and fourth position. Likewise, the last relay determined the first and second position. Only two and a half points separated the eventual winners, Grenada Boys Secondary School, on 331 and a half points and SAS with 329 points. So a championship that has been determined by two and a half points goes to GBSS. Uh, the athletes are lining up for the final closing exercises and presentation of divisional trophies to the divisional champions, the champion schools in each category, and the overall champion. So, Jason, we have a very interesting situation here. Prior to today's meet, SAS would have won 20 championships and GBSS 19. This championship victory here for GBSS today would make it an even situation. 20 championships to either schools. 20 to GBSS, 20 to SAS. And I'm sure next year when they come back here is going to be to see who is going to be, have the most championships in the boys category, barring no other school upsets them next year. Well, so 20 apiece it is between GBSS and SAS. So 2024... If that is the prelude to 2024, all I can say is, wow, what, it, it, what is it going to be? Leslie, we've got to put a wrap on this one. So let's put the furniture back in place before the camera is switched on on us. We need to uh, do some reshuffling, putting the furniture back in place. <laughs> now the camera crew can come over to us because... Um, just before that, we need to go down to the prize giving. Uh, Ethan Sam, I'm, I'm quite sure he's going to walk away with the, the prize of the top junior athlete. Ethan Sam, he, he won the one, the two, the four, and um, picked up a medal in the four by one for the GBSS as well. Well, he picked up two medals in the relays. Remember the four by one junior boys and also in a record-breaking performance too in the, in the preliminaries and one in the 4x4, four four, the last event of the day. So he's definitely um, one of the, the contenders for the junior champ in the boys category. Um, the sub-junior category, um, with all the field events results, I would think Adelron John from SAS and uh, Christoph um, from SAS would be top contenders. The senior categories, Elisha Williams seems to be the athlete there. Um, he was in the javelin. Um, Maybe not because he won the 400, but he was not there in the 1 and 200. So Telemark might be the athlete that would emerge as the senior champion in the boys category. And that may be what is going to be in that category. In the girls, we saw some outstanding performances. Um, the sub-junior, I think it would have been Kyla Christopher from the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School. In the junior girls, it can either be Ashanti Augustine or Shafonia Houston. Shanti may have had the edge by... Um, participating in the long jump and winning the long jump, um, although only winning one event, two events on the track. So Shanti may be the athlete here, the 400 and 100 meters, together with the long jump. And in the senior girls category, um, um, Keshana Dominic of the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School is the athlete that comes to mind in the senior girls category. All right. Well, thank you very much for that quick synopsis, Leslie. Now we've got to go down to the house announcer because we've got the prize giving ceremony taking place. Let's go down there. 18 minutes, 08.56 seconds. We move on to the silver medalist, Miguel Cape, Nawasa Sass. 18 minutes, 07.27 seconds. And uh, gold medalist, Nikhil John, McDonald College, 17 minutes, 58 seconds. Event 72. 
So Sass is here. Miguel Cape and McDonald College also here. Boys 5,000 meter run open. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Boys four by 100 meter relay senior, bronze medalist, Wesley College. 45.05 seconds. Silver medalist, classic lighting Caribbean, J.W. Fletcher Catholic Secondary, 44.80 seconds. And your gold medalist, Nawasa Sass, 43.28 seconds. Event 73 girls four by 400 meter relay open. Bronze medalist, SJC St. George's. Four minutes, 08.80 seconds. Bronze medalist, SJC St. George's. Girls four by 400 meter relay open. Silver medalist, St. David's Catholic Secondary, four minutes, 07.77 seconds. And your gold medalist, GTC Anglican High, four minutes, 05.46 seconds. Event 74, boys 4 by 400 meter relay open. Presenting your bronze medalist, Nachicor GBSS. Three minutes, 23.23 seconds. Silver medalist, Nexa PBC. All right, so that's the bronze medalist. Now your silver medalist, next uh, PBC, three minutes, 21.90 seconds. And your gold medalist, St. David's Catholic Secondary, three minutes, 20.37 seconds. We invite the minister to remain there as we officially present the opening, the closing ceremony this time around. And so we are going to begin with the individual awards by way of uh, male and female. We begin though with the award for most outstanding sub-junior female. This award goes to Annalisa Brown. Classic Lighting Caribbean Boca Secondary School. She scored a master altogether, 36 points. Congratulations, Annalisa. The award for most outstanding sub-junior male goes to Christoph Kalis. Nawasa Sass. He accumulated 53 points.
Now the award for most outstanding junior female is presented to Shafonia Houston. GTC Anglican High. 52 points. Congratulations. The award for most outstanding junior male goes to Ethan Sam. Nadjiko GBSS. He accumulated 36 points. We move now to the award for most outstanding senior female. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a tie. A tie between Aaliyah Kid Harry, St. David's Catholic Secondary, 44 points. Likewise, Shante Augustine, SJC. St. George's. Forty four points. The award for most outstanding senior male is presented to Elisha Williams. St. David's Catholic Secondary, he accumulated 16 points, 42, correction, 42 points. Thank you very much, Honorable Ron Redhead, Minister Responsible for Youth. Now we invite to the fore, Senator the Honorable David Andrew, Minister for Education. We are now going to present divisional awards. The divisional award for sub junior goes to St. David's Catholic Secondary, 90 points. Divisional award, sub-junior male, female, correction, sub-junior female. The divisional award for sub-junior male goes to Nawasa. Success.
We move now to a divisional award for junior female. St. David Catholic Secondary. 77 points. At this juncture, we announce the divisional award for junior male. This award is presented to Natchikor GBSS. 150 0 We continue the presentation of divisional awards. Now it's time for the divisional award for senior female. This award goes to St. David's Catholic Secondary. 142 points. Ladies and gentlemen, time to present the divisional award for senior male. This award goes to St. David's Catholic Secondary. 85 points. Thank you very much, Senator the Honorable David Andrew, Minister for Education. Now we invite to the fore Mr. Devon Thornhill, Manager of Commercial Credit at Republic Bank, Grenada Limited. Ladies and gentlemen, we have two awards to present now. The Victrix Ladura and the Victor Loduram. The Victrix Loduram is Shafonia Houston, GTC Anglican High. Fifty-two points. Thank you very much, Mr. Devon Thornhill, Manager, Commercial Credit at Republic Bank, Grenada Limited. Now we invite Mrs. Elizabeth Richard Darrell, Finance Manager, Republic Bank, Grenada Limited. Mrs. Elizabeth Richard Daniel, Finance Manager, Republic Bank, Grenada Limited. We are very pleased to announce the Victor Ladurum Award. This individual is Christoph Kalis Nawasa Sass. Amassing 53 points. Good 
Thank you so much, Mrs. Elizabeth Richard Daniel, Finance Manager, Republic Bank, Grenada Limited. Now it's time to present the Co-Ed Award. Ladies and gentlemen, the Co-Ed Award goes to St. David's Catholic Secondary. Amassing today and overall the three days, 547 points. We are very pleased to invite to the fore Mrs. Carla Beck Ramsing. There you are, General Manager. General Manager, Credits Republic Bank, Grenada Limited. Thank you so much, Mrs. Ramsing. Now we have for you the overall chance to present, and we invite to the fore Mrs. Naomi Diali, Managing Director of Republic Bank, Grenada Limited. All right, so we begin in the girls' division, the top three schools. Third place overall, Republic Bank Intercall Championships 2023. Captured by St. Joseph's Convent, St. George's. SJC St. George's, 183.50. A representative from SJC. Second place overall in the girls division. GTC Anglican High. 221.50 points. Second place overall, girls division, GTC, Anglican High, we invite a representative. And we go now to the champions overall in the girls division. We're so delighted, ladies and gentlemen, to announce the overall girls champ in 2023. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for St. David's Catholic Secondary School. Three hundred and thirty five points. Congratulations to St. David's Catholic Secondary School. Overall champions in the girls' division. In the Republic Bank Intercall Championships 2023. Congratulations once more. All right, time to talk the overall scores and of course the top three in the boys division. Position three. 
In the boys' division, position three, St. David's Catholic Secondary School, 212 points. Okay, so they're receiving, the girls are receiving extra. And of course, we will invite the boys thereafter. All right, so we can proceed to the boys division. Top three boys, third place overall in the boys division, St. David's Catholic Secondary School. 212 points. Ladies and gentlemen, please show your appreciation to St. David's Catholic Secondary School, third place overall in the boys' division. 212 points. Second place overall. Second place overall, Nawasa Sass. Three hundred and twenty nine points. Show your appreciation. The athletes have worked so hard. Ladies and gentlemen, overall champs, boys division, put your hands together for Nadjako GVSS. Three hundred and thirty one point five zero. What an intercall it has been. Presenting your champs, intercall. Natural G B S S. So, enjoying the taste of victory at the moment. Hey, give me the cue and Okay, welcome back viewers as we put a wrap on the Intercall Games 2023 sponsored by Republic Bank. We're just going to uh, recapture all that has happened over the three days and to do that I have with me Davis Adams, myself, Leslie Smith. Just put it in perspective, three days of exciting track and field. Davis, your overall assessment of track and field at the Intercall level and what Intercall has delivered in 2023. Republic Bank Intercall Championships 2023.
sponsorship, we've seen um, good sportsmanship also exhibited. And so I think all in all, it was a wonderful three days of Interpol um, Athletic Championship. And I think we did can only be compared to well, Magical the fireworks are out. GBSS. It's celebrations for the boys on heel GBSS, the overall champions. And we want to quickly go through some of the outstanding performances. Thank um, you so very we much, moments ago, ladies and gentlemen. Annalisa Brown from the Boca Secondary School in the girls category, Houston and Ali Gidhari and Shanti Augustine were the dominant ones in the girls category. Yep, and I want to pay particular attention to Annalisa Brown. Um, as I saw one person over social media put it, she reminded them of, uh, of the African runners. She was absolutely fine in her running. Her form was good. Her, her stamina was good. She was just a fantastic person to, to see running. And she dominated the, the, those distance events, the 800, the 1500, the 3000. I think she's a tremendous fine and a gem for Grenada in, in these in this, um, distances. Well, in the boys' category, it was Christoph Kalis of Sass who dominated the sub-junior. The ever-present Ethan Sam in the junior category and the Ironman himself, Elisha Williams, in the senior category, the dominant figures or athletes in the boys' category. And I, I like the adjective that you have put to Elisha. I think this gentleman has tremendous potential. When I looked at Elisha, who I actually saw some, um, is Kurt Warner from the, um, Canada as a decathlete. He's, he's fast, he's strong, he can jump. There's nothing that he, could not, he cannot do. And Elisha reminds me of that. He has tremendous potential, and I want to believe once he settles on the events that he has to do, I think he will, he will excel in it. I think Grenada is in for, with a good find in Elisha Williams. Well, in the divisional champions, uh, St. David's dominated all the categories in the female uh, division. They were the sub-junior champ overall, the junior champ overall, and also the senior champ in the girls' category. A fitting conclusion, they uh, won very early in the, in the championship um, quest, and uh, the other schools are basically going for second and third. Well, it is true. It was just a dominating display by the St. David's Catholic Secondary School. Interesting, what really comes to mind is the fact that St. David's is a co-ed school. Um, and the population is not as much, say, like the St. Joseph's Convent, St. George, and the Anglican High School. Yet still, the team that they have in the girls' division, it is so deep that every event that they participated in, they were a threat. Um, of course, you can also um, put it down to the fact that they have a tremendous um, structure in St. David's in terms of training and coaching and, and so on. The fact that they have clubs where the athletes come together as a family and most of them go to the St. David's Catholic Secondary School. So whatever structure they have in St. David, it's working extremely well and you can see it in the results uh, uh, at Intercall 2023. And not forgetting the boys also placed third in the, in the, in the, in the male category and uh, the St. David's track, track Blazers, the nursery for a lot of the athletes coming from the St. David's Catholic Secondary School. Very correct. In the boys division, the sub-junior um, champ went to SAS. The juniors went to GBSS and again St. David's uh, getting the senior champ overall. So St. David's speaking of four champ divisional champions, uh, three in the girls, one in the boys, SAS in the sub-juniors and uh, GBSS in the boys. We know for a fact that SAS was going to dominate the sub-juniors with the Christoph Callis and the Delron John and GBSS with the quartet of boys, the Ethan Sam, Tyreek Samuel and others dominated in the junior category. Yeah, um, each, each school seems to have strengths in different areas and um GBS is just has a tremendous junior category with Ethan Sam and his group of, of, of guys that are his brethren um, in the sub-junior division. Of course, Christoph Kalist um, from the St. Andrews Anglican Secondary he seemed to be able to do everything, recover quickly, and come back and put out dominating performances. And you could only see the sky's the limit for somebody like Christoph Kalist. Well, we went down now to the final scores. The Female championship went to St. David's Catholic Secondary School. They amassed a total of 331 and a half points. Anglican High School had to settle for second with 221 and a half points. And St. Joseph Convent St. George with 183 points. So congratulations to St. David's Catholic Secondary School. A well-deserved victory and the championship honors goes to the parish of St. David. 
Again, no one could begrudge what has happened with the St. David's Catholic Secondary School. They're putting out, putting out the, the work, they're getting the athletes prepared, and it's showing up at the biggest stage that we have in Grenada Intercultural Championships. Well done to St. David's Catholic Secondary. And of course, you cannot not mention coach, um, the coach that they have, Williams, Denise Williams, who has been doing that for a long time, a legend in her own right, and she will leave a legacy behind for our St. David's. Um, a, a tough shoe to fill when she leaves the scene, but nonetheless, we have to credit what um, Denise Williams is doing with the um, girls and boys in St. David's Catholic Secondary School. And then we move into the boys' category. It was always going to be a battle between the two perennial power schools in track and field in Grenada. The Grenada Boys Secondary School came in as the defending champions. SAS has always been a, contend a contender with 20 championship titles coming into these games. GBS has had 19 and they had many, many scores to settle. It was a ding-dong battle between those two schools. GBSS, at the end of the first day, were in the lead. Also, at the end of the second day, marginally so. There was never a time when they were 30 or more points ahead of, of SAS. And it came down to the final event. Half a point was separating the two schools. Eventually, one school gathered two points more in the final event, and that determined the overall winner. It reminded us of 2016, Junior Charles on that final race for SAS to bring home the trophy for SAS. And congratulations are in order for GBSS and the entire fraternity up on the hill for their victory in 2023. What else can you say? They actually deserved it. Um, they worked hard. Um, I, the athletes performed well. There were some tremendous performances and we would have called some of the names already. Um, the fact that it had to go down to the wire you, when you would not have thought that um, lightning could strike twice. It did happen in 2016. It happened, as you would have mentioned. It happened in 2023. Now they have an additional incentive for 2024 because this year, with GBSS winning the Intercol 2023 championship, they would have moved to 20 wins overall, joining St. Andrew's Anglican Secondary School on the same amount of wins. And so there's an added incentive for 2024. And I think both schools can now um, incentivize the boys and girls hey whoever wins in 2024 there will be one ahead and that's an additional incentive that each school has well there's a lot to look forward in 2024 at the republic bank secondary school games intercall as we call it as we put a wrap on things we'd like to say a special thank you to the entire commentary team joseph cado and sherry and noel who were on the field and keeping us up to date in the field events and interacting with the spectators as well we also had Jason Ski to provide expert commentary and comments. Yourself, Davis Adams, myself, Leslie Smith. And we want to say a special thank you to the entire team at TNR Communications, the cameraman, the uh, executive director, the technical director, everybody who contributed to this very high-quality professional broadcast. We leave you from the Grenada National Stadium. A victory for GBSS in the boys. A victory for St. Davis Catholic Secondary School. Just to give you the final point, standing again in the boys. In third was uh, the St. Davis Catholic Secondary on 212 points. In second was SAS on 329 points. And only two and a half points ahead in first position, the Grenada Boys Secondary School, 331 and a half points. So until next year, when we come back for some more exciting track and field action right here at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium, we say goodbye, so long, and see you then. They don't know what you have to offer, what you have to give. They underestimate you, but you've got to let your light shine. Shine out the darkness, shine out the fear, and rise like the sun. Sometimes they look at you.
your face to break you down and mess away. Oh no, don't let them win. Yeah, yeah. And though they laugh and though they cheer when you fail and no one cares. Oh. Have your family or friends ever needed cash now, but you are nowhere close to give it to them directly? With the cardless cash feature from Republic Bank Online and your mobile phone, it is hassle-free and convenient to send money to anyone, including yourself, using the Republic mobile app. Simply log into your account, access the cardless feature, enter the amount you want to transfer, and using the access code provided, the cash can be withdrawn instantly from a designated Republic Bank ATM without a card. Republic Bank Cardless Cash is convenient at your fingertips. To learn more about our cardless cash features, visit republicgrenada.com for more details. Special terms and conditions apply. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. Home is easy as one, two, three. Thinking about your new home? Think easy. Think a Republic Bank Home Easy Loan. Think affordable. Think convenience. Think Republic. Home is easy as one, two, three. Republic makes home easy. Wow, that was such a breeze. Own your home with ease. So whether laying that first brick or purchasing an existing home, we've got you covered. Republic Bank will get you those keys hassle-free in no time. Home is easy as one, two, three. Apply for a home easy loan today for a chance to win a cash prize. Getting your new home is easy with Republic Bank. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. Terms and conditions apply. Building or renovating your home or business? Why not use clean, renewable energy? Install solar panels to power your home and office and see your energy costs go down and your savings go up. Using renewable, solar-powered energy protects our environment, reduces our carbon footprint, and slows the devastating impact of climate change. Republic Bank can help to finance construction and renovations that make use of renewable energy. Visit any Republic Bank branch and ask about renewable energy financing options today. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. Have your family or friends ever needed cash now?